on salvage hunters. Drew's search for hidden treasures goes from stately pile... It's a nice house, but we we'll want to dust it. We we'll want to clean it. ..to scrap pile. All I wanted when I was a kid was a scrapyard. Wow! That has to be the, one of the best things I've seen in years. He finds his dream machine... I think it's just a thing of beauty. ..unearths some classic pieces... George? George was there. But when it comes to this classic... <laughs> Is his heart ruling his head? I think I must have taken some hallucinogenics last time I looked at the Morris Minor. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... He was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. Trade's been brisk at Drew's Warehouse in North Wales. He needs to stock up. We've sold hundreds and hundreds of items in the last two weeks. I want to make sure the stuff is rolling through. We have a production line here. We had it for years. I find it. Gavin and Julian sort it and clean it. Mark photographs it. It goes on the website. It's sold. And by that time, I've bought some more stuff in. Drew is a workaholic, full stop. If I'm out on the road, I'll check in once or twice a day. If I shout, um, is anybody missing Drew? Uh, nobody does. Enzo does. <laughs> I'm travelling with Julian this time. He's come in, been sacked and or left probably ten times. He's stuck with me and I'm stuck with him. Drew and Julian set off on a five-hour trip to Dumfries in Scotland. So, another beautiful day in Scotland, as they always seem to be. And we're off to the Baclou estate. Yep. They're heading to Drumlanig Castle, the ancestral home of the Duke of Baclou, set in 90,000 acres, one of the biggest estates in the UK. And if you want to my paperwork, you're meeting Richard Riley. I'm the head ranger here at uh, Baclou Estates. The castle itself, we completed the build in 1698. It's got many, many treasures in there. We have a, a Rembrandt painting, lots of lovely fine artworks. The building itself has some fantastic furniture, uh, and it really is a, a must-see. But Drew doesn't have his sights on the treasures inside the house. His hunting ground is the places the public never gets to see. We've been trying for months, months to get into this guy's place. And we've got access. What I want today is just a little bit of that old country house magic. But I have to say... He's mighty <laughs> impressive. Check <laughs> yeah. that out. Yeah. That's a nice house, but we'll want to dust it. We'll want to clean it. Pleased <laughs> nice to meet you. This is Jules. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? Pleased to meet you. How are you doing? Uh, Welcome to Drumlanig. The Duke rarely sells to dealers outside the big auction houses. But today, Ranger Richard has the authority to sell a few select items. Is there people in the house today? Is the family there today? Well, they're actually open to the public as well. The family are not in today. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to it. Shall we get the van around the back for the furniture, shall we? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just chuck the silver under the dashboard. Yeah, OK. Fantastic. OK, so lead on. Drew has convinced Richard to show him part of the Duke's legendary car collection. Can he persuade him to part with one of them? The vehicle we have in here is quite special. A vehicle like this was the first vehicle to cloak across the Sahara. It's a 1924 Citroen Cagras half truck. It was in the Bewley Motor Museum, eh, but unfortunately, you know, it's starting to fall into disrepair. The tracks, because they're rubber, they started to perish. So, very, very capable vehicle. It was said at the time you could set the idle in gear, jump out the vehicle, walk up the hill, and this would follow you up the hill like a well-trained Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. What a thing. Unbelievably good condition. Everything was just totally original. Just a little gem. This is something I'd be really keen on buying. Uh... Cars like this were built in the lead-up to the Second World War and can fetch up to £30,000. It's incredible condition. I'd like to buy it. 
Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much history in this vehicle for the estate to let it Yeah, for sure. Don't think I could afford it. Wouldn't know what to do with it. I don't think I'd go to the shops in it. Next one. Ford Zodiac wow. Estate. God, I remember one of these in our village when I was a kid outside the old paint shop. This car has been on the estate since new and is worth around £3,000 in its current condition. I love this. This is a great-looking car, isn't That's it? fantastic. The interior, the dashboard, everything, it's just right at the end of the 60s, isn't it? Yeah. It reminds me as a kid, you know when you go on holiday and your legs are stuck to the back yeah, seat? Exactly. That's what it smells like. Yeah. And it's great, cos you could drive this now. You don't need to restore it or ruin it. No. Just, I've got to ask, can I buy this one? A 40-year-old car with one careful owner. Could this 60s classic be Drew's first purchase of the day? It's a fabulous thing. Unfortunately not, again, Drew. All these vehicles, you know, they, they hold the... Uh, OK. They're very sentimental. One day? Yeah, possibly. One day. Put my name on them. Yeah. Well, I'm here to buy, and as yet, I've not been able to find, any, find anything. It's been great wandering around looking at everything, but I need to buy stuff. I've, I've, I'm here to buy things. Drew then sees a vehicle that, this time, Richard is keen to offload. This was actually one of the first Land Rovers that we ever had in the estate. Series 3, early one. Short wheelbase, Safari. Yeah, God, it's battered to hell, isn't it? Yeah, this is the model that had the, the Safari yeah, yeah. roof. Yeah, the roof. Keep you nice yeah, and cool in our balmy heat that we have here, you know? Too far gone for me. Too far gone? The earlier ones mm. I was looking for, really, yeah. the Series 1s, it was really... So you're not, you know, plans to fix this one? Hey, I don't know. No, no, maybe not. So, where's next? Cool. So what's, what's this place? This is Morton Mill, Drew. It's a mill for processing grains, you know, wheat, mm. uh, barley, oats, basically. What do you use it for now? Uh, it's just used for storage, much to your delight. Yeah. Drew can't afford to leave with an empty van, so he dives straight in. Finding stuff he wants is no problem, but finding stuff that's for sale is. Fortunately, these benches, uh, they're not a goer. The pews are, are they? Uh, unfortunately, not again. Drew's frustration levels are rising. Then, Richard pulls out several tempting items. Here, eggs, original. Uh, they would have come out of the stable yard at the castle itself. Yeah, they're quite nice, aren't they? Yeah. They would actually have been made by the blacksmiths on the estate. Yeah, they're estate made, aren't they? Yeah. 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 In Drew's world, provenance is everything. The fact that they were made on the estate could double the value of the hay racks. They could fetch as much as £150 each. That's cool. It's a nice uh, saddle horse. There's, a, there's another one, another yeah. one here. So you've been using this for display, have you? Yeah, it was. It was used for the display of saddles up at the, the stable yard at the castle itself. Fab. Drew currently has a similar Regency saddle horse for sale on his website for £580. Great. It looks like Drew may have struck gold and found the big country house pieces he's looking for. Stand it. Yeah, that's fab. I've never seen any of this size before. They look like, you know, sort of just like a plate rack. Yeah. For drying, for drying plate, just on a huge scale. Just a good-looking period piece as well. They're in nice, untouched condition. You can see traces of original paint all over them. And the wear there, where things have been slid in and out constantly. These could bring in a £1,000 for the pair on the retail market. This is the place I wanted to get to all day. This is great. There's loads of stuff. There's a lot. You just walked in straight away and said, you can't have that, you can't have that, you can't have that, you can't have that. But then to dig out these... It's now up to the Duke. Do you want to make a phone call, see if, the, see if we can have a... Yeah, I can do. I'll go and... If we could buy them. I'll go and make a call. I'm hoping Richard comes back with good news and that we can do a deal on this sort of stuff. I'd be so happy if I could walk away with the large racks and the saddle horses. <sighs> ah, Richard, what did he say? We can't do the saddle racks. <sighs> All right, OK. But we can do the... The plate racks the plate up. Racks up. Okay. Yeah. OK, OK. So how, how much are these, Richard? Uh, we're looking at about £75 pound each, so... It's too much. Too much? Yeah, it's too much. Um, um, 120 for the three. 120 for the three? That's it, yeah. I just, couldn't just push it that wee bit more. 130, the three? Yeah, sure. OK, lovely. Nice. Excellent. OK, so we've bought some stuff. That's great. So what, what do you want for these? Uh, probably looking about 300 quid for those, um, I'd say. Can you do a little bit better? Knock a little bit off, maybe. Take it maybe two seventy. Yeah, that's fine. That do? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to beat you up at all on these. Yeah. These are great. I'm really happy with them. Particularly I mean, this one. You know, 
somebody renovating a country house, you know, that's got to look... Yeah, definitely. It's got such a great look about it. Yeah. Really has. Nice one. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Find some stuff. Excellent. I think both myself and Drew are happy with the deals we have done today. I'm certainly happy, you know, and I think Drew's happy. I don't think I've made him pay more than he needed to. It's a real right. privilege, and uh, you've got my number. I have. Give me a call. It's so good to get in here and to buy stuff, get a good connection, find something I can sell at a profit. I've got somebody in mind for the plate racks, and I'm not going to have them long. So, yeah, really, really pleased. Another five-hour drive later, and Drew and Julian arrive back at headquarters in Wales. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. It's nice to be back. It's Scotland was really good. Uh, we bought some great stuff. Thought they were quite good. And do you know what I think they could be? Console tables. When they're excited and when I bring something off the van, it just sort of goes, yeah, great, did that right, next one. With an empty van to fill, it's not long before it's time to hit the road again. This time, Drew's taking Restorer Gavin with him. Do those bench ends there, Gav, right next to you, are they, can they be used or not? Uh. Gavin is restoration. Sales, lifting, shifting, delivering, and he's coming on the road with me today. They're on their way to Coventry, to a narrowboat builder and restorer called Pete Gilbert. It's not the boats they're going to see, but his scrapyard that's been built up over three generations. Any chance I got to roam around scrapyards when I was a kid, I was there and nothing's changed. I'm now 40 and I'm still doing it. Uh, but now at least I get to make some money out of it as well. And it's a proper old school scrapyard. It's the sort of scrapyard I dream about. It's a canal workshop. He lives in a canal boat in the middle of a scrapyard. It's like my dream place to go. Must be close. It's around here somewhere. Is that it over there? Yeah, this is it. Just turn down here on the right, that's the place. Like the place. Oh, hello, 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 mate. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Drew. All right. How are you? Cheers. This nice is Gav. Nice to meet you. Hi, Gav. You good? Yeah. Hello. Wow. You have got the best place in the whole world. Pete's place to me is just like heaven. I think I'm probably like one chromosome away from, from doing this, but I'm not far off. I could easily end up like this, you know, left on my own devices, this could happen. It's from my great granddad, my dad, and me. We've got old engines and stuff and bits and bobs. It just gets better. You see why I'm happy? Come on, <laughs> go up you go. <laughs> He's a handsome devil, isn't he? That's it. This takes me back to being a kid and rooting through junkyards. You just don't think places like this exist anymore. My great granddad, he built this place. He was a boatman. The yard covers around an acre, so Drew's going to have his work cut out to see all that Pete has to offer. I do need to spend two weeks here. I need to hire a canal boat and stay here for a couple of weeks. There's so much stuff. Every time I turn around, I'm trying to find something else. All I wanted when I was a kid was the scrapyard. Well, yeah, that's it. well I had one. You've got one. <laughs> I'm really enjoying my day here with Peter, but it really is now to time to start buying. Drew spots something he's seen before and dives straight in with a request. This little chap here, who I'd really like a lot. I've owned one before. It sold very, very quickly and it sold well. I was surprised to find that and I definitely want to be taking that home with me. This mid-century whippet is very collectible and can sell for around £200. Nice, lovely. It's so out of context here where it is. Brought into somewhere else, that's really going to shine. Obviously without the collar. <laughs> is this is this something we could I, you, could, have, you, I could have a go at? You got to uh, have a word with the the wife about that. She's okay. uh, she's in charge of that one. He has to talk to uh, uh, senior management, and uh, we'll see how we go. He's worth a few quid to me, so she wants some money. So I'll try and tell her that's the only way to get it. <laughs> Sell it to Drew. Drew will need a strategy to get reluctant Pete to start parting with anything. I think for the first thing I'm going to try and buy off him, I'm going to go for something that he is less interested in. You got any more of them? No. Uh, before we go back to the pinks I really want. 
Yeah, these are good. They interested me when I seen them. Fantastic. Good, yeah. aren't they? These yeah. are the enamel factory yeah, pendants. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And they're 1950s sort of factory lights, and um, I love them. We're always buying and selling them. Do you know the top section for these? The yeah. Not all of them, I don't think. They were just built for industrial purpose, but they translate very, very well into using them in residential and interior design projects. They're always beaten up, but that's part of their charm, yeah. all the rust and everything on them. We can restore them and have them rewired in-house a couple of days. Oh, there's the top for those lamps, yeah? Yeah, that's it. That should go over and twist and go. There you go. That's it. If we could have found, I'd rather buy six than three. What sort of price can we do on these? Nothing. You would have to uh, shout me what you'd want to give for them. The shape's great, it's stylish, and everybody wants these are things I can sell. Industrial lamps are popular with interior designers, and once restored, cooler cons like these can fetch around £175 each. Well, if we said for the three large ones, £75? Uh, yeah, yeah, go on. Then. Sure? Yeah, yeah, go on. These three here, 30 £10 pounds a piece. Yeah. That's a bit mean, 15 £15 on, pounds a piece for those. That's, yeah, about, that's, yeah. that's fairer. So 45 75 Yeah. Yeah? First purchase, money changing hands. Great. Always makes it a little bit easier for me. And it just relaxes everything and, you know, Oils the wheels. I think that we used as a heat lamp for the chickens. Drew is always on the lookout for the unique, and he spots something that definitely fits the bill. These are fantastic. They're either being made by somebody at an art college or something like that. I think they're Roman. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's something about them I like. Is that the top? Of, that's like stoppers. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Well, look at that. Really weird looking. No chips, nothing missing. They're great. But once again, Peter's reluctant to strike a deal and defers to a higher authority. It's Where are they from? The missus is... I can't find any marks or anything. somewhere. I'll phone her up and see what they're all about. Yeah. You know these pots you've got in that blue tub? What, what are they? You know them odd-shaped things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Weird it. Weird things. These are for sale, then. What about £80? No, no, you yeah. Uh, yeah, she'd be happy with that. I That's think. all right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, keep her okay. happy. OK, yeah, we'll take those. With a couple of purchases under his belt, Drew is happy, but he's not ready to leave just yet. It'd be worth trying her on the dog again, because the dog... The dog is worth 100 quid to me. Yeah. I'm really hoping we can buy that dog statue. That's the thing It's sort of bothering me, cos, like, I know I can sell it like that, really want it. And it seems that Pete has saved the best till last. You like this one? Oh, wow. Fantastic. Just as we were leaving, I was just about to leave, and I said, oh, what's that in there? Is this an original Torah? Yeah, it is. It's a proper not one. Not a conversion. It's not a, not a cut-down one. My first car was a Morris 1000. I think my second car was a Morris 1000. I've owned, I can't remember how many, at least 10. So, 66? Uh, I think, yeah, D66, yeah. My mum had a Morris 1000 convertible. I think it was the same colour, or pale blue. Can you get it out? Oh, it all drives and everything. OK. Yeah. Massively popular car, made God knows how many of them, and uh, loads still going. Brilliant little cars. We're just going to try and see if we can get this little fella started. <laughs> Did we have it the wrong way round? Yeah. yeah. Try that. <laughs> I think I just flooded it. <laughs> Shall we try her again? Yeah, try them again. Hey! Beautiful. Tools of the trade. <laughs> Buying a car in this state is a gamble, but an enthusiast could pay from £800 to £1,000 for a restoration project like this. What sort of money are we looking at? I don't know, I suppose it'd be like 800 quid. When he came up with that, I thought, should I bid him on it and sort of try and knock him down a bit? But he was really genuine. He said, look, I did pay that for it. And I, you can tell when somebody's lying. He's not lying. That's what he paid. I don't need to sort of kick his head in on it. Let's just keep the price right. Give the guy's money back. 
it's, a, it's the right price. Yeah, we'll take it. And just as they're off, Peter arrives with some good news. Hey, Drew. I've uh, had a word with the missus and she said she'd let you out that. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. All right. That's brilliant. Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, yeah. It's been a pleasure. It really yeah. has. I've enjoyed myself. And me. No very end. Good. <laughs> yeah. A very good day. All right, then. Fantastic. Drew heads off to Morecambe with Gavin. He's heard of a company that ships huge quantities of antique furniture. It's not his usual hunting ground, but he's prepared to take a chance. I'm going to go and see this chap. Golly. Furniture's my business, and I know I haven't got that many things, you know, that he would be interested in, but I'm going to show him a couple of items. I normally have good stuff. But... It's not usually our sort of stuff. It doesn't have sort of junky stuff like we like. Everybody has their own taste, I suppose. Apparently, I rang Rebecca too late last night. I'm in a bit of trouble. When you don't ring, why didn't you ring? I'd stay out of it if I were you, if you got any sense. <laughs> Aha, here we are. See what I mean? Big outfit, proper job. Hello? Golly. Drew Pritchard, this is Gav. Gav? You OK? Hi, Gav. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, yeah. Good. So we just thought we are in the area, thought we'd call in, see what you got. I'm after the strange stuff. Right. The sort of the rusty old architectural, decorative... Yeah. ..shot fittings, runs of lighting, that type of thing. All right, then. Um, just feel free to wander about. Find that door. Oh, it's a great place. Yeah. It's full, isn't it? <laughs> Tons of stuff. We've got some fantastic stock here, haven't you? Golly's business and what I do are very, very different. Golly sells what we call shipping furniture and uh, brown furniture to the international antiques trade. Normally, you'd be squeezing down these alleys. You see, you just had a big order go out of you? Yeah. What's just done six then? containers. Fantastic. I'll show you, these are the containers you're filling now. That's one, yeah, and there's another one that's, that's out there. There's another one there. Big business. He's been doing it longer than I've been born. It's nice to see young people. You don't see many young people now coming into this business. So how long have you been doing this, then? Started in 67. So was your father doing it? No. Really? No. no, I started off as a musician. Did you? Yeah. Really? You know, I was playing in different rock and roll bands and uh, scared to death to have to go and get a job. You know, it terrified me. What else yeah, would you do if you weren't doing this, isn't it? I don't know. Um, well, nothing. <laughs> you just sit about eating and drinking. Yeah, yeah. Just getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Golly. Um, he's just a really like, down to earth bloke. Golly's market is a different market to mine. It's a, it's a good market that he has there, and he's obviously doing a really good job. Uh, my market is, is totally different, and what I'm after is always the tatty thing in the background. Drew spots some vintage toys, which he knows are very popular with designers and window dressers. Oh, I like that, Golly. This is cool. Yeah, I've had that a long, long time. Um, little... Um, oh, it's a little Vespa. It's a little Vespa, a little 70s. Yeah. 70s Vespa. Is it 70s? Yeah, that's 70s, yeah. that one. Is it electric or something, is it? I don't know. I, don't know. I do home in on anything Vespa Lambretta. I always really like it, and uh, I've got a couple of Vespas in the house. I've got some old fairground ride Vespas in the house, and I think that'll be joining them, hopefully. Motorised Vespas like this are rare and popular with both toy collectors and scooter enthusiasts. They can sell for upwards of £100. What can we do on this? If you want it, Drew, I'll take 120 quid for it. Ooh. Yeah. Do you think that's dear? I do, yeah. I do. Right. I do. Well, um, um, maybe it is. Yeah. You've maybe seen more of them than, than me. Yeah, yeah. Golly has been selling for almost 50 years, and Drew's beginning to realise what he's up against. Oh, well. He's putting just the right amount of pressure in a, in a, in a, in just the right... He's pushing just the right buttons to get me to buy stuff. It's very good. I do think it's a little bit on the... Yeah. ..on the uppy side, yeah. Right. Um, could you do 80 quid? Could we come back to it? Yeah, I'll let him have it, but uh, don't tell him yet. Sure. Yeah, I can tell right. you a bit more stuff. All right, let's have a look. The answer will be yes. OK, all right, let's have a look, see what else we can do. Right. I'd rather spend some more money as well. Right. OK. I've had some bloody interesting stuff over the years. 
I like the little bar. That's quite funky, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. You see, you see that's, <laughs> that's in. great. That's, that's now, so in. That's, I really like this, all this sort of yeah. faux plastic yeah. marble. I mean, I remember this new in the shops, this stuff. You know, but fellas like you, it's like a novelty. <laughs> Young whippersnappers like me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's so bad, it's good. Despite growing in popularity, mid-20th century furniture is still a niche market, and finding the right buyer could be difficult for Drew. Examples like these could sell for up to £200 to the right buyer. What sort of money something like this now? 120 quid. 120 quid. Maybe. I'll give it some thought. Yeah. Well, look at this. There's another one here. Another Del Boy bar. <laughs> And that would have been the bee's knees, you know, in 1955. Yeah. Oh, you'd have been posh if you had that in your house, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's something like this screen out there? Um, I'll take 85 quid for 85 it. 85 quid. That's, that's great, isn't it? It's a brilliant price for somebody. Mm. It really is. I don't know the market on that, so it's uh, maybe a step too far, but also I don't know if I'm going to get it on the van. So has master negotiator Drew met his match? For now, all Drew can do is be led by golly. What else have you got? Um, there's a little bit of junk outside. Just open the security system. I've got an old building. Hey, look, there's a diver's helmet there. That's a cool thing, isn't it? That's really never moved from here. Really? That's a mantique, yeah. isn't it? That's a yeah. bloke antique, that yeah. is. Definitely. Very cool. It's nice, yeah. isn't it? It's all right, yeah. I've never owned one. You're right. Quite like it. I like that it's not polished. Looks like a sort of... Yeah. Like Darth Vader's helmet, isn't it? Yeah. What's something like that worth? I want 800 quid for it. Yeah, I suppose that's probably right. I think it could be worth more. Yeah. I think, I think it could right. be. It's a nice thing. Yeah. US Navy diving helmets like this were manufactured between 1915 and 1980 and can go for as much as £1,000. I'm always looking for stuff I need to be selling it the next day, and that I'm not going to be able to sell the next day. I just don't know. I don't know on that one at all. Drew is clearly getting agitated. He has yet to make a purchase, and this could turn out to be a wasted day. You don't see many of them around here. Hey, donkey. That's a bit nice big cart. Yeah. Once again, he tries to get the ball rolling with Golly. I like that, though. That's quite good, isn't it? Ah, yeah. I like yeah. that. It's a good, nice advertising thing, that. You know, you can stick that up in a shop. Cigarette things. I like it. I like it, yeah. Metal advertising signs are popular and easy to sell. This one could fetch £80. What's, what's, what's uh, that, Golly? 50 quid. 50. 50, 50, 50. Nice. Good 40, 40 quid. Can we do that? Yeah, you can yeah, if you is want. Is that all right? Yeah. What's picking out in red? That's OK. Yeah, we'll just leave that alone again. Yeah. Give it a little bit of a polish, but £40, pound, I'll take it. All right. The ball is rolling, but Golly is still calling the shots. Let's we'll see if we can do a deal on that Vespa. I have got lot one more thing to show you. All right, let's have a look then. Come on. Drew can only follow as Golly leads him into the dark recesses of the warehouse. Bloody good chair, this, Matt. Oh, hello, yeah. It is, honestly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good-looking thing. I'll tell you what, it's near enough perfect. Yeah, I like that a lot. I like it. That chair is just lovely. Great shape, size, colour. It's everything I like about furniture at the moment. Have you had it a long time? Mm. I've had it a very long time, yeah. You come local? Yeah. You come out of a house local. Nobody has ever asked about it. If I offered that to an American for 50 quid, he'd laugh at me. Yeah. If I offered it to a Japanese dealer for 50 quid, they'd laugh at me. They'd rather buy that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got the market for this. But I so... can't shift it. Yeah. You know, Whereas I couldn't shift this. No. It's the two branches of the antiques business, isn't That's it? It's right, a strange yeah. Yeah. mix. How old is this, do you think? Golly. It's Georgian. Georgian, is it? 1810? Yeah. Somewhere around there? Yeah, about 200 year old. Yeah. An unrestored Georgian piece like this is a rare find and very attractive to interior designers and photographers. It could fetch as much as £500. What sort of money are we looking at? I'll take 200 quid for it, and it's cheap. Yeah, you are doing me a bit of a favour, to be honest with that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I've had more bid know, it years ago. No, that's very fair. Very fair. No, I'll have that. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Golly. You'll do well with it. I will. I will. That's Don't great. be in a hurry to sell it. I won't be. I'm not giving that away. <laughs> no. No, very nice. A really good price on that. I'm very, very happy with it. He understands that put, putting that in the right place will achieve a nice profit on it. I think he could sell it easily for 500. 
Brilliant, I'm very, very happy with that. I didn't want to call in, but I have, and now it, I'm, I'm really pleased that I have done. Now the painful bit. What's, what can we do on the little Vespa then, Gone. I know I haven't spent a fortune with you. Well, there'll be another day, won't there? I'll be back. Next time you come, yeah. we might take some proper money. Take some proper money off me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down at what you offered me. Eight okay, quid. that's fine, I'll take it. Drew's chance drop-in has paid off. He's made several purchases, but more importantly, it looks like he's found a new supplier. Drew can find a home for this stuff. Well, so can I. It's Drew. If he's happy for me to come back, and he now, he now knows the sort of thing I like, and he said, you know, it's not the stuff he can sell, so that's, that's where we want to be. A couple of hours later, Drew and Gavin are back at the shop in Wales, eager to show their spoils to the waiting team. Lovely, isn't it? It's just got something about it. Just really well... Just a great-looking thing. Look, another one of those. Look at these as well. That jokes. <laughs> That's good. I, I like, like them. I like them. Look, there's, some good, nice. there's some good things in here. How cool That's is that? That's brilliant. That is fantastic. It's lovely. Straight inside. That's nice. What do you oh, think of this? Once. Hey? Yeah, I like that. Once unloaded, the items begin their journey from junk to saleable items. I've got some hooks here. I don't know if they're the same thread. We might have to just get a little step-down adapter for them. All these need tidying up. The insides are nice. They're not bad, actually. They're not bad at all. We've got to spend a few quid on them. Ollie's got to totally rewire them. We've got to get a nice bit of industrial chain. It comes through to the photography area. It's photographed and goes straight online by Mark. Basically, just showing it off in its best light. We'll measure its size, and that's a brief description, a bit of research of how old we think it is, and then we'll, we'll put it on the website as soon as it comes in. And in a few short hours, the Vespa will also be for sale. It's not a rare item by a very long way. Uh, now it's cleaned up, I don't think we're going to... I can't see myself keeping it. It's not really... Uh, the other one I've got at home is much nicer and a much earlier from the 50s. Uh, this one's a bit too late, and I think my wife will have a fit if I bring another toy Vespa into the house. Today is a big day for sales manager Mark. Watch that corner, watch that corner, watch it. It's his first trip on the road with Drew. He's found a lead that he knows Drew will like. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah, driving. But Drew is already regretting his decision to let Mark drive. You drive like a, like an old lady. <laughs> right, this side of the road, this side of the road, that's it. Gone the wrong way now, you dip. Just do 60 and don't hit anything. So where's this place where we're going? Where is it? It's in Basingstoke. OK. I think today's going to be a bit of a treat for you, Drew. Is it? I think so. It's Why is it full of strippers? <laughs> yeah. Why is today going to be a bit of a treat? Today we're going to see uh, Ricky Kenway. My name's Ricky Kenway. Oh, I like to buy mechanical things, cars, motorbikes, clocks, things like that. He's got, like, a semi-motor museum, and he's got... Look at this. He's got an Indian. An Indian motorbike? Yes. No way. Yeah. We've reached our destination. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh, look at what he's got. Oh, he's got fabulous stuff. Hi, Ricky. Yeah. Drew. Hiya. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, please meet you. Fantastic place you've got here. Mark. Hi. I started off as a mechanic and a mechanical background to just keep on fixing things. And I particularly like to have old, original things. I suppose it's like a kid in a toy shop. God, fantastic stuff here. Mark and Drew know that obsessive collectors like Ricky rarely sell their prized items, but often have stuff lying around that may be of interest. Buy these kids stuff home and you think, what on earth did I buy that? <laughs> <coughs> I know, like a fiberglass rhino's head. But it's a gamble and they may be going back with an empty van unless Drew can work his magic. So what's in here, then? Ah, there's all sorts of treasure in there. You'll have to have a look. It's the good shed. Yeah, all the good stuff's in there. Wow. Look at that. That's incredible. When I first got it, it was a showman's engine. They respect uh, heavy haulage. So how old is this thing? So 1901 it was built. 
and uh, when it was new, it was used in London when they were building the undergrounds. All the soil that was excavated was dumped with, with this, so this would pour a whole load of trailers. It's pretty damn impressive, you know, to see something like that. You will pay three to four hundred thousand pounds for something like that today. Well, I had a roller before that, and that just seemed like a natural progression to get something bigger and better and just a big boy's toy. And you take these round the fairs and stuff, do you? Or... Well, up the pubs there. Yeah. Uh, the uh, sort of favourite trip. Take it up yeah. the pub. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely to see blokes still making things in sheds. Old British tradition, he's keeping it up. It's great. And that, for instance, what, what age is that? That's 1896. Steam car. This is what you steer it with? Yeah, so you've got left and right. Yeah. And they move, it moves further than this, but I won't yeah. push it now. And that's reverse, right. that's forward, and twist for accelerate. What's something like this worth? It's the only one, and it's, he built seven, the guy who built it. It's a man called Whitney. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's certainly a six-figure sum. George Whitney was a famous inventor from Massachusetts, and his cars almost never sell on the open market. Ricky bought his from the Bewley Motor Museum. So this will probably end up in a museum, though, won't it? Yeah, it will certainly end up in a museum. He built the steam engine himself. He's put together most of the vehicles. He does all the restoration work, all the milling, all the welding. And it's, and it's quite breathtaking to see what he's doing and the standard of the work he's doing and the restoration to the items and making new things is, is fantastic. You've got such an eclectic mix of stuff here. Yeah, I have, It's yeah. hard to sort of pin down what you just like. Some people collect 4 by 4s and some people collect motorbikes and some people collect steam engines and God knows what else, but he's got a steam engine and that, and motorbikes and toy cars and scramble bikes and Land Rovers, and it's just a really weird mix. I like nearly all of it, you know, most of it I'd happily take home. But Drew hasn't come to look at Ricky's collection. He's here to buy. Wow, absolutely fabulous thing. It's a long shot, but he's desperately keen to see whether the Indian motorbike might be for sale. That has to be one of the best things I've seen in years. I think it's just a thing of beauty. Work of it's art. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It's an Indian four as well, isn't it? This is a seriously rare beast. Yeah. Founded in 1901, the Indian Motorcycle Company was once the biggest in the world. This particular model, the Indian 4, is extremely rare and is worth at least £25,000. God, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yes. I couldn't afford it. I'm not even going to ask. Just as well, as Ricky can't even decide if it's for sale or not. I never say never, but... Uh... No, I'm quite keen to hang on to it. Yeah. Well, I, I keep saying I'm going to keep this one. Can we see it going? Yeah, yeah, push it out. I'll ride really? it out for you, yeah, oh, yeah. fantastic. I don't want to drive it. No. I do want to drive it. I'd love to ride it. <laughs> yeah. But I don't really want to ride it. <laughs> no. All I could see was me falling off the Indian and then the massive bill. That even sounds beautiful, oh. doesn't it? God, he's got all the toys, hasn't he? What do you reckon? Wow, fantastic. Can I get a photograph of me on it before we go? Yeah, yeah. Before we go? Is that all right? <laughs> Can I just get one? Can you take one on here? I know you're very enthusiastic. For this I am dead thing. enthusiastic. Yeah. I feel like a little kid. A lottery win and one, there's several of these coming to Pritchard Towers. That's for sure. I think the wife might leave me, but still. Oh, well. Be worth at least you'll have an Indian. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't seen the wife yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Go on then, let's put it back in the shed. The Indian motorbike is just in a league of its own, but uh, I've got to buy things. Oh, like that. Yeah, I thought you might find that. Yeah. Little uh, Bibendum Michelin man to pump your tyres up. Finding something he wants to buy is not a problem, but finding something that a collector like Ricky is willing to sell is another matter. So what, what's this worth now? Um... All I'm looking to do is get my money back on that, and I'll give him £400 for it. 400 quid, it's... I can't make any money on that. Uh, well, maybe a little bit, but not not really. These are fetching good money at the moment, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. I, mean, I like the vintage little toy pedal car. I thought that was great. What are you asking for this? £1,500 for that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, for pedal car. Of, it's a lot, isn't it? That, yeah. But it's nice. <laughs> I love it. But it's a, it's a pedal car. There's not a lot of profit for us to, at the end of the day, which is why we're here. It's a frustrating day for Drew and Mark. Experience has taught them that collectors are often impossible to deal with, and Ricky seems to be in that category. I quite often sell things 
and price them accordingly. So if, if I don't want to sell it, or I'm not too keen on selling it, then I'll price it a little higher. But Drew has dealt with this type before and has a strategy to get one object he spotted. I have to say, when I first came in, I spotted that, which I really like. The bumper car picture. Yeah. This naive painting of a bumper car dates from the 1950s or 60s and is painted in the style of one of the most prolific painters of fairground rides, Fred Fowle. Yeah, it's just a, it's a fair one, isn't it, off her, just on hardboard? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I do like it. Drew does this kind of usual thing where he shows absolutely no interest in it whatsoever, and then towards the end, when he's befriended the customer, um, he'll make a pitch for it. I like it. It's got a great look to it. Yeah. Is that something that's for sale? Drew knows that the nostalgic subject matter and the scale of this painting will appeal to a wide audience and that it could fetch around £800. I think it'd probably be too expensive for you, to be honest. I mean, I would consider selling it, but I'd want a lot of money for it. What would you want? Oh, he's going to ask, like, £1,500, £2,000 for it, even in its hardboard, rip, punched-out, crappy state. £500. £500. Mm. I'll give you £400 for it. Oh, it's tempting, isn't it? A big, big empty patch on the wall yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah. No, I like it that much. Yeah. Meet you in the middle. Four and a half? Four and a half. Really? Yeah. Mm. I love it. No, lovely. Super stuff. Really like it. Lovely. Great. Thing. I really like it. I don't know why I sold it to him, really, but, um... I don't know. I'll find someone else to hang out there now. The look and the expression on their face and everything about it is just so good. That single painting sums up what I do and what I like about the business the most. It's quirky. It's original, it's rare, it's weird, it's decorative, it's cool. It's got all the things I like. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and you. See you again. Yeah, OK. Cheers, bye-bye. Yeah, bye. It's been a long journey just for one painting, but Drew can't wait to share his find with the team back in Wales. Do you like it? That's a gem. I think it maybe ever so slightly yeah. out of scale. No, that's what's great about it. It's totally out of whack. It's completely out of scale. Perspectives, all wrong. Yeah. All wrong. Do you like it? Anybody like it? Hands up. Drew has encountered an interesting mix of sellers this week, but now it's time for the tables to turn as he takes the plate racks he bought in Baclou to one of his best customers. I'm down here in Brighton, so I'm coming to see Alex today, uh, over in Kemp Town, which is only about a mile from the pier. I've got something that I know she's going to want on the back of the van. I've had this shop here now for five years. What I've come to understand is quite simple, really, which is that all I do is express myself through what I buy. Hi, Alex. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Oh. Okay, Jules, watch that chandelier. Alex has been a favourite of mine as a dealer before I knew her. I was a little bit of hero worship for her, to be honest with you. Her look is so strong. What she does is so individual. Wow, lovely. What do you think? Nice size. I think Drew is um, what I see as being sort of salt of the earth, authentic dealers where you feel like you're getting something at source. Should we talk money? Um, yeah. I'll tell you what I'd like to pay. Yeah. 500 for the pair. 500 pounds. Yeah. That's giving me a little profit, a little, like a... a little profit. But that sounds good to me. No, and I know you're not going to shift, are you? I'd like 600 quid for the pair. Right. 550, you're not going to say... You're going to say no, aren't you? I'd be happier with five. And um, I know you like keeping your customers happy, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, regular customer, that's fine. I'd rather okay. you have them, to be honest with okay. you. Um, I've made a little bit, so that's fine. That's okay. fine. Not a huge profit, but Drew is happy to have passed such a unique item on to a dealer he respects. She's doing something with the antiques trade, which is very unusual and extremely hard to do, which is giving a totally fresh, modern perspective. It's special, it's simple, it's beautiful, using fabulous old antiques. That's hard to do, and she makes it look effortless. A couple of days later, and Drew's wife, Rebecca, is anticipating another new arrival to the shop, as the Morris Miner Drew bought in Coventry is delivered. Another car, um, I've lost count. 
I don't think there's ever going to be a cut-off point where Drew says, I've bought too many cars. But will Drew's weakness for this cute classic prove to be a good business decision? 500 yards down the road from our shop is a Morris Minor restorer. And then he is coming down to give me a price for the work on the car and to see if I bought it right in the first place. Hi, Dave. Hi, Drew. How are you doing? All right, mate. So? Yeah, well, you said it was a, a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> when I picked it up, I noticed there was a little bit more work than I'd initially thought. I was just excited when I first got it, you know. Well, the outer undersill has gone... The riggers gone. have gone out as well. Back chassis shot. It's had the gold seal engine. Yeah. So the chances are that that's, you know... It's done a load of miles. Yeah. I paid 800 quid for it. Right. I knew it was pretty ropey. If I'm going to pass it on, I need to be able to sell it a bit of a profit. Do you think I could stretch it to maybe get a grand for it as it stands, or is that just way out? Um. Yeah, to the right person and someone who may be, you know, willing to do some of the work themselves. I think I must have taken some hallucinogenics last time I looked at the Morris Minor because, unfortunately, it was slightly worse than I remember. It's what I expected. It needs an awful lot of work, and I'm hoping it will go to somebody who will restore it. I'll never sell it to somebody who's going to cut it up for parts. The dog I bought from Peter, I knew where that was going to go and what I did with it. As soon as I got it, I sent a photograph to one of my regular clients, an international antique dealer. We had a sale this morning of one of the items I bought while I was away. How long was it in the shop? About 32 seconds. Yeah. And they were <laughs> Not long. Yeah, yeah, the full set of those unusual little pot jars. We doubled our money. That's fine. That's all right. The fabulous leather chair I bought from Golly, what I did with that, I have a, not a standing order, but pretty much from a foreign interior designer for any chairs of that period, and he took it immediately. <laughs> you looked after if he bit you. <laughs> a week later, and Drew has sold the Coventry car. Today, new owner Dave, who renovates Morris Miners, arrives to collect his latest project. Here's me. There you go. Be prize and joy. <laughs> and the price? Eight hundred pounds and fifty pence. Fifty pence more than Drew paid for it back in Coventry. I'll soon get it back to A1 condition. Dukes of Hazard. There's no real profit, but Drew's just glad to have saved another car from the scrapyard. I've made a bit of a loss on it, but yeah. I just know I don't care because I know yeah. you're going to save it. It'll be yeah, done. yeah. So well, that's but as soon as it's finished, I'll send you a couple of photographs and Yeah, posts. I'd love to see it, yeah, Because they always do that. Yeah. I always send a photograph of the finished car when I finish it. Oh, great. Well, yeah. I'd rather see it done and yeah. lose a few quid, and at least yeah. somebody's going to do something yeah. with it. So, no. look, thanks very much. Thanks, Drew. Cheers, All the best. fellas. Yeah. Thanks for okay, coming. Then. All Thank right. you. I love it when stuff sells quickly. It just makes it so much more fun. Sometimes it just isn't the money. It's finding out it goes somewhere you really didn't expect. It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. I didn't make any money on it. Well, there. 50p. 50p. That was it. So Not the best business deal I've ever done, to be perfectly honest with you. Can't even no. buy a bag of chips. No. No. And we can't retire. No. <laughs> Not off the no. back of that one, no. On Salvage Hunters, Drew visits the Vegas of the North, but can he buy a piece of it? They're like alien jelly babies. They are. Only in Blackpool. A visit to a pub packed with antiques gives him ideas. Too much. It's like, if I could get all my customers drunk as well, I'm sure I could charge them a lot more money. <laughs> These giant shells surprise the team. What is it? Look at the size of that. The size of that? That's unbelievable. But the standard of Drew's joke surprises no one. Hopefully somebody will shell out for them. Boo! Drew? Oh, I'm here all week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello? You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk into gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. Good afternoon, Drew Pritchards. Drew has built his reputation on his ability to source unusual one-off items, and he's always been a bit of a lone wolf. 
leaving my business to pe other people to look after has always been a bit stressful for me, and I still have a real problem with it. I think I must be a slightly control freak. Go on. Back in your room. Today, one member of staff is about to get a crash course in hunting the weird, the wonderful and the historic Drew style. What do you think, honestly? Um, yeah, I think they're great. Yeah. Mark has worked with Drew for almost five years, but today is the first time he's ever been on a buying trip. We're throwing him right at the deep end. He is completely convinced that we do nothing and just go into the pub and buy the odd bit of antiques. He's going to see the real deal and what it takes to make this job work. And he really is in at the deep end. The plan is to meet a lead Drew has been pursuing for years. They're heading to Windsor to a family-run travelling fairground that specialises in restoring rides dating back to the Victorian era. We had the largest travelling vintage fun fair anywhere in the world. Fairground people rarely sell to outsiders, and when they do, it's certainly not to dealers. I want to find the thing that wows you, that, that you've never seen before, and this is going to be one of those places. This could be their one and only opportunity, so Drew and Mark will need to be fully prepared. Just don't know what's there. Right. Don't know how much is there and don't know how much it is. I'm sure that's part of your job. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not getting done, Mark. You're letting me down, you're I'm letting yourself down, I've let my family I'm down. the family down. I've let the queen down. Okay, so more of a suck it and see approach. Wow. Look at these old travelling things they're living in. Look at the quality of that. It's amazing. God, I've never seen so many of these old rides together. Fantastic, isn't it? What a brilliant place. Oh, my God, is that a wall of death? Wall of death. I get really crazy. I'll just vomit every if I go on anything like this. It'll be 30 seconds of fun, followed by two hours of sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Drew and Mark go in search of Joby Carter, son of the late John Carter, who founded the fair over 30 years ago. Wow, there's, there's gallopers. Nice. That's a steam one, look. Steam engine. It's got to be over 100 years old to be a steam-driven one, hasn't it? 1895. 1895, there you go. Look at that, uh, the kiosk at the front there. That's a fabulous thing. Joby. How are you doing? Hello, Hi, Drew. Hi, Joby. Mark. Hi, Mark. How are we Just doing? admiring this. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's like a family heirloom, really. We've, uh, we've had it on the road since 1977. Steam-powered carousels or gallopers like this rarely come up for sale. If this example was to be sold, it would bring at least £100,000, a bit out of Drew's price range. Most of the scenic work you see on the fair yeah. is done by my mum. Oh, really? There's stuff like the horses and this more Art Deco, more graphic work. That's kind of that's my style. That's what I do. Okay. For what he's doing, I think is really important, and he's keeping this massive tradition and a British tradition alive. It's not just about having artifacts that we show to people. It's about maintaining traditions that they used back then. Their skills are dying out, and once they're gone, they're gone for good. Those were plywood. The originals are in the yard. I've got them. I'd love to go and have a look in the yard yeah, and see well, what you've got. I'll Can you do that? There, yeah. It's a short hop to the yard to meet Joby's mum, Anna. I'm very, very lucky to get in here today, and I've got to find something good. But just to get in is unheard of. Hi, I'm Drew. Oh, hello, Drew. Hi, just seen Joby sent me up here. I think some of the stuff you want to see is up here. OK. We've got some panels down here. Well, do you want to climb in and have a look? If I could, that'd be great, yeah. Yeah. These are the ones Joby mentioned to me down at the fairground. I didn't know I was going to have to work. Give it to Mark, make him do something. He does yeah, very little anyway. Spending. I'm going to get my hands dirty Careful. again. Oh, yeah. shame. Oh, lads, look at him. No, usually he's in the office. Is he? Yeah. Oh, he's a very delicate flower, you know. Is he? Yeah, it's a shame, a isn't it? Finally, Mark gets his hands on some historical artefacts and learns lesson number one. Don't break them. Oh, oh. He's usually stuck. Have you broken anything? Only his leg. That's OK. Lovely things. How old are these? Um, I don't know. I should think about turn of the century. Turn of the century. Yeah. About hundred odd years old. Yeah. Can you pick that end up, Mark. Wow. Okay. I'll put this end down if you can. Yeah. Come on, get it. Look at that. Beautiful. You know the dust is extra. <laughs> I'll leave that here. It just ooze authenticity. They ooze charm. They ooze beauty. They ooze the cool fact that they have just got it in spade load. 
Oh, that's all carved. Lovely off. paint. Isn't that Gorgeous. Yeah. Joby arrives from the fairground, and Drew gets straight to business over the Edwardian pieces. What have you found? Oh, all sorts. <laughs> Some great here. Something fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I like these. These are lovely. These are from uh, probably a scenic ride of one description or another. Have you got more of this? No, that's, that's it. That's the one piece. That's it. I mean, that, was, that was given to my dad. It's just such a beautiful piece. It's a little bit sentimental. I don't know why. Some things you, you associate, you know, I associate that with my dad and I associate it with the gallopers. So, I mean, got to ask, are these things for sale? They belong to Mum. I'm kind of quite attached to them, but... <laughs> you could be my agent, though, Joby. I don't, I don't know. You, you do get sentimental about things, don't you? My gut reaction is I don't think they're going to sell them. Those Edwardian pillars are going to be pricey because they know what this stuff is, and it's, it's, it, the, the importance they put on it adds to the value. Things here, i got a feeling I know what you want to do with these. Clear, you can see in his eyes. I'll give you a price, but I'm just going to be big enough so that you don't buy it because I don't want to sell it. A real bit of fairground history here. Um, you're a dealer. You mm. could sell these abroad. Yeah. And there's nothing to stop you doing that. I'm... No. Ideally, I'd see them in the shop at sort of... 1800 to 2400, something like that, because they're just an exceptional item. Uh, a couple of grand, to be yeah, honest. They're quite nice in the corner of my shed. Okay. And if I want to put them in the entrance to the fair or something like that, sure. they're, they're, there they are. I'm not going to make a profit on it. The antique pieces are clearly out of Drew's price range. He keeps looking for something more modern but still appealing. Oh, my word, he's trying to devalue it. <laughs> I mean, just like, bang, wow, these are something I just love. Even though they're relatively new, Drew knows he could sell these mid-20th century pieces for almost £400 each. Both the same price every time on them? Yeah, both yep. the same. They just got too rough, and it'd be quicker for me to do new ones than yep. it would to replace them. Oh, 60 quid each. Phenomenal. What an amazing-looking thing. Cannot wait to put these in the shop. £100 a pair? Yeah. Yeah, deal. great. OK, we'll have those. So we've got the ball rolling now. We've got some money-changing hands. So let's get some stuff bought, get it in the back of the van, get back to the shop. Ooh, what's in here? Lots of things. Wow. Ooh. They're, they're nice as well. We, we, I actually restored a couple of these. Did you see those before? No, what is it? They're flare lamps. You filled up with power fin. Uh, before they had electric yeah. light on the fairground, they had, <laughs> I had this idea I would uh, use them. We did have some more that we sold. So I hung them up. Got them, tried to get them all working. <laughs> it was flames. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, rather you than me. I don't know whether the power fins changed or what, but I thought, yeah, maybe I'll put some electric I... lights on that. <laughs> don't they used to explode in the old days. Oh, They've got God. a reputation for actually really? exploding. They're lethal. Yeah, but look at that, look. Yeah, that's just a bomb. Yeah, it is, it's yeah. a little bomb. <laughs> it's just yeah, a bomb. pretty much. But I think, you know, they didn't have health and safety. It was nah, just like a draw, wasn't it? It flames got blown up. on people. <laughs> Following the family tradition, Joby is a recognised fairground artist in his own right and shows Drew some of his work. Please do not bang the machines. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that in the office. That'd be great. Even though modern, signs like these painted by Joby could bring Drew around £100 each. The pony ride one, 75 quid. Right. Carter's yard. That kind of... There again, maybe a little bit sentimental because I didn't do it. Under quid. Right. Okay. So 175. Can you do 150 for the pair of these? You're at 175. Give us 160. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So what's next then? You got more stuff? Whilst Drew and Joby have been making deals, Joby's mum Anna has been sifting through her own stores. You might like them. Oh, these look good. Were these menu boards or what? I don't know. She's lovely. Isn't oh, she's she? lovely. Look at that her face. face is gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Brilliant. That's the bit I've been waiting for today. These are the, these are the two yeah. pieces for me, particularly her. How about that? Oh my God! Look That's at what him. I look like when I used Ooh, to try to play golf. <laughs> quite angry. Yeah. Couldn't hit the ball. I quite like those two guys as well. You know, the sort of snooty faces on that, particularly him. I was just looking at him, thinking, I'm taking him home. Early 20th century cutout figures like these could easily bring Drew 60 pounds each. Are these for sale? They could be, yeah. Yeah. What do you want for the? What would you want for the? The singly or as a bundle? Or... See my agent. Okay. Where do you want to be on these, Joe? Mum, mm. what, what have you got in your head? I've got no idea. I mean, this one I find really hard to part with. She's 
she's so lovely and she's the nicest one. Mm. And I basically just want to keep the nicest one, which kind of spoils the deal, spoils doesn't it? Spoils it for me, then, really, yeah. I don't mind <laughs> about that really, true, to be honest. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Well, I do you want to sell it or not, Mum? <laughs> well, she's pretty special, isn't she? But you'd have to tempt me, Joby. It'd have to be a bit... Go on, then. What's, what do you want? What do you want to do? Uh, well, I say if you wanted a lot, I'd put them up, up with that lot of 300 quid. 300 quid, so 30 quid a piece. Yeah. 300 pounds, 300 pounds, 300 pounds. Yeah, deal. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have those. Brilliant. Great. Little bargain for me at the end of the day. I mean, it's quite a decent little pile of pieces there. These, these are great, though, prize every time. We'll hang them up in the shop and they'll look brilliant. I'll be keeping that. It's really nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's lovely. I love the wear to it. I nag them because their signs are getting tatty mm. and I make them do new ones. And then that's more valuable than the new ones. How does that work? It's just the history, isn't it? Carter's, yeah. Carter's uh, steam fair, it's famous. Drew leaves with several pieces from the fair. Not the old pieces he'd been hoping for, but they are unique nonetheless. Huge pleasure meeting you both. Yeah, you too. Really enjoyed thank it. You, and thank you so much for letting us in. The van's loaded and Mark's broken his salvage hunting duck. Actually, I'm really excited because I never You're get really to excited. do this. I never get to do this part of the job. You never get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Even lunch could be a salvage hunting opportunity. Close by in Windsor is a pub where apparently everything's for sale. I've heard about this guy and he's got a pub locally and it's full of stuff. Everything in the pub is for sale, um, even down to Captain the Dog, if you're really very interested. But Drew's not getting his hopes up too high. You know, to be honest, being really honest about it, stuff in a pub... Yeah. So ..hanging okay. off the walls... You never know. We're looking, look. basically, what I think we're looking at is a load of heavily nicotine-stained horse brasses and oh, unfunny right. postcards. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> there you go. Pub. Uh, hey. The Alma. Oh, the Alma. In business. Oh, hello. He's got stuff. Oh, I, like that. I like that stuff. Public and Chris had a previous career working at Christie's in New York, so Drew may be in for a surprise when it comes to doing deals on the things he wants. This is the pub where you sell stuff? It is indeed, yes. Really? OK, yes. OK. I'm Come on Drew. In. Just, uh, Hi, Drew. Area. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? This is Mark. Uh, Hello, nice Mark. Yeah, everything in the pub is for sale. You know, we've had people walk in, had a meal, and then walked out with the table and chairs. Quite a place you've got here. Yeah, it looks the business, doesn't it? Yeah. It's really good. I like it. It's a really good mix. It's not sort of like a sort of cheesy pub interior that you'll see. It's, it's a bit cooler than that, isn't it? I like it. What kind of stuff are you guys interested in? Well, anything, all sorts of everything, really. It's a strange mix. But we're always looking for something just like a little bit different. To get a sense of the prices Chris will expect, Drew picks on something he regularly buys. How much for the little tin plate sign here, the little Ingersoll? I would say we're talking around £200 for that. OK. His pricing isn't cheap. Too much for me. Obviously, getting really good prices from some of his locals after a couple of shandies. What are these here? They're, um... Are those... Aye, these, are boat, these are rowing seats, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, I like those. So you'd sit on it, and as you were rowing, pulling backwards and forwards... That would go backwards and forwards with it. have wheels underneath. Yeah, there you go. Look. It says 1871 on it. I was though. quite intrigued by the name Disney, actually, on, on one of the seats. <laughs> is there? Oh, is there really? Yeah. And the Cox was only seven stone six. Yeah, look, but Dis that. Disney's 12 stone two. <laughs> <laughs> Dibs, he's a fatty like me. Drew needs to gain control and get Chris's prices down if they're going to do business. He goes in hard. Prices? For, for, for everything? Yeah. For the I, set? I would say we're looking in the region of £400. £400. A little bit too much. A little bit too much. I like these. I, I do like the old vintage posters. I uh, spent a bit of time collecting them. So what, what, what's for sale here? What sort of, what sort of price is save? Say for this one here, the big house? Yeah. That's a good-looking thing. Vintage posters are collectible, but quite common. Examples like this don't go for much more than £200. Yeah, I would say around the £200 mark for, for the larger posters. Chris's antiques background means he knows the value of everything. For Drew, it's a problem. He can't make a profit with prices like these. This one here, the Hippodrome Bristol, that one there. I'd say about 150 OK. Too much. It's like, if I could get all my customers drunk as well, I'm sure I could charge them a lot more money. 
Putting the posters aside, Drew concentrates on a salvage hunter's staple, enamel signs. Always saleable, examples like this can sell for £50. I'd say £30. For that. £30. Do it for 20 Do 20 on that. Why don't we split the difference? 25 quid? Yeah. Yeah, fine, we'll take that. OK. We'll do it. I like that. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Even if it's just a few pounds, it's 30 quid, maybe. Sometimes it's enough just to start the ball rolling. Can we just have a, a look at these posters again around the side sure. here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now he's established some better price levels with Chris. Can Drew convince this experienced negotiator to make some deals? These, I thought, OK, let's take the guy back and look at the frame ones again and see if I can get a better price, see if I can get some money off those. These, um, this one here again, what, what did you want for that one again there? I can't remember what I said. <laughs> yeah, I would say around the 200. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think you said 100 or 120. I'd say, I'd say 120, yeah, yeah. that sounds... Sometimes just going away and coming back for things changes people's perspective a little bit. I do like that one. The Hippodrome Bristol there, the Morecambe and Wise poster. Every time I think of Morecambe and Wise, it makes me smile. So to buy a, an original poster with them as top billing, I'm going to buy it. Although not rare, the subject matter of this poster is very appealing, and Drew could get around £180 for this piece of comedy history. Um, I can go to 80 which is, I think, is, is, is fair. It's given me a margin, it's given me a few quid I can make on it. OK, well, that, that's all right. Yeah, it sounds fair. I think that's fair. This one here, which I know is it's, it's French, but yeah. it's just got... I quite like to look it's at that one. The Hound of the Baskervilles. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah, I'd work that out. Good. I was just yeah, the dog and Baskerville written underneath it. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Good. I think that's an older poster and a, a little bit more desirable. Well, it's, but it's smaller and it's French. So it's, I think it evens itself out. Again, the subject matter is key to this poster's appeal. Drew could easily get 120 to 130 pounds for this well-known horror classic. I'd say I'd say about 120. 100 pounds is, is the best I would do on that. Well, like I said, if I could do the pair, then at 160. <laughs> I think that's where I'd be. I'd happily pay 80 for it. So it's got some of the greats of the early horror films in there. Ten pound more, 90 pounds. Done. Yeah? Yeah, fine. OK, we'll take him as well. 90 pounds for a little poster, that's a lot of money, but I'll take the chance with those two names and the subject matter as well. The thing that catches my eye straight away is the, the Hillman sign. I know you've got one there rigged up. Yeah, I kind of like the yeah, display I like, signs. I like the colour of this. Yeah. And that it lights up. <laughs> So don't pull everything down. That's it. Just have to come through there. Oh, it's Christmas lemons. I mean, it's very basic construction. It is. It's simple, but yeah, good looking. I'd put these as uh, mid to late fifties again, uh, and these have been just been hanging in a showroom window. They're, they've got a great look to them, and they can be hung or just put on the floor like that, you know? They're unrestored. All that original painting on the light box that they're in is chipped and coming off, and I like that too. Car fanatic Drew knows the appeal of vintage automotive pieces like these light boxes. They were made to advertise now-defunct car manufacturers Hillman and Humber and could bring almost £300 each. Can you do 200 for the pair? I'm not knocking you too much on those. Yeah, we can That'd do £200 right. for the pair. Great, OK, so we'll take those as well. We've got myriad of people we can sell those to, because you've got motoring enthusiasts for both models, you've got people doing interior decor, because they're a good-looking thing as well. Good, aren't they? Sell them as a pair, isn't it? Brilliant, fantastic. OK, I think we're done here, then. Yeah, cool. Marvellous, thanks. This is Chris, my business partner. Chris, hi. We do have a lock-up down the road, and I've actually got a few more of those. Chris, will you be happy to take the guys down there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I could take you down there. It's not far. Time for a milestone in Mark's education, the storage unit. So we've seen all the really nice, tidy stuff. Can you take us to the place where there's just piles of junk lying around? Yeah. OK, which ones are they? Oh, blimey. That's what we're looking for, another one of those frames, yeah? Do you know where they are? In there somewhere. If they... right. <laughs> Probably. Thanks for your help. <laughs> I think somewhere in one of these boxes there's some food. It's a bit smelly. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm actually... I think I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I found them. That's it. One, three. Well, that one's in nice, Nick. That's the excellent, Nick. Oh, sunbeam, and that's broken. Oh, yeah. no. 
That's a shame we're missing it, isn't it? Try and get this through there. There's got to be easier ways of making money. Oh. Oh. Just trying to get my fat stomach through here. Oh. Got to breathe in. You know you can. Oh, God. Mighty. Nearly gelded myself coming through there. Yeah. Yeah, they're right, aren't they? Not as good as the light box ones, but they're OK. You don't know if you've got the M off sunbeam, do you? Uh, it should be around somewhere, but it's... Wet somewhere in there. I might have a bit more of a dig around. Even though they're less desirable than the light boxes, these signs can bring in around £40 each. Have a look, see if you can find the M. So what are these going to run us at to, Chris, then? Well, the others were 200 for the two, wasn't it? The yeah, ones. they were different animals to these completely. The sexy one is the sunbeam one. Yeah. That's the one that would have made the money. Comma, comma vans. Not very cool. No. Well, desirable-ish, but not cool. So broken one, good one. Broken one, good one. Where do you want to what be? Are you, what are you sort of thinking of? 50 quid. Each? No. <laughs> Come on. Uh, 75? No, it's still too much. 60. OK. 60 quid? Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah? And even if he finds the end. <laughs> have you got it? No, I've not found it yet. There's a box here that says Lance Corporal H. Tull. What's that? Don't know from that. Is he still in there? <laughs> he might be still in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just these bits then. Thanks, Chris. The unit didn't yield as much as Drew had expected. So it's back to the pub to load up the other purchases of the day. Did you have a nice day out in the country today, Mark? I enjoyed that. Today. Not every day is as easy as this, you know that, don't you? Not every day is the absolute sweet little ride you've had today of, wow. doing, of doing, basically, you haven't done a stroke today. Nope. <laughs> nothing. You haven't done anything. No. I'm looking forward to being knee-deep in pig poop. <laughs> Last week we were knee-deep in pig poop. Excellent. Pulling out lamps. You've just got such a... You've got the easy, easy, easy job. Yeah, I've had a great day. Easy. Mark's brief taste of life on the road is at an end, and it's time for him to proudly reveal to the team what he and Drew have achieved. <laughs> but it's a tough crowd to please. We've been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> they might not look like there's a lot in there. But there and you'd be right. <laughs> oh, Jules, you like these? Oh, God. Good, good aren't they? Nice and calm. Yeah, yeah. The illuminated sign box, you know, the advertising things that would have been hanging, you know, in the front window sort of thing. So the hill in. That is cool. I like that. It's good, isn't it? I thought I you'd like that. that. Must you stop by request? Yeah. And then uh, this bit, one of my favourite things I've got. You'll love this. Look at this. Whee! Now we're talking. Is that an original, is it? I think so. Is I'd say so. Condition, type of paper it's on, colour, print. What year was it? Everything. Do you know what I'm trying to work <laughs> that, That's the only thing it hasn't got a year on. This piece may not have a year, but Julian employs some lateral thinking. Surely you'd be able to narrow it down by the day and the date. Yeah, and whatever. There Tuesday might, there the 24th might be... of December is going to fall every year, is it? Fall's going to be uh, Tuesday, is it? God, you're yeah. quite clever. That's the cleverest thing I've ever, ever heard you heard say. Me say. You Not here for my just <laughs> my phenomenally bad looks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Prize every time. Cool, eh? What do I win? Three hours overtime. That's straight into the shop. I don't think they need anything. Drew's wife Rebecca is thrilled with the stuff he's brought home. They're great. Aren't they good? Really good. I don't think salvage will ever not be trendy because the years you're covering, you're definitely 100 plus years in age, there's always something that's going to come, you know, uh, back into fashion again. You've done really, really well. Yeah. Would have been nice to get more. There we are. Look at that. The hardest bit is, is the longer you're in it, the harder it is to, to source. That's why Drew now, you know, needs to be... He needs to be out on the road. And the very next day, he is. This time, he's with Gavin, who's swapping his restoration duties for one of Drew's salvage hunting masterclasses. Once again, it's a baptism of fire, as they're off to a place where no other dealer has ever set foot. Drew's been offered the opportunity to buy some of Blackpool's famous illuminations. 
to see this bloke. And um, he seems like a bit of a laugh, actually. And uh, he's in charge of all the lights. Drew and Gavin are meeting Richard. He's manager of the Blackpool Illuminations Department. This is the warehouse where old lights are repaired and stored. They're like our children. You know, they're, they're something that we create lovingly in craft and then show the world. It's been going for 100 years, and that is an amazing achievement. People still come from all over the UK and beyond to see them. It's just somebody had an idea years ago. Why don't we extend the season with this fabulous lighting scheme? And it's developed from that. I love Blackpool, the Las Vegas of the north. What I'd like is sort of retro 70s gear. Oh, my good God, look at him. What, who's that? Oh, God, crazy God. I mean, it's so kitsch, some of that stuff. It takes kitsch to another level. Blackpool just does it in a certain way that is British kitsch at its very best. I've seen one, two pictures of what we're going to look at, but Mark's not told me exactly what he just says. Buy, buy the big weird thing, you'll know what I mean. So we don't really know. Could be anything. Could be anything. <laughs> the big weird thing, that's what we do. <laughs> that's our business plan. Uh, hang on, Blackpool Council Lightworks, Illuminations Department. Them cameras. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's a cool, sir. Oh, God, look at this. Thank God for Blackpool. Six foot tall gold seahorse. Couldn't get more British than this, could you? Richard, Drew. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? This is Gavin. Right. Hello, Gavin. Nice, nice to meet you. you too. And you. And you. Welcome to the Illuminations Depot. Wow. wow. <laughs> the problem is, we'd love to keep everything, but there just physically isn't the space. You look at it, big space, but it's full. God, it's fantastic, isn't it? I thought it'd be like a little shed on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> a million different things in this place. Lots of different ages. There's nobody been in here before. This is the Nobody's first time. Nobody's been in this depot before. You're actually the first. First. Well, we're, you know, we understand it's a privilege to be in here to buy this stuff. It really is. For Drew, it's not just a privilege, but a step back in time. I do remember the first time I came. I was about nine, about 1979. And it did feel like the illumination was like, oh, Jesus, look at that, all lit up. I just remember staring out the window going, oh, my God, this is amazing. It may seem like an unusual place for a salvage hunter, but Drew has a plan for the pieces he sees. Right now, it's a pile of plastic and bulbs and wires. I'm going to put that into the shop, yeah. market it in a completely different way. All of a sudden, that is the most kitsch piece of pop art on the market today. Right, we'll just go through here then. Bazzle! Bazzle. Yeah. <laughs> He's been in the Illuminations for a number of years and... Uh, Basil brush. Boom, boom. He tells jokes. <laughs> so we have the, the... As kids walk past it, there's a CD playing various jokes. Obviously, the, the great joke we were considering was sticking in a Chubby Brown CD <laughs> one night, but we decided against it, I'm pleased to say. It looks like Julian. <laughs> <laughs> the same red nose as well. <laughs> same shape and everything. We used to have a bigger one. Did you? Yeah. It's probably modelled on him. <laughs> wow, <laughs> look at that. That is so That's cool. Awesome. You build all these here? Everything's built here. Yeah. Is this for sale? That'd be dead expensive. How much is, how much is, dead, to... how much is dead expensive? You're looking at at least 10 grand. At least 10 grand. Ooh, because I'd have to replace it. You're looking at very, very serious money for a peacock like that. What's, what does something like, what's that, something like that It would run cost for? probably about seven or eight grand to build. Really? Yeah. Um, no. Now, you have to let me buy that. <laughs> oh, I really like that, actually. You really like that? Yeah, it's lovely. It, it would have to be quite a lot of money, I'm afraid. So far, nothing is under £7,000 a piece. If Drew can't find something more in his price range, he'll be going home with an empty van. Acid House Blackpool Lamps. It's a rave moment. It is. Rave lamps, I like We've those a lot. have got a few of those. You have? Yeah. Very, very saleable, very now. Once rewired and reconditioned, unique pieces like these from Blackpool could easily net Drew around £500 each. Just for dipping my toe in, cos I don't buy Blackpool illuminations every day. Don't you? Not every day, no. <laughs> but what sort of money are we looking at? 50 quid. From £7,000 to 50, it's a unique opportunity for Drew. We'll take all those. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Deal. Fantastic. First deal. Thank you. I'm not going to argue with him on the price. We're lucky to get in here. If you get into somewhere like this and the prices are anywhere near, I'm just going to buy it. These are good. They're going in the office. <laughs> the warehouse is so vast that it takes several hours for Drew to explore. 
and the pieces get ever more surreal. Something here that you may or may not be interested in, probably the largest jelly babies you've ever seen in your life. They're like alien jelly babies. They are. It's a very Blackpool moment. It is. Um, <laughs> Only in Blackpool. Although less saleable than the smiley faces, these could still bring around £150 per piece. Are these for sale? Yes, these are, these are up for sale. What sort of money? 50 quid each. 50 quid Same each. Same again. I'm going to think about money. that, but I'd be looking at taking the lot. Well, let's see how many we've got. Yeah. Come up with a figure for all of it, and yeah. then we'll talk. OK, let's do that. See if you fancy this. Definitely. Wow. I should hold back and be a bit, you know, but no, I want that. In the middle of the road, he used to say, flashbang wallop. What a picture. Uh, what a picture, basically, yeah. So each one of these was sort of exploding in the middle of the road. Yeah, these I really like. This is great for shops. There's a whole s crate of them over there. That one's got flash on and... Bang. Wallop. Wallop. Pop art pieces like these could easily bring £225 each. Are we in the same sort of price bracket of the rest? 40. I have to have them, so the person walking into the shop will say the same thing. They're going to want them. They're incredible. Fine. Yep. OK, let's have a deal on those. Lead on. Let's have a look at well, some more. Well, something else I'd like to, to uh, cast your beady eye on. OK. We have a series of eyes. Oh, God. Oh, that's brilliant. I think the appeal of having a two-foot day glow illuminated eye on your wall is quite high. The scare the fact the kids, woo! Those are fantastic. Those are instantly, that's a cool thing. Yeah, they are. You're going to want one of those, aren't you, in your house? Uh, not personally, but I know people <laughs> that will. I'd like it. I'd put it in the shop. Smaller pieces are always easier to sell. These eyes could bring around £150 each. You want to know how much? I do. I get about 50 quid. Because there's a transformer on it, there's a bit of non-neon, there's a bit more sure. to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With prices like these, Drew has long since given up haggling. Now it's just a case of picking the best pieces. I can see these being a big oh, seller. <laughs> I put it in, certainly put it in shop displays, window displays, in a bar. Interested? Definitely, yes. OK, brilliant. Yeah. Richard, yeah, a, a really good day. I've enjoyed nice it. To see you. I really All have. Best. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. See Safe you again. Journey. How often do you get to go into somewhere like that to find these pieces just so unique? I've got a couple of buyers who are going to be falling over themselves for some of these pieces, for decorated pieces. Um, it's just going to look brilliant. I'm happy. We've got a full van. We've got stuff to sell. We're going to make some money. But the proof of the salvage hunter's pudding is in the unloading. What will the team think of his pop art purchases? <laughs> Bang, <laughs> wallop! <laughs> then laughing at what we bought, it's always a good start. <laughs> That's cool. It's like an acid house thing. Again, it all lights up. It's a perfect bar piece. So we did well. You did really well. What do you think of those? Aliens. But jelly babies. Do you know what's going to happen is people are going to buy these when they're drunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how your eyes look this morning. Drew already has some buyers in mind, but Rebecca has an idea of her own. Opticians! Opticians perfect! Opticians. <laughs> they will buy them, Drew. people who've got hangovers. Opticians for Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drew can see potential in even the most bizarre. It's so varied. It's easy to say what we don't buy than what we do buy. I mean, for example, you know, flashbang wallop signs. Uh, if you'd asked me last week, can you get us flashbank wallop signs? We'd have gone, well, we haven't got any in stock, but uh, we might know somebody who does. Um, and that's, you know, that's part and parcel of it. Split them in half, and so they go flat on the wall, because at the moment, those, both sides, both sides are... light up. You've had worse, haven't you? A lot worse. Yeah. This is a walk in the park today. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do on these because we've got to make new backboards for them all. So when we first got them, we looked at them and thought we're going to have to split them in half. So we do sort of get more bang for our buck. We get two sides. But there's more work doing it that way because we've got to make a new lighting rig for the inside, but they look a million times better that way. Time for the moment of truth. A few days later, Rebecca's showing Drew's latest purchases to a regular client. Where are you? It's Wales. Yes. Actor and pop sensation H from 90s band Steps. Where's that from? 
That's from Carter's Steam Fair. It's lovely, isn't it? I love it. I want it. Has it got your name on? It has, depending on a special price from Drew. I will phone <laughs> Drew and say I've got a very special friend. Yes. Shall I? <laughs> Emphasis on special. Special. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I love it because I have just bought some carousel horses on eBay and I'm going to put this above them. <gasps> oh, I love it. I, I, I love it. I. I have no idea where I'm going to put it, but I was yeah. Just about to say where you're going to put it. No idea. No idea. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Times two, please. OK, I'll get the other one and we'll bring them out to the car for you. Lovely, when okay. the rain stops. When the rain stops, yes. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye. Oh. <clears throat> There's nothing Drew likes more than a good scrapyard. News has come in of a new one he hasn't yet visited. And within minutes, he's on the road. Well, there's plenty of old farmyards around here. In fact, it's like, it's great. There's, there's tons of old stuff. This time, it's Julian who will get to see the master in action. They're on a six-hour drive to Scotland to meet tractor fanatic and scrap dealer Davy Reed. I just love a tractor. Well, some people put it down to a disease. You have to collect. I have 154 tractors, I think, something like that. So he's just a bit eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Look at this one. Place. Look at this one. one? No. Is it? Over there. <laughs> what a cool coach. Look at that. Oh, well, let's pull in here. Let's pull in here. Yes, see. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, if we can't find something here, we can't find something anywhere. Drew and Julian are met by Davy and his son, Richard. So, what do you want to see first? I do, I'm happy to have a look around. Drew needs to find a serious amount of stuff to make this long trip worthwhile. Will this junkyard yield enough treasures to keep the team back home happy? Places like this used to be really common. You know, there was one in every village, on every road, there was always a farm with some stuff lying around outside, but now you just don't tend to find them. To find little places like this, still, fantastic. Jeez, look at that. It's, this is amazing. That's incredible. Stationary engineer. It weighs ten and a half ton. The flywheel at the back is seven ton. Uh, the shaft that drives it is a ton. And the body's four and a half ton. Single cylinder diesel made in 1928. Wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's crazy. Heavy days, engineering. Isn't it? It's proper built, isn't it? So you've got all sorts of stuff here. So, so um, I'm guessing what that's for. Do you want to tell us what it's for? Uh, oh, not really. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, to do with animals. Yes, it's for castrating. Castrating. Castrating yeah, yeah. bull Bulls. cars. What? Do you want to demonstrate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, put that down. No, yeah, it's safe. I'll, I'll, leave, it that, I'll <laughs> leave that well alone. That's not I... a mantique. Ah, uh, Richard, pull out. Luckily, it's not long before he spots something that he knows his customers will like. Lovely look at that. It's evocative of steam locomotives. It's a great looking thing. That I is like really that. nice. I like that. It's uh, quite good. Is something like that, is that for sale? So, so would it be right in saying that this would be like a wooden former they'd have, they'd have made for sand casting? Yep, it And is. then that made the casting mark in the sand? In the sand, yeah. Then they pour yeah. the cast into there. Something as unique as this is an instant work of art, and Drew's interior design customers would easily pay around £350 for this casting wheel. Give you, what would you want for it? Oh, I have no I idea. need to talk money with you. You give me an offer. Talk money with me. I'll talk money with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd like to buy that. I think it's a you nice thing. You give me an offer. How much would you offer for that? 75 Not much, me. I'll be better. Let's call it £100. £100, okay. £100 for that. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Shoot, yeah deal. I'll have that. Deal. Thank you. Yeah. There's going to be collectors fit in so many different ways for me to sell that on again, but it's in lovely condition. Is that for sale? Yeah, for sale. Is that for sale? Yeah. Signs like these are not rare, but always popular. This example could sell for £50. So what do you want for this, then? 
Give us an offer. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to start low again. Twenty pounds for something like that. I dig it. Yeah. Sure. That's, yeah. Right. yeah. That's that's. Oh, sure. But, you but you're not going to get any more money out of me for it. Quite a good it. offer. Yeah. That's that's bugger. <laughs> I, I think actually it cost me fifty pence about twenty years. Ago. Twenty. <laughs> there you go. What about, are you complaining about? About, about twenty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know how inflation's hurt the country? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Onto the government. That's fine, I'll take that for 20 yeah. quid. Uh, the Sunlight Soap one, what do you want for that one? A well-known brand name can push the price up. This Sunlight Soap sign could sell for £80. I think... I think uh, well, what, you... would, what would you... Can you start this one, no. then? You, you tell me what you want this time. I would, st you... I would start high. 200? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You're joking. What, is there five more of them? No, maybe a double-sided one. No, 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 no we're, we're very far apart no, okay. on that one. We're very far. Do you want me to tell you what I think I'd want to we'll pay go for? We'll go on it? 40. 40 quid? Yes, yeah, so we're only 160 really pound quite. apart. I thought you get another in a day. I can, they're the, they're, they're, they are a common one. They are a common one. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you oh, yeah, that's a common, aren't you? Yeah, that's a common one. Yeah. 55? No. Uh, 45. OK, deal. Deal. There you go. All right, we got it. You've got to work hard there for your money. Aye. And I paid too much for it. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. Okay. As long as you're happy. I'm all right. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> Ooh. As Drew's leaving, he spots something very unusual. I literally could not believe my eyes. Sales. For sale? Yeah. Cross the old. It's a place you break. OK. These are giant clamshells. Some say they're fossilised giant clamshells. Jesus. I don't think they are, I think they're just a giant clam shell. Wow. I'm not going to move this. Wow, yeah. cracking decorative pieces, though. Pieces like these are a rare find and could command prices of over £1,500 for the pair. And these are a decorator piece par excellence. They are amazing. What sort of money? What do you want? Where do you want to be? 300 oh, That's a bit too much. The condition's not great. Um, I think two, 200 for the pair in this condition. 275. Um, look, one, one off the 225 for the pair. <laughs> yeah, all right, cheers. That's a hard one, Thank you. There's a bloody big muscle in there, wasn't there? I wouldn't like to have a fight with him. Imagine getting caught your arm in there. Look at that, look at the size of that muscle that was in there. Thanks. That was great. Thank really yeah. enjoyed it. And we bought some gear, so I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. And you've got your money. We've got some, some rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's spur of the moment trip to Scotland has thrown up some incredible salvage and lots of new restoration projects for the team. It's nice when I bring something back and Rebecca and the, and the lads all think the same way. Sunlight soap. Sunlight soap. All the way from Portsmouth. All about yeah. from Liverpool to Scotland. Excellent. I'm back again. I'm back again. Yeah. yeah. Great. Sunlight soap. Yeah. Nice. Little thing I thought was quite cool, like the colour. Sort of Batman sort of look yeah. about it, I thought quite nice. Oops, you know. And these are my favourite thing we've found. What, Julian and Gavin? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Come on, the suspense is killing me. Do you know what it is? It looks like a giant a shell. shell. <laughs> Imagine that biting you on the arse. What it's is it? Giant clams. No. Yeah. Look at the size of that. The size of that? That's unbelievable. The clams are amazing. First, I just thought they're not real. They're totally just wow. Good as a pair. Yes. I'm not going to sell them singularly. Gosh, Should sell a... them singularly, but I think... I it's think as a pair, pair, it's more yeah. of a wow factor, isn't I it? I think so. The team are impressed with Drew's finds, <laughs> but the same can't be said for his job. Hopefully somebody will shell out for them. Oh, Drew. Oh. I'm here all week. <laughs> yeah, <obviously. laughs> He's brought back some really unusual stuff. There's a lot for Gavin to do. Get all the colour off it and wax it and polish it. Get some hooks on it, stick it on the wall. So Drew has come up trumps again, and his pupils can only wonder at the skills of their master. Yeah, I wonder why he buys them, but he always seems to... He always seems to sell them. I look at some stuff and think, oh, my God, that's going to be here forever, but it's usually gone in a week. I'm just putting some wax on this. Just give it a bit of life. 
So you get that nice shine. I'm put this in my bathroom with a big bar of soap in it. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's phoned up and said he's sold the clamshells uh, to uh, a customer of ours who's bought other stuff. Uh, we're going to tie it up with the shipment we're sending over to him in Saint Chapay, which is great news. Inside the office, the team's handiwork brings new meaning to the phrase, keeping an eye on things. I like the eye in the roof. Do you like that? Yeah, yeah. Is it a permanent feature? Yes. Really? Until we sell it. OK. I'm not that enamoured with it. No, it's OK. No. <laughs> we'll take it down. <laughs> what have you done? Have you glued it on there? No, no, no. It's only orange double-sided tape. We've got I'm glad to see feature. that you're not wasting your time while I'm tape. away. No, we did this after working hours. What, so you charged me overtime to do it? No, we all came in at 7 o'clock when we knew we'd finish all our day's work. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Some of the Blackpool Illuminations have found a new home in Scarborough. This is a house or a bungalow that's about to fall off a cliff. Two houses have already fallen off, and this is the next one. So I bought this house as an art piece, as an installation, with a view to taking photographs and making paintings from it, doing a whole series of things. And so I've been given about 18 months to produce a whole series of art pieces, and this includes... This is the very latest one, you know, Flashbang Moloch. But the, the, the landslide has just stopped for the time being. It's kind of... You know, it's, held, it's holding its breath, so to speak. You know, in theory, the house could go over today. In fact, I'll be standing here now, you know, we might hear a few creaks, and if we do, we'll have to jump out pretty quickly. Turn the lights on. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Flash, bang, wallet, fantastic. <laughs> Even by our standards, that's a weird one. I don't think we've ever sold anything to anybody who's purposely going to break it. On Salvage Hunters, Drew gets a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to buy a piece of British seaside history. I want to buy a bit of Brighton Pier. 200. 200 pounds. Oh, my good God. But will this queen of hard bargaining lower her prices? No. <laughs> There's fun and frolics at Britain's oldest cinema. Where the little guy sits. We could put these on our transit van, Bev. Yeah, they look, they yeah, look yeah. cool. Might be a, a French a dirty film. But it's no laughing matter as a big order puts the whole team under pressure. Just make sure, no problems. Important customer, so look after him. Whoa. There's a lot of pressure. Gonna need a bigger boat. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Woo! That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk into gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. It's Monday morning in North Wales, and salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is about to make a French connection. Drew Pritchards. Hi. Oh, great, thank you, great. You, no, you don't sound French unless you're from the Birmingham area of, the, of France. A new client in France who's renovating posh properties in Saint-Tropez is adding to his order, making it one of the biggest in the company's history. All this stuff's available still. The transport, I think, would be the only issue. When do you need it all for? Ooh. Ooh. Um, I'll, um, I'll jump on this now and see what I can do. Cheers, bye bye. Bonjour, Rodney. Bloody fantastic. Fantastic little deal there. That guy's taking all that stuff to Saint Tropez. Excellent. The whole Excellent. lot. Big pile of stuff he's just added to it and he's putting a reserve on that other big massive stained glass window. Excellent. And any others we've got. What a week. The guy's building three houses in the south of France. What he's doing is he's using a lot of really good architectural elements and he's basically bought all my really odd big items. He spent £20,000 with us straight off the ball. You know, that's just brilliant for us. It, it saves little businesses like us. It's, it's the greatest thing that can happen right now. And Drew has an idea of how he may be able to add to the order. He's heard that a piece of British seaside history is up for sale, which could just fit the bill. But it means an eight-hour drive to Brighton. 
Brighton Pier burnt down. A lot of the cast iron panels and interlocking sections of the panels were rescued, so I'm hopefully going to be able to get my hands on some of those. We've got um, loads of stuff down south to see, so... Where are we going? Anywhere nice? No. <laughs> <laughs> Accompanying Drew is delivery driver and salesman Julian. It's not always the easiest of relationships, so it could be an interesting trip. Jules, <laughs> Julian's relationship and, and myself goes back um, a very long way, till I was about 15. I'm a friend of his sister's, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you might want your water. Is that mine? Yeah. Well, it's, it's certainly not mine, mate. It hasn't got hops in it. Hey, mate. OK. The guy we're buying for in France wants large quantities of stuff. Cast iron is one of the things he loves, so this would be great if we could buy a lot of stuff and then add to his order and fill it right up. Drew and Julian arrive in Brighton, and after eight hours in a stuffy van together, the bickering is well underway. Stop. I'll do. <laughs> not spending money. Money, it's not for spending. Sorry? Money, it's not for spending. I think we're spending money, mate. Spending money on stuff. Just money. Any idea where we're going? We're going to the pier, aren't we? Go to the pier. Okay. To the water. Is it the West Pier? Which one burnt? It's the one that burnt down. So it's the, is that the West Absolutely Pier? Absolutely not. I don't know. Um... Wasn't that the hotel of Quadrophenia? The Grand. Yeah. yeah. Where's this screwed pier? Oh, there it is. Cool. It's not that one. It is that. It's that one. Look, it's the one that's been on fire. The one that doesn't have any way of getting to it. Drew is meeting Rachel Clark. She works for a charitable trust that's selling off the pier. Her job is to get as much money as possible to put towards a planned heritage centre. What I'm hoping they've got is some really good decorative architectural castings. There's literally hundreds of tonnes of it, so there's got to be something left for me. Rachel. Hi. Hello. I'm Drew. Hi, Drew. Nice to meet you. Should this is the place? This is the place. Drew is the first dealer that Rachel has allowed in. It's an incredible opportunity, but one that could come with a hefty price tag. Wow. This is all material that was salvaged from the pier in the 1990s. Yeah. It was kept in here, and then we had a fires in 2003. We lost our lottery funding. There's obviously not, not going to be a restoration. Okay. What we hope will happen is that we'll raise funds to go towards our heritage nice centre. Nice idea. Yeah. My God, look at that. That's architectural salvage on a pretty grand scale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. yeah. I want to buy a bit of Brighton Pier. How often do you get to get a bit of Brighton Pier? Look how much stuff, there's tons of it all the way around us. Drew needs to get the measure of Rachel before he can find out just how much of this British landmark he can get his hands on. There's an awful lot of stock here that our new client might like, so I'm looking for large panels, pillars, but particularly in pairs, so we'll see. So this is part of the weather screen, which was original to the pier. It's really exciting just to walk in here and see just history laid out in front of you and beautiful items as well. The pier opened in 1866. Its heyday was in the 1920s, when it had a theatre and a concert hall. It attracted two million visitors a year. And it's really quite something. It's lovely. It's very pretty, that's, isn't it? That's a really good design, mm. that one. There are a lot of brackets, because all the buildings on the pier were supported by brackets. You've got lots of these. I mean, I've seen a few. I can, yeah, see, I can some, see a dozen yeah, from here. Over there. Victorian ironwork pieces like these usually sell for around £100. But the fact that they're from the pier could push them up to £150 each. How much are these being Individually, going for? they go for 130 Are you doing discount for bulk? Yeah, not ridiculous discounts. £40 each. No. <laughs> <laughs> One's OK, but I'd really like to buy them all. Yeah. Well, my customers would love this stuff, but I've got to buy it at the right price. Yeah, I understand. I really have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel is no yeah. pushover. I've got a responsibility here. This yeah. is going towards our heritage centre. But Drew just can't make a profit at these prices. It's great that they're getting the money to do what they want to do. For me, no good. Pointing out the flaws in the pieces may help. They're not square, are they? Not They're all no, slightly yeah, canted yeah, you're right. to the right, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. a devil of a thing to sell now. They're in pretty bad condition. They've got this unusual Moorish design on there, right. castings, haven't they? Yeah. But Rachel's not biting. Everything's in really hammered condition, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's quite nice it's in lovely. the garden, yeah, nice you know. Thing. A few minutes in, and the Ice Maiden shows signs of melting as she takes Drew to some more modern panels. 
Maybe these are in his price range. I just want to show, point these out because these, I must say, um, you know, I think uh, compared to a lot of what we've got are actually a little on the ordinary side. You can see the castings are just nowhere near as exactly, good. Exactly, yeah. exactly. These 20th century pieces are less intricate and therefore less desirable. The most Drew could get is around £200 each. Not an easy sell. How much? Uh, about 200 each. <gasps> 200 pounds. Do you want a job? You can come work for me. <laughs> if I get all my stuff and leave it out in the open, can I get these prices? <laughs> and as Rachel shows Drew around, it gets even worse. Now, these columns... Yeah, um, they're good. They're lovely, aren't they? Drew has a similar pair of cast iron pillars for sale at 300 pounds. I sold four of these for 1,000 pounds. It's good money. Yeah. Undeterred, Rachel keeps offering more unsuitable pieces that are out of his price range. This is part of one of the six octagonal original 1866 kiosks. 1866 was when the pier opened, so anything that was in, in situ then has got a sort of cachet to yes. it. But, of course, being a pier, it evolved and changed over the years. So quite a bit of the material you'll find isn't actually from 1866. It's from the 1890s or even into the early 20th century. I'm pretty good at what I do and I don't think I could sell No, that. really? No, I'd yeah, be yeah. really pushing it. It's torture for Drew. This stuff is salvage hunter gold and only comes up for sale once in a lifetime. Drew knows he has buyers for it. He returns to the panels in the hope that Rebecca may have mellowed. I do like these, though. I'd be throwing them in the back of the van now if they were just square. They should mount in effect like that. Yeah, nice. exactly. They can just be used for decoration, mm. but if they were square, they would be a, a very easy seller yeah, and yeah, I'd sure. want to buy them all. Drew thinks he can sell this pair of panels to his Saint-Tropez buyer for around £600. They're exactly what our guy in France was looking for. I, he, just perfect, exactly what he's after. But Rachel is standing firm. You're asking 130 each for these. 200. 200 pounds. Oh my good god! Still got to sell it to somebody else, so there has to be enough margin in it for that to happen. I don't think they're 200 pounds scrap value, are they? Oh no, I'm sure they're no. not. No, 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 no. I need to buy them at 100 pounds. Mm. I do. Yes, I no, I can understand. I you can know, see your. I just yeah, do. yeah, yeah, I can see your problem. And I try and knock you down again. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm sure you would. You might get lucky, and maybe get 250 or 350 for a panel. I really can't see it. I've had hundreds of these things in the past. But Drew's determined not to leave empty-handed and makes a final offer to Rachel. Can I buy a pair mm. for 300? <laughs> Over to you, really. Well, unfortunately, mm. for you, yeah. I can sell these very, very easily. It's a little bit tricky with, with Drew because, you know, basically, he's a dealer, he's selling things on. I mean, I'd love to sell to him, but on the other hand, we are charity. Can I buy the best pair I can find for 300? OK. Yeah? Yeah. Deal? Yeah, OK. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, let's dig some of these out and find the best ones. Ideally, I want one from one side and one from the other side, so when we put them together, they become... two become one. Not the biggest haul of his career, but Drew has managed to negotiate a deal for some historic pieces of salvage and hopefully found something else for his new client. He wanted the older ones, which I actually agree with him, are, are much more interesting. The detail is finer and they just have got sort of more history attached to them, really. Thank you, Rachel. That it's was a pleasure. Great pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I'm Thank sorry I couldn't buy more, but if I sell those quick, I'll be back for the rest. Brilliant. Excellent. Really, You've got really my good. contacts. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. A successful-ish day. I'd have loved to have filled the van, but I think our new French connection will be really happy with the things that we've found, and they're going to fit in exactly with his sort of building scheme for sure. Back in Wales, Drew's wife, Rebecca, is struggling to organise the shipment of seven tonnes of salvage to the south of France. Or the logistics just might be a nightmare. Drew's in Brighton buying, thoroughly enjoying himself, and I've got to organise a very large shipment to Saint-Tropez. It's going to take the rest of the day and probably tomorrow morning. Although used to shipping big items, the scale of the order is testing Rebecca's organisational skills to the limit. How are we going to wrap these? Because otherwise their antlers will fall off, won't they? We'll have to pallet, pallet crate them. Yeah. Yes, because they're being forklift off the other end. Yeah. The biggest nightmare of a shipment of this size is packing. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure between all of us. 
And if it fails, I'm probably the first in firing on this line. Oblivious to the team's challenges, Drew and Julian are keen to find another location to make the Brighton trip worthwhile. We have got... Hopefully, well, it's an old cinema. It's the oldest cinema. I think she said it's the oldest cinema in Britain. All right. Old theatres and cinemas often have unusual pieces. Their research has turned up a place less than a mile from the pier, which has some film reels and memorabilia for sale. We're heading to see a guy called John, who is the manager of a really old cinema called the Duke of York in Brighton. The Duke of York cinema was uh, opened in September 1910, so it's just over 100 years old. It's a single screen historic cinema. It's the country's oldest operating cinema. The cinema's still going strong, so I think we'll, hopefully we'll be here for another 100 years. There's a room in there that they've not cleared out, and it's full of stuff. I haven't had a lot of cinema stuff. I'd, I've had God knows how many cinema seats and things like that. You know, the stuff I'm comfortable with, and then there's other stuff that I'll get where I'm like, well, I, I haven't handled it before, but I'll give it a go. The only way I'm going to learn about it is if I buy something. John? Yes. Hi, Hi there. Drew. I've come about the uh, film reels and memorabilia. You've yep. got stuff to wear? Welcome. OK, shall we? Love to. Have a look. Okay, yeah, come along. Yeah, that's where we make up the films, and uh, this is the projection room where we show Whoa. the films. Cool. I've never been in one of these places before. So this is where the little guy sits. I've always wondered what the view would be like from the little square box up here. It's not the best seat in the house. <laughs> you can't see anything. So I've got a pile of things here, a uh -huh. collection of different things that have survived the decades. Um, we've got. What do they call those things they put on tires when you're sort of pimping your car out? Spinners. Yes. How do I know that? You could make these. You could put these on your on your SUV. And yeah. Pimp them we could out. put these on our transit van. <laughs> yeah, they look. They look <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah, Absolutely. Really pimp, my, pimp my van. What's that thing there? Whoa! Well, digging up. It's quite heavy. Oh, that's cool. This is an anamorphic adapter. So this. Would I have thought been... it was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then whenever you wanted to make a film anamorphic, you just lowered it into. The lens. I may be being a bit thick, but what's anamorphic mean? Well, it just changes the aspect ratio of the film. Um, Still no better off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, like uh, films sometimes are square, sometimes they're like 69, 4 by 3. You know, sometimes they have the, the black bars when you watch one. Yeah, TV. yeah, yeah. So, this kind of just puts it in the right ratio to the film. I see. So okay, it sizes it. It sizes film. it yeah, correctly, okay. exactly. Made in England, back when things were made Way in England. Made properly, yeah. <laughs> in England. I do have. These interesting lenses which we dug out the other day, they are lenses that you put on and depending on what ratio the film's in. They're beautifully made. I don't know if I've gotten out for any of this stuff, to be honest, but it's a really difficult stuff to move. Yeah. You can see that's quite... Pardon... Pardon mon, mon affair. affair. It's a, a trailer. French, French film. For... Curzon Film Distributors. That's probably about... 30 years old. OK. You can see little bits in the bottom of it, can't you, of the... It might be a, a French a dirty film. It's a blue movie. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> OK, we'll take that. We do have a... <laughs> <laughs> Five of those, please. Yeah. Um... Another cardboard cutouts. Do you have those? Yeah, we've got a few of those, actually. Oh, great. Yeah, I'd love to see okay, those. OK, yeah. Just smells of old cinema, doesn't it? <laughs> That's because it is. <laughs> People don't really know what I want because I buy very unusual and odd things. So I always ask, is there anywhere else I can look? We had these made for our anniversary. They kind of lived around the cinema for a while. Uh -huh. I know somebody would want that. So what are you doing with these? Are these to go? Uh, yeah, we could move those. We're, we don't really have any use for them anymore, so... Movie star cutouts like these are not rare, but can still sell for around £30 each. If you want to take the whole lot, yeah. you do them for £30. All three of them. Fine. Yeah, we'll take those. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. I want him in the office. <laughs> <laughs> That's fab, isn't it? What a cool thing. Then all of a sudden, pop, you see this thing, and I just think, I've got to have that. It's great looking. So this will have been probably one of the first speakers installed down this, during the sound era. Um, you can see there, made in England. We believe that was probably one of the earliest speakers that was installed for the early talkies, as they used to call them. The fact that this is from Britain's oldest continuously used cinema will add value. Drew is confident he could sell this piece for around £220, but can he get it at the right price? Is this something you can let go now? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just sitting up there, yeah. gathering dust, so should I say what I have in mind? And yeah, and sure, go ahead. You never, you never know if I fall over, you'll soon find out. <laughs> OK. Well, I'd say for something like this, 
150 pounds. Mm. It's really grimy. You really yeah. make it, you can you know, yeah. polish it. I don't want to go too mad with it. Yeah. And my initial reaction was like, well, I really want that, but yeah. it's a bit too much. Yeah. I'd be happy to pay 100 for it. Um. OK. There will be some geeky guy who wants that for his collection. I bought it, somebody else will. Obviously, I'm just going straight to this now. Yeah, sure. I don't know what this... I mean, I know that th this was used to tell people when the film was going to finish. So mm. the, it, rather than a working clock, it would have just the, you know, it would say oh, film just, finishes at... And it would just be set permanently. Exactly, like... and you just set it depending on when the film would finish, you okay. set it. OK, And the style of the, of the numbers is... I, I, I think can't... this is probably 30s yeah. as well. The font type is quite odd, isn't it? Yeah, eights almost. Like a digital eight, it's a strange yeah. one. It's kind of art deco, very modern. I yeah. yeah, I quite like it though. That's okay. Which you could probably get. It's got the remnants of some lights in here, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's electric. Yeah, quite basic. Okay. Well, I like that a lot. Clocks are always popular, and one with provenance like this could easily sell for two hundred pounds once restored. What sort of price do you want to go for on that? I'd say something like fifty pounds. Somebody's messed about with the back of it. The insides are missing. It's got paint all over it. Uh, some of the lettering has got is, is flaking away, so it needs work. Yeah, spot on. That's yeah. exactly what I'd want to okay. pay for it. So there, you're, you're, you're dead right there. Right. That's, I wouldn't want to go any more than that. Somebody will love it. We won't make a fortune on it, but we'll certainly fix it. Come on, Audrey, sort your life out. Ugh. We'll make sure this goes to somebody who really appreciates it. It's not really about making money with something like this. I think the speaker, if it works, will set it up and I can shout at the lads from the, from the privacy of my office instead of bringing them in to get shouted at. I love the place and thanks for letting us in. Thanks, for, thanks for coming by. Thanks for your purchases. All right, cheers, John. <laughs> See you. Bye bye. Right. So we sold a few things and I think it's, uh, I think we got a good price for them. I mean, you know, they're going to be sitting in our cupboard anyway, so I'm, I'm happy for them to find a new home and make some money. Chance drop-in at an independent cinema has made the disappointing haul from the pier a little easier to bear and the team back home a little easier to face. Along with the regular team, Rebecca has roped in daughter Charlotte to help with the Saint-Tropez order and she's about to get a glamorous gift. That's for you, darling. Is it? Yes, for your room. I thought you'd oh, like it because you're such you. a big Ord fan. I thought you'd want that. She can give it to my other Ord picture. Yeah, yeah. 20 quid. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Do you like that? You're I love that. Heroin. I love my gift so much. I've always been an Audrey Hepburn fan. And last year, Drew bought me the box set of all the Audrey Hepburn films for my birthday. And so I sort of always loved her. And then we've got... I love that so much. Hitch. Uh, excellent. Oh, Gosh, she's young Charlie. Charlie, Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. And Hitch goes in the office. <laughs> They're off um, Brighton Pit. Are they? Yeah. She had loads of them, but they were the local celebrities paying too much for them, oh, so, right, so you know, we had to start paying too much for them if we wanted any of them. Drew may only have brought back two items earmarked for the buyer in France, but no other dealer has them, or the future access Drew now has. So she went to a cinema in Brighton, and we got this. He said that the fingers would point to when the performance was and it never worked. But he's saying it was a light box just with the yeah, time. Yeah, and, and you just turned it to where, you know, where it, the, the cinema thing start. I think it was a, a, a working one. So we'll put a new motor in the back, just a little battery-powered yeah. motor in the back of it. We can't do much more with it. And polish, strip all this, Gav. Polish it. Yeah, the whole thing. So that's really good. How cool is that? How cool is that? Really sculptural, great-looking thing. It's just really cool. And I just thought... It's so It's decorative. a brilliant looking Isn't thing. It? Isn't it? It's just fab. And I don't really want much done to that, just to clean. Look at his face. You've got to sell this. <laughs> <laughs> I can sell anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gavin specializes in restoration, and he's usually the first to get his hands on what Drew brings back. In the ten years he's worked there, he's seen it all. There's probably two or three layers of paint on this. Don't want to take too much off it, just a bit of the excess. It's quite cool, yeah, it's quite decorative. Somebody will have it for the house or the garden. I don't think you could hang it on a wall. I think these will be easy to sell because they're quite in demand. They won't be around for long. Difficult to deliver, but easy to sell. A crucial part of Mark's job is to get things photographed and on the company website as soon as possible. 
Oh, that looks really good. Drew bends his ear about the encounter with Rachel. I was had over by a very posh lady. Did she uh, flutter her eyelid? No, not at all. No, she was just very, very good. She was a very persuasive salesman. But soon all is forgotten as the gamble pays off. I've emailed the new client, sent him pictures of the images, and he's going to buy them. Ideal, just wish it was always that easy. There's going to be more work for the guys back here loading these up. They've got seven to ten tonnes of stuff to load as it is. The order is good news, but it does mean that the shop is looking decidedly empty. He's taken a big chunk of it, so I've got to get back out on the road today. I've got to start filling the shop up again. Um, does everybody know what they're doing? We've got this shipment going to France. Is it all sorted? Everything's um, sorted. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. yeah. Just yep. Done. Right. It'll go like clockwork. Don't worry really? about it. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> With an order like this, time is of the essence. We cannot let this guy down. What I have to make sure is, while I'm away, the guys deal with him properly and the order goes out successfully. Everything's breakable and irreplaceable. So make sure all of it is packed to the eighth degree. I want everything just completely covered. There's some big, heavy bits of stone going on, isn't there, Gav? So you'll be in charge of that and the forklift and making sure that all goes on safely. So just make sure, no problems, important customer, so look after him. We will. Yeah? OK, great. So um, anything you need, give me a call. Drive Every carefully. Week. All right, great. Come on then, Jules, let's get going. Cheers. See you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Drew Pritchards. Oh, hello. Are you phoning from France? Have we still got the big round stone ball? Yeah, we've got that. The current situation with the order is it's growing. The freight company that's delivering the um, goods to Saint Tropez. They're supposed to be here tomorrow. I hope they don't get here till midday. <laughs> Drew and Julian are on their way to a disused former airfield in Fife. Drew is hoping to find big industrial fittings that he knows are popular with his interior design clients. It's an old airfield. He, he's got a load of benches and lights, All right. the same as ones some we've got in stock, and says, yeah. can you come down? I've got a, a large quantity of them in, some, in an old airfield. And Jesus Christ, on. look at the size of this place. Well, just a, just five minute job. Oh my god, that's fantastic. Once again, it's a great salvage opportunity. If only Drew and Julian could remember the name of the man they're supposed to be meeting. Rob, Bob, 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 Bob. God, it's huge. Hi, I'm Drew. I'm Bob. Cheers. Okay. Hey, Julian. You right? Julian. Um, you've got some stuff to show us. I, I'm, to be honest, I don't know where you're going to start. The place is massive. It's incredible. So, once they found Bob, the search begins. For all the planes. It's in. Wow, it's great. It's completely untouched, isn't it? Yep. They've done nothing to the place. With a, with a site this size, we need to quickly identify what's here. So, quick whiz round, see quickly what we can find and then try and do a deal. This is where I feel completely comfortable. I've been wandering around buildings like this since I was a child. Everything's of massive scale. There's loads of stuff lying around. It's just, it's, for me, it's got everything I could spend all week here. Oh, Jesus, look at all this stuff. Ugh. That go on the list? Yep. I like it, and I'd like to buy it, but in some ways, I'm thinking, well, for, like, the £10 I'm going to give them and for the 30 quid I might be able to sell it for, maybe, is it best left where it is? And maybe, maybe you should just leave some things. And as soon as that's gone, nobody knows that was the mess hall. You've got a lot of these uh, green, green enameled uh, shades everywhere. These lights, uh, I do like them. I mean, I've had one of these green industrial lamps in my hallway at home for 15 years now. But over the last few years, they've become incredibly popular. Industrial lights like these are in vogue with restaurants and bar designers and Drew can easily sell them for £225 each. Who do we talk to about, about buying them? Um, the owner, Willie Robertson. OK, so what do we do, just give him a ring? Not what Drew wants to hear. Dealing that. through a third party is far from ideal, but he pushes on in the hope of landing treasures the boss is willing to part with. Yeah. Oh, these are great. Rustic, shabby-chic pieces like these 1950s benches are very much in vogue 
and could easily fetch 180 pounds for the pair. They're great. They're nice little uh, benches, you know, from the mess hall, maybe. And then what I liked about them was the colour, was that original old green paint they've used throughout the whole place. Uh, are these, and these are for sale? Yep. I've just uh, been told to let you see everything. Everything? OK. Yep. To be honest, they're going to have to be just cheap, because there's two or three that are OK. Uh, the rest are beyond hope. The good news is that everything seems to be for sale. So now it's a case of talking to Bob's boss, Wally. Yeah, I'm on the phone. If I can have a chat with him, we'll just do a, see if we can do a deal. The face-to-face -face meetings are much, much better. You can talk to people and gain some trust, and they'll trust you, you trust them, see how you get on. So, no, I just don't like doing it this way, but, again, you've just got to do it. Roll with it, see what happens. Drew's wanting to speak to you about prices. Here he is. Yeah, Wally. Yeah. Wally. Yeah. Hi, Wally. I've been around and had a good look at everything. I think, um, was it, what's it called, the workshops? The workshop. There's a workshop around the other side. There's two different types of lamp in there. If I say £25 for the larger ones in there and £10 each for the little ones. OK, and then there's, the, there's some benches, there's some green benches. So £25 per bench for the good ones. I'll have a sift through. Not, not all of them are any good, but I'll take the ones that, that are OK. How's that? <sighs> yep, lovely, great, lovely, thanks. Cheers, bye-bye. Yep, done deal, happy. Thank you. Yeah? So you said uh, you ought to give us a hand. No, <laughs> okay. no problem. All right, cheers. Strangely, talking to the guy on the phone, it was really easy. Didn't have to worry about it, didn't need to get stressed about it. It was fine. He was just like, yeah, 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 prices. Yeah, that's OK, fine. And we did the deal. Just a good pair of benches, you know, and the colour just makes them. If it ain't rusty gold, it's rusty poop. Here you go. Find any more? Give us a shout. Give us a shout. No problem. Cheers. Thanks, Bob. Bye bye. It's huge, isn't it? You could land planes here. Eh? You could. God, do you know what if anyone's ever thought of that? Back at the shop in North Wales, the team is frantically putting the last pieces of the France shipment together before the lorry arrives to take all the architectural gems to their new home in Saint-Tropez. Uh, he's a new customer to us, so we need to get it right. The worst-case scenario of an order this size going abroad breaking an item. Whoa. Benches, stone cobbles, doors, doorways, bronze slags, deers, stoves, geese, everything. I ain't gonna fit. Gonna need a bigger boat. This is probably the largest order we've had to deal with going to one location. Uh, hopefully we said <laughs> what he's asked for. Nakedly. Everything's on board. I'm glad we sold the stock. I'm a bit worried that the showroom's going to look empty. Drew better come back with a full van so we can uh, carry on selling. Still in Scotland and well aware of the need to bring back new stock, Drew takes a detour to a local legend in the house clearance business, Steptoe's Yard in Montrose. We're going to go and see Peter. He's just got barn after barn of junk and stuff and bits of this, that and the other and tat. We opened this place six years ago. What we normally sell is, well, everything, including the kitchen sink, anything that, that we think there may be a profit in. So, Peter is uh, an ex-farmer who right. has packed this, packed it in in the BSC crisis and started doing house clearances and selling his stuff from his shed down here. So, hang on, is this it? Hi. Drew. Hey, how you doing? It's Jules. Hey, good evening. How you doing? Um, we've come to have a look through your massive amount of stuff. As long as you brought plenty of money with you. Plenty of money. We've got money uh. to spend. Look at that. <laughs> oh my good God! 
So this must be one of the biggest clearance places in Scotland. From what I hear, there's no other place like it at the moment. The place is just massive. It's overwhelming. There's so much stuff in here, you can't really think straight. We do a combination of everything, just source it from wherever we can get it, you know? Yeah. Just playing the numbers game, there's got to be something here for me. So what made you start doing this? It was accidental, actually. We were doing up the house. I decided to start buying some furniture and you know, odds and ends for the house. <laughs> I bought bits and pieces, and then the wife said, oh, that doesn't match that. And there was a, a chap that I knew at the time, and he says, why don't you have a, a sort of garage sale? Yeah. So we did that for one day, and it's never stopped since. <laughs> That's six years now, roughly. I should imagine you get every antique dealer in the local area picking over this place in a, every five minutes. Well, they do come on a fairly regular basis. Looking around a shop that's open to the public is far from ideal for Drew, as all the best stuff will have gone. But just as he's about to give up, he spots a gem, or more accurately, a pair of gems that everyone else seems to have overlooked. These doors, these doors here. Those are what I was going to be keeping for, for a, a room in the house. Uh -huh. I never used them yet, actually, but that's why I've got them hidden. Didn't hide him very well. I saw him straight away. Oh, well, I saw a bit of that. <laughs> um, early 19th century oak, gun-stocked, astral glazed double doors. Really, really nice thing. Antique doors command a premium. This extremely rare Regency pair could fetch around £1,000. Um, so these are for sale. Must be if they're in the shop. Well, if you offer me... What sort, what, what, where do you want to be? What sort the of... The right price for them. What do you want for them? Well, you're looking at a minimum of 500, I would think. Well, they'd be, I think they'd be pretty reasonable at 500. It's a little bit too much. It's a little bit too much. I like them, they're good. If you're going to be paying for them, you see, it's you that's saying they're too much, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I can bid you on them. Well, if they make me a sensible bid. A sensible bid. I might, might be willing to sell okay. them. What can we, can we do 300? No, you'd be, you'd be a bit low at that. Mm. So where, where, where do you want to be, then? So I'd like to well, buy... You, you that's, to buy the, that's, that's the period item I'm looking for. Well, if you're going to be buying a few things, I'll give them about the 350. 350. All right. That's great. But provided yes. you're going to be buying a few other things. I'll be buying a few more okay. things, I'm sure. Right, that's great. Despite finding those amazing doors, Drew is convinced Peter is holding out on him and employs salvage hunter rule number one. Always ask to go to the places that are not open to the public. Do you want to show us where the good stuff is? I've got money. To, I've got cash money to spend. I'd rather see the good stuff. Well, I, I don't know what you would class as good stuff. Everybody's idea of good stuff. You'll is have different. somewhere locked up, won't you? There, there are some other stuff. Some yeah, other. Yeah. That's where I want to go. Come places. on, lead on. And sure enough, it's just seconds before the hunter spots his prey. Nice pair of uh, mm -hmm. period. Bowls, yeah, really nice, nice and original. Bowling was hugely popular in the late 19th and early 20th century. This pair are almost certainly over a hundred years old and made from lignum vitae, a very dense hard wood, and could easily roll out a price of 145 pounds. What would you want for these? It's open to sensible offers. Oh, you have to. You give us a clue on this one. Come on, you know what everything costs you. Oh, I'll do them for 25 for you if you want. 25 is fine. That's a keen price for That's you. That's a keen price. That's fine. I'll take those. I'm not arguing with you on that I don't, one. I don't want you going away complaining that things are too expensive for no, you. No, they're you nice. Pretty. All right, so let's have a look at this door. You've just... Jules just emptied well, it. What right. state's it in? The door itself is in pretty good condition, but the... It's the glass. The glass is damaged. I'm not bothered about the, in, about the sensor no. section, but that is a real bugger, isn't it? Yeah. This is another good example of the gunstock door. This is wider here. Then it becomes narrower towards the top there. And then you've got the maximum amount of glazing space. Nice, elegant uh, proportions to the door. But it's also an extremely strong door. That door is as good today as it was then, as when it was new. This internal door needs a lot of work, but if restored, could bring around £250. So it's just down to price. What can you ever go at it for? Over 70 quid. Well, with something like that, it's just how cheap can you be? I was going to say, to be honest, I was thinking 50 quid is, is and I'm, that's it. Well, I can probably do a deal. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it for the 50 for you, seeing that you've bought the other one. OK, All right. 50 pounds. I'll, I'll take a chance on it, 50 pounds. So good, good, good door, nice period handle. 
Oh, what's this? Shop fitting. Have you got the base panel to it? No. Base piece? No, it's just, just yeah. as you see it. It's in a bit of a state, isn't it? It's not that bad, actually. Mm, I do like my sh buying shop fittings. Well, there you go. Mm. What are we looking at for this, then? What do you want for it? What I want and what I get might be two different things. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I would be hoping for a couple of hundred for it. A couple of hundred. Um, no, I'm going to have to leave it. It's good, and the price is right, to be honest, Peter, but I'm going to have to leave it. It's just got too many, too many problems, too much work. Well, you... it, needs, it needs a side, it needs a base, it needs uh... glass to it. So by the time I've done that, there's no money left in it. Shame. Yeah, they're good. Butler sinks originated in London and, unlike their counterparts made in Belfast, have no overflow holes, as it was believed this would encourage people to waste the limited fresh water. Clearly not a problem in Ireland. These rare examples could easily fetch around £250 each. Before I go get too excited about them, how much are they? Are you want one, one set or two? Um, say for the pair and all of the stands. How much over 100 will you give me? 105, and they're a good period thing again, and they're on the stands, you know? So you can put them together in runs, uh, and, and they look good. You'd be looking... ..probably about the 130 mark. They're more or less all matching, and the price is right. They are, they are cheap. Yeah, that'll be OK. Drew's really looking for big-scale items to take back home, and Peter may have just the ticket. We've got in here, from what I can see, a very big shop counter. Shop counter. Condition's not great. It's just the way I got it. Yeah. How much are we looking at for this thing? 500. 500. Things to do already, I've got. Um, mm. It's good. This needs too much work. I need a bargain. This mid-20th century shop counter is something that Drew can easily sell. An example like this could sell for £500, even before restoration. I'll yeah. give you a bargain. It needs to be. It's not at 500 quid, it isn't. It's got loads going for it, but it's got a lot wrong with it. The mirror in that end's broken. All the sliding doors are missing off the back bar one. I'm not selling you the bits that aren't there. I know, I'm only I'm just, selling I'm the just, bits that I, I don't like doing this moany, moany bit, but I have to with this. This, is, this has got a bit of work and... £200. Take it away. Up to you. Give me 250 No, that's it. I've got to be 200 I've got to be hard on you. I'm sorry. I've got to be... I've been dead fair, haven't you, all, all day? As long as you don't... As long as you don't ask me to carry it out, then. Uh, all right? We'll need a hand to get it out. We'll Give need a hand. hand to get it out. A £200... I've got a bargain and I'm happy. I know you've got a bargain there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, deal. Fine. Right. There you go. I've still got a bit of work, but that's I'm happy with that. That's fine. I'm very happy he came in by because I, th I think he'll come back again. And he's got his van loaded up pretty well. It was quite easy to deal with. I could have been a lot harder with him, I think. All in all, we bought a few pieces. We got a decent amount of stuff, but what we did get needs a lot of work. So we'll see. End of a long day. <laughs> I'm completely knackered, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's, that's but we did well. That's what happens you. when you spend money. You see. That's good. No, I did well. I'm happy with what right, I had. That's good. I'm happy with what that's I had. Good. And we'll thanks for your help. Okay. You and your guys are great. Okay. Thank you. We will see you yeah, again. Hopefully, sure. we'll see you again. And give us a bell. You've got my number now, so you know what we're at. Right. We'll okay. Are you not too knackered to drag? Drew and Julian arrive back at the shop the next morning, exhausted but happy to have brought back a van full of stuff to replace the Saint Tropez order. Success? Yeah, we got stuff. And some... Full. Full. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <Hooray. laughs> yeah, come on, Gavin. Lift, lift it. Come on, Gavin. Come on. Shape her. Well, you're uh... stuck over the trolley. <laughs> <laughs> Going down. Sweet. Oh, hello. Do you like to handle them? <laughs> feel the wet, feel the... 
They're um, uh, Lignum Vitae. Yeah. 1937. Look, do you like my balls, Ollie? I haven't been used much. They're lovely. Balls. Would you like to touch them? Not particularly, no. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. No. <laughs> They're lovely and smooth. The Air Force, these were literally, right, they were in the mess hall, and the mess hall was being used as a pigsty. Do, hint, they, they see that there? I just touched that. Pig poo. And if it's not pig poo, it's pigeon. These might need a bit of a wipe. <laughs> just a bit. Just a little bit of a dust. These, they've never been down since just the day it. the hangars were built. Did you dig them up? It's nice. That, wow. No. Wow, 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 wow. 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 Look at the Pair, glass. all original glass. Lovely. Undamaged. Drew, they're stunning. Really lovely. That was a long, long trip. But thank goodness he came back with stock, because otherwise he would have come back, you know, quite deflated. But you can see the sparkle in his eyes. He, he knew he'd got um, very nice, as he calls, treasures. Now I've got it. Shift it. I need to sell this stuff. I've spent thousands this week, and I need to turn that money over now. Gavin, uh, Julian, Mark, uh, Alex, we're going to have to pull in to get this work done this week. How it is with me is the minute I get something, I want to sell it straight away. Industrial lights at the moment are really big news, especially having such a run. That is, you know, that's a really, really, really good find. <laughs> I'm just burnishing these. It takes it from something that looks like that to that. Let me put some lacquer over it, stop it re-rusting. Look a lot better than they did. Yes, they've got little air gun pellet shots as someone's come into the hangar and they used them as target practice. <laughs> She's great. There's obviously not a lot to do in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> While the items from Scotland are restored and photographed, Drew gets the word out about his exciting new purchases, and it's not long before his customers begin to bite. Hello. It's going as a display cabinet for designer menswear. It's not going to stay there, is it? No. These are the benches from Crail Airfield. You've scraped the, uh, the pig fall out often and uh, they've dried out and uh, they've had some repair work and a clean. The colour is still good, the paint's still the most attractive thing. The Regency doors that Drew bought from Scotland have been sent to French polisher Alex, just a few miles up the road. It's not the money to spend on them, it's how far I want them to go so they still retain the charm that they have now. Well, Drew's brought this in. First thing we'll do is strip it down, clean up all the timber, do the repairs. I've been using Alex for about 10 years. Just perfect. He does things how I like them doing. French polishing is the application of many layers of shellac to achieve a high gloss. Shellac is a resin secreted by female beetles and is the same material used to make early gramophone records. The process was popular in the Victorian era, but fell out of fashion in the early 1920s. Well. These look fantastic, aren't they? That's not the colour they would have been in the day. They'd have been much, much darker and heavily polished. I think the Regency, would you go along with that? Yeah. So about 1820? Yeah. Yeah. I want them to look sort of really good condition but used. Just the style. And the proportions. Yeah, the gun stocking on the door, this, the bead, everything. Mm -hmm. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. That's what I think. Anyway. Just literally want them on the website now. Within hours of going online, the doors are snapped up by one of his regular customers. They're going to some friends of mine down in London, uh, Retruvius, uh, Adam and Maria. They will really use them to their best effect. Maria is uh, a brilliant interior designer. Really, really interesting what she does. Very unusual, incredibly stylish. What we'll probably do is not have them hinged, um, but actually have them as sliding doors, dividing what's going to be a kind of new, very relaxed dining space. So on my side of the business, I look at different buildings from different eras. So we've got uh, an old priory building going right through. We're probably dealing with every kind of era. The journeys that everyone goes on to, to find unusual bits and bobs, 
to find materials. You know, the one minute you can be in a sort of rather enormous, amazing kind of smart country house, and the next you can be, well, you know, up to your knees. I'm really happy because I know that those doors are going to the right person, the right place, and they can look nothing other than stunning, really. It's time for Drew to get back out on the road and for the whole cycle of salvage hunting and selling to begin again. On Salvage Hunters. Whoa, look at that place. Drew finds a honeypot location full of period antiques and classic cars, but is the owner his worst nightmare? I'm just frustrated. Not making a deal is, is just as good as making a deal sometimes. You know, it, it's the, the chase, you know, really. He gets a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bid for some jet engine salvage. This is taking salvaging to a whole new level. But can he whittle down their prices? An older seat like this in this conditions, around about $5,000, is the, the going price for it. And as an encounter with Britain's weirdest dad. Yeah, Your kids I, I... must be traumatised. But can he turn Drew into a superhero? You can try that one as well if you want, Drew. No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the rubber suit to you. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> Woo! That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. Helped by his wife, Rebecca. Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk into gems which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your streets. Yeah. It's business as usual at Drew Pritchard's shop in North Wales, where eclectic antique finds reign supreme. Ah, now there's some wood I wanted you to use. The customers are flocking. The phone is constantly ringing. Good afternoon, Drew Pritchard's. Well, it's been non-stop. There's been sales upon sales this week. And Drew's wife, Rebecca, is overseeing a very important delivery. By hook or by crook, Jesus will be with you on Saturday. So, we sold Jesus, and he's going to West Sussex. Let's load Jesus. Recently rescued from a convent school in Cheshire, Jesus is about to take up his new home in Sussex, where he's been bought by a collector of religious artefacts. But he seems reluctant to leave. He can walk on water, but he can't get over that. <laughs> Jesus has left the building. For Drew, it's time to hit the road in his quest to discover the next salvage revelation. The shop looks a bit dead now, not having Jesus lying around here. Uh, so I've time for me to get back out on the road and see if I can hunt down some more stuff. Drew and Julian are on a five-hour journey south to a scrapyard in Devon. And, as usual, they're arguing with the sat-nav. Oh, no, you haven't. You haven't. What? What, 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 what? Go the right way. Good point, it was over the road, but there we go. No, no, it's, this is it. Yeah. The colonel's name is Ralph. Yeah. And it's in an old house. Yes, with the yard all the way around it. Well, that'll be good, because, I mean, I've been selling so much stuff, I really do need to find something architecturally interesting. But you don't know if there's anything here at all? We don't know for definite, no. There's nothing. We're going no. in blind. We are going in blind, unfortunately. God. Going in blind isn't an ideal situation for Drew. Whoa, look at that place. That was, uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, look at that. But he perks up when he gets his first glance of this stunning property loaded with every treasure a salvager could dream of. I'll be very surprised if we don't find something here. When I drove down the driveway and you see the big old house and tons and tons of junk lying around everywhere, I just thought, this is great. I'm going to fill the van, I'm going to have to go and hire another one. It's got everything going. It's like you have a tick box of, right, big old house, tick. Big piles of old junk, tick. Dog, tick. Knackered old car, tick. It's sort of got all of the things that I like. Um, so who knows? I hope so. Good. It feels good. feels right. Hi, Ralph. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Drew. How's it? 
Hello, Drew. Nice Hi, to how meet you. Doing? Hiya. Yeah, Julian. Julian. Hello. How are you, Rob? OK. Yeah. Everything is for sale at, at the right price. We've got architectural salvage, motorcycles, cars, um, scrap metal, uh, furniture, everything. Where do we start? Where do, where, where do we go first? It's up to you. Start where you like. Whatever you like the look of. Here, should we do this yep. bit around yep. here? Should we have a look yep. through here? Yeah, that's it. This is our... Yeah. Um, this is our office and workshop and uh, where we run our business from. God, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. Has this been built on or is this the stables no, for the it, house? No, it, it's something? always been here. It's been adapted as a workshop, but it's always been here. You know, the building's 1830 and... Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm getting pulled towards that room. Can I have, just have a yeah. sift in there? Let, let's go there. Is there any old furniture from the original house here? I should imagine there isn't. That there... may be underneath. That, that looks that like piece a, at the back. That looks like a dresser. Yeah, That's yeah. got, like, a kitchen cabinet-type plate rack and... Yeah. And that was in the building? That was here, yeah. OK. What was this room? Was this the kitchen? This was the kitchen, yeah. Yeah. Can we get up that end? Yeah. You're a Debbie McGee, the assistant. Absolutely. He is. Better kiss her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Lift it. Hang on, hang on. Caught Jules, it's got underneath this chair, this table. That's a, on a, a snooker light as well, look. Was this on its original base? Yeah. Oh, I see. This piece is in a poor state but a fully restored Victorian dresser can fetch around £1,000. It's really original, this, but I just think the condition's just too far... It's not yeah. too far gone, but it's just beyond making any money on, I think. So, uh, so what would you want for this? I would really like £1,000 for it, but... Um... I'm really pushing the boat out if I'm offering him 200 quid. It's rotten, the bottoms have fallen out the drawers, the sides fallen off it, the top's split. It's full of woodworm. Some of the drawer fronts are missing and half the handles are missing. But I really wanted it. Are you... Is it really £1,000? I'd like £1,000 for it, but really? you can always bid me how far apart It would be we? hugely insulting, so I'm probably no, not No, it's going OK, to... I don't mind. It, you can insult me, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave that where it is. Yeah. It's a really nice thing, but there's a huge disparity between what I can give you for that and what you want for it. Yeah. Yeah. Furniture prices have dropped quite a bit, especially brown, old-fashioned furniture. There's only certain items that make, you know, a really good profit. Some of the stuff we've got to keep and maybe never get our money back for. It's Drew's worst nightmare. The room is loaded with exactly the type of period furniture he usually buys. But the roof has been leaking for several years and has wreaked havoc. Everything in that room is, for want of a better expression, knackered. All of it is just finished. The roof is leaking directly onto everything underneath. It's damp, it's open to the elements. Keep spotting things and going, oh, look at that, and then it's, there's half of it's missing and... Oh, Jesus. I'm just yeah. looking at marvelling at all these motorbikes you've got lying around everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're up there for security reasons as well, and I like to look at them, you know. I like the little bits of glass stick into yeah. them. Yeah, very reflective. Yeah, little old cat size. LEDs. LEDs, yeah. <laughs> Early LEDs. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go into the house now and... Uh... Drew heads inside the main house. Getting inside country houses is a big deal. Off and off limits, this is where the good stuff is usually kept. Come on. Right, this is... Uh, Ooh, good. Um, yeah, this the stuff... This is my home. So, there's stuff everywhere here. Yeah. Wallop, it's just bedlam, there's stuff piled up. The scaffolding in the hallway with stuff on top of that. There's piles of furniture, there was... You know, right, right against the side of us, there was these two sort of Gothic altar rail sections. I don't know where he's got those from, but they're, they're, they're not that old. These pieces probably date from a church built in the early 20th century and could bring around £120 each. I'm going to get the ball around 100 quid. It's, yeah. not, it's really not worth any more to me, cos it's just a couple of bits. I just thought, might, you know, get the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, don't feel obliged, but... No, no, no I, I, I would to... sell it... I'd really want, like, £100 per piece, per but, piece you know, or, or we may yeah. negotiate in the middle, but you can always think about yeah, it. Yeah, no. I've got, I've got to see a profit in it. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the thing, I've got, to, I've got to see some money in it. I don't really like to sell them, as you can probably tell by the prices, you know, they're, they're just lovely things, you know. What's this, then? A bollard. Fallen tree. Road closed. This would have been lit at night. What sort of money I, would you I'd see I'd want a thousand quid for it, you know, because it's, that is really old. The road closed, bollard didn't excite me, and then it excited me even less when I found out it was a thousand pounds. So, yeah, that was like, it was like... Most of the stuff I sell, I like to double my money at. I try and buy at bargain prices and sell it double, you know, 100% markup, you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
If fully restored, these Victorian hall chairs could sell for around £250 each. I do quite like them. What, what, what can you do them for? I, to be honest with you, I paid a lot of money for them, whether... Yeah, you know, in this condition. I, I paid about four or 500 quid for the three. Yeah. You're never going to get that back. No, I know. You're never yeah. going to get that money back. I would imagine that me and Drew are probably the same. You, you only buy something that you can basically double your money on, or maybe even more, or buy something because you like it to keep. So this is Georgian again. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? It's just a writing desk. Complete Georgian writing desk can sell for at least £500. But in its current state, this one is worth much less. Price again? Um, I don't know. You, you, you have to bid me. No, go on. I've done the last two or three and you've knocked me back. I, I'd like 500 quid. 500 right? quid. OK. Yeah. No, we'll Junior? leave that. Yeah, it is for me. Yeah. It is for me. Just because you leave something in a hallway for 50 years and it's rotten doesn't make it worth more money. If I can't buy anything in the next half an hour or find some common ground we can try and do some deals, we'll have to walk away, which is a hell of a shame because this is just a... I mean, look at the building. For it. It's just a honeypot full of stuff. There's so much stuff here. That is acres of stuff, but we need to have a little bit of a reality check on the prices. Unless things change, it could be time for Drew to cut his losses and leave. Parking meter. Parking meter. London parking meter. <laughs> no, not for me. A no money meter. left on it. No. No, expired. They've not quite fallen all apart yet. After an hour of looking around, Drew's original excitement has completely evaporated. I'm just frustrated. Um, uh, coming here to deal with Ralph. Uh, he's a, you know, he's a nice enough guy, but as soon as we got down to, to money side of things, just like, whoa, we're, we're just living on diff two different worlds. Um, the condition of the stuff is at best appalling. Um, it's just knackered. Owner Ralph has an unusual philosophy when it comes to selling. Not making a deal is, is just as good as making a deal sometimes. You know, it, it's the, the chase, you know, really. Drew needs a strategy. Plan of attack today is to find something Ralph is not so attached to and get him back down to, you know, back down to earth, really, on his prices. We've got lots of signs here. Looking at it, I would say it's... 40s to 60s, huge time period it's in there, but... Um, yeah, it, it, it it's is a very, it's a very really, early. Yeah. It's a difficult one. You reckon it's earlier than that, sort yeah. of traction? Yeah, it could be from 1908, couldn't it even? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Founded in 1919, Citroen was known for its clever advertising, and early examples like this can sell for as much as £250. What I'm saying is, is the gauge of the steel and yeah. everything, it's, still, it's yeah. pretty, um, pretty basic. Yeah. Very, very thin. It's real, anyway. But it's real and I like it, yeah. so it's a good decorative thing. Yeah. I like Citroen, so I've had a few two CVs and just something... It just looked so simple, great colour, good size, great condition and looked period as well. It's got a bit of age to it. So what sort of, um, what sort of price is that, then? I would really want 100 quid for it. Genuine French. There's a little bit of damage to the bottom. Could we do £75 for that one? Yeah, just, just this once I'll do it, but it's worth more with the damage, really, but 75 quid. <laughs> OK. Sometimes patience is the key, and it takes a bit of time to build up a rapport with somebody. I like it. Yeah. So it's a good decorative thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, lovely. OK, we'll have that. Drew's strategy seems to be paying off. Now the ball is rolling, he's beginning to think he may be able to do some deals with Ralph after all. He's off outside, where the treasures are literally buried. As we've got all sorts in here again, haven't we? Is this Jack? What's, what's that in there? That's, that's a Mark II Jag. Mark II Jag? Yeah. The, the other one, the other side is a, a, a Mark, Mark IX. IX. Yeah, OK. You're really discovering them, aren't you? Can't even see. There's three motorbikes down here. There's a, a BS, two BSAs and one in the middle here. I'm just trying to identify. OK, yeah, cos I'm not sure what's there myself. I'm just trying to identify. Hang on. Is it a Triumph? Is that a Thunderbird? I hope it is. <clears throat> Almost impossible to tell now the condition's gone so bad. Seeing all these beautiful cars and, and everything just lying around is starting to really sort of... I have to be honest, it's ticking me off a bit. To be very British about it, but it just is. Drew hates to leave anywhere empty-handed and carries on the search. Oh, yeah. Aha! Eventually, he spots something he knows he can sell and that he definitely wants. That's nice. You know, it's not terrible, is it? It's not in great, Nick. 
see what he wants for it. But first, he has to deal with Ralph and those prices. We found a um, sign up in the back there. Yeah. As well, so I just want to discuss that with you. But uh, I love the motorbike. Yeah. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. The sign, it's nice. What, yeah. what do you want for it? It's a, it's, it's a good one, but it's got a lot of damage. Yeah. Appealing to car enthusiasts, collectors, designers, film and TV prop buyers, Drew knows he can easily sell a sign like this for around £450. Um, I really want 200 quid for it, but, you know, it is a big one, so it's a, yeah. you know, hard to buy and hard to sell, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it's a nice... The Union Jack's always going to be yeah, good on it. Yeah. OK, all right, yeah, we'll have it. Yeah. Drew's surprised that they've reached a price he can work with but not as surprised as Ralph. In a way, I was surprised he bought it, you know. Um, probably I'm learning about the price as well now, because if he, if he can pay 200 and make a profit, you know, it's, it's got to be good. We, we've done very well on that one in the past, more than doubled our money on it again, so that should hopefully... Hopefully, we should get close to that again. We've had a good day, and it's nice to see somebody from a different part of the world, you know, Welsh people or, you know, a, a, almost a different world, different country, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. Stick it on. Come on. Great stuff. Right, nice to meet you. Take care. So how do you think that went? Didn't get enough. No, but two signs ain't going to pay the bills. No. To be honest. It just wasn't happening today. It didn't happen today. This 10-hour road trip has reaped little reward. Drew and Julian arrive back at base, and they're not looking forward to explaining an empty van to the waiting team. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. On the shore. How's everything going? Oh, yeah, great. No, Sold no. anything? What do you no. mean, no? <laughs> Sunbathing and reading the paper. Well, yeah, no change there. Then. Nothing there. That's no, rubbish, isn't it? Nothing was going cheap, but I got this off him, and... Uh, £200, and confident we're going to double our money on that. If you can just set to and polish that, please, Gavin. And from the same guy's scrapyard, we got this, which I, I, I love this. Ah. How cool's that? Citroen. Citroen enamel sign. Yeah. Lasts longer than the cars. <laughs> 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 All right. Come on, don't milk it, get on with it. Why don't you sod off and stop the It's not fine thing. restoration. Throw a bucket of water over it, come on. It looks loads better to me. It looks funky and, and it feels French. And again, it just goes in with that very, very strange mix that we do. When he comes back with an empty van, it's really sad to see. And you can see his face a mile off, the disappointment uh, of all the effort that he's gone into. But the only thing we can do is um, turn him around, pack him off in the van again, and hopefully he'll find some more treasures. The next day, Julian and Drew follow up on a lead Rebecca has lined up for them. It's a rare opportunity to visit one of Europe's largest aircraft salvage yards. It's a four-hour journey south to Gloucester. And with Drew already coming up short from yesterday's buying fiasco in Devon, the heat is on to find something worth bragging about. So today we're in Gloucestershire to see a company called Air Salvage. Cool name or what? Planes? Yeah. Oh, right. Like it says on the tin, air oh, salvage. It's so it's bits of things that have been in the air that are then salvaged. So these guys, right, they take old planes apart. Apparently, people fly, can still fly a plane in and then they take it to pieces carefully, properly, yeah. and sell the individual pieces off. It's really exciting. What, what could we find? God knows what. Most of don't want me to fly anything, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't like flying. All right. Yeah. I do fly, but it's just massive amounts of drugs and gin. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with massive amounts of drugs and gin. Yeah. Two Valium and a gin and tonic, and I'll fly anywhere. <laughs> That's huge. Yes, we need our high vis today. Bradley? How are you doing? Drew. Drew. How are you doing? Hi, you. Jules. I'm Bradley Gregory, and we dismantle aircraft. We remove the, the aircraft parts for, to go into the second-hand market. Not just anybody can come in. It's, it's usually invitation. We've got a lot of returning customers. A lot of the stuff is cut to order, so it's, it's quite unique. 
Wow. We, we just store aircraft in this one. People just pay us to store them in, in the hangar. So is that a private plane? That's somebody's toy? Yeah, it's someone's private toy. Really? Wow. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, isn't yeah. it? What I'm looking for here is something real oddball, something you're not going to expect. And it's taking something that is obviously from a plane and then being able to use it in uh, a commercial or domestic setting. So something that you think, God, that's off a plane, but doesn't it look cool? So maybe like a door handle or a ceiling lamp or a chair or a piece of bodywork. Right then, guys, this is where the, the aircraft reach the final stage of their life. Limey. That's a cool piece. Say, if, how much to cut something like that off? About 350 pounds. 350 pounds for a whole wing of a... For, for two metres from the end. It's not bad, is it? You can make one of those desks, you make a desk out of it. You know, just, a, just mounting it on a wall. Just yeah. a piece of art. It's brilliant. Really beautiful sort of sculptural really shapes, cool all the pieces for, of these. It makes you want to buy a piece. There are incredible pieces everywhere, but Drew's keeping his ambitions firmly on the ground. I like the wheels as well. Um, I think it's normally about 100 pounds. 100 quid for a wheel? Yeah. While I'm tempted to buy a great big piece of a jumbo jet, I have to be mindful of what happens here is then I have to get that cut up, I have to get it worked on, it's going to cost me money. Um, that's no good. I need to find something that I can convert easily. So, something I've got a ready market for, chairs, lamps, something decorative. I've got people for that, I can sell it quickly. Wow. Can we go up there? What's, is that into the cockpit? No? That, yeah, that is into the cockpit. I don't know how stable it is. Yeah, it'll be OK. Wow. So where do we go? Wow, this is amazing. It's weird, because you imagine these things are going to get scrapped, but you don't really think about it. No. Walking through the sort of bare bones of the plane, it's like walking inside some sort of huge fish or a whale. You know, you can see the ribs of the plane. Uh, it's amazing, really. Though amazed by the engineering, this stripped-back cabin also gives Drew some justification for his fear of flying. And that's the outer skin. Yeah. That's not the outside so of the really plane. Nothing. Yeah, that's Is the that outside it? of the plane. I didn't sound very thick, mate. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's probably only a two, two to three mil thick. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's the outside. It's me not flying again. <laughs> you don't fly anyway. No, that's true. <laughs> so this is what a this is what a dead aircraft looks like. This is this is it. Now this is the end of it. It's like this is finished. Yeah. You're going to cut this one up. This one's going to be cut up. So we're going to cut the front section from this to make a, a training program. So what, like a flight simulator. A flight simulator. It does have a very strange feeling wandering around inside a jumbo jet that's in bits. You never you never want to be in that situation, do you really? Um, so seeing it uh, taken apart, disassembled is very strange. You know, you're wandering around, it's slightly eerie. Is, is this all sold? He sold all this gear? All of the cabin interior on this is sold. This is taking Very salvaging niche. to a whole new level. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, let's take another look in the cockpit. And even though this plane is not going anywhere, the 40-year-old salvage hunter reverts to a nine-year-old boy and asks to go up front. It's really cool, isn't it? Where, yes, he pretends to fly the plane. But this is Drew Pritchard. And even whilst having fun, he spots some potential salvage. What seats are these? These are the cockpit seats. Exactly what I've been looking for. So it's a great big pair of pilot seats, co-pilot seats. Leather, huge, armrests, very funky base, loads of rivets, odd size, odd construction, strange looking. Got it all. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So what would, what would something like this cost me today to buy uh, in that condition? An older seat like this in this condition is around about $5,000 is the, the going price for it. Really? Um, it How many do you want? $5,000. <laughs> I don't want it that much. <laughs> Let's be careful when we we'll put it back we'll put it back down gently. Very yeah. carefully. <laughs> Thanks, Bradley. <laughs> you know, £5,000, I'm sure, uh, uh, if I needed to buy a plane seat for my... Boeing 747, that's what they're going to cost. But I only want them for sort of decoration in somebody's house or flat or bar. OK, I'll, how can I, yeah, I do want one of those. <laughs> for Another about day. 250 quid. Another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's clear that Bradley's customers expect to pay more than salvage hunter prices. And reluctantly, Drew deplanes in search of something more affordable. We've got over 15,000 items on our books in this hangar. He's conscious that the team back home will be very unhappy if he doesn't buy anything. And he's pinning all his hopes on this final hangar. It's gonna, it's, there's so much here to take in. These rocker switches, like those, 
Lights off a fighter plane sort of thing, aren't they? Oh, it's, it is, it says arm. Everything is just so good looking. They're quite cool, aren't they? Just think of these, Jules. Look at that. This is the cockpit door from the 737. How much are they? Uh, they're 250 each. 250 each. Just thinking that's a pair of double doors. How much am I going to get for one of those? It's 400, 450 pounds, maybe. 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 It's not reversible, that's the problem. Because you've got the cutouts here. You've got that latch piece change. sticking out. I was just thinking that and that will swap. But, but it's a, look at the work of doing it. That's it's massive. Huge, huge amount of work. Altering them, going to take hundreds of man hours to take it apart, alter it, mess about with it, and then get a return. All the latches are on the right. And to take one of the hinges off, that's like it's going to take me a week. So just too much work. I'm just, I just lose money like a dripping tap if I bought those. What I'd like to find is something that is obviously from a plane, but it's got a secondary use, so it can be used in a house, restaurant, mm -hmm. hotel, bar, shop mm -hmm. fit, something like that. So that's, that's very close, isn't it? I got really excited then. I thought, God, we found something super. Do you have um, seats? I thought, well, they're going to be good for bars, restaurants, home cinemas, something like that. And they're very stylish as well. What are they out of? Obviously. These are a 737, a Russian 737. A Russian 737. If that commercial. makes all the difference. <laughs> 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 I'm not flying in a Russian plane again. <laughs> <laughs> no, there you go. Oh, that's God, nice. <laughs> How much is this one? This is 250. 250 quid. That's not bad, is it? It's not terrible. Not terrible. It's not like that, but slightly more stylish. They're sort of not quite there, you know? They're not quite right. They're just not funky enough. Very comfortable. This stuff just doesn't have that edge to it. They look a little bit mundane, a little bit workaday. Because I'm looking for something that you know, it's not really their stocking trade. I'm looking for something very, very stylish, odd, weird, funky, you know, I can do something else with, and uh, they're in the spares market. So it's, it's two different worlds trying to sort of make sense of each other. What about bits and pieces like this? Hostess trolleys. Now I'm going to pass on those. These are from light aircraft. No, it's still not working for me. You? No, not at all. No. Cool. Nearly there. Nearly there. These are interesting, Bradley. I like the look of them. These are the, the galley trays. These go so these in, inside there. They go into the, the actual galley units. How much are these? Uh, they're 25 each. 25 quid each. But we don't have many, because they're quite popular. These insulated food boxes are exactly the type of thing Drew's designer and shop-fitting customers will like. They could easily sell for around £40 each and they've certainly got Drew's creative juices flowing. My thinking is, you know, these things are great shop fits. And, you know, in your bathroom, you know, have, have just a stack of them, you know, just pile them all up to the ceiling. Very simple to fit together, very easy to attach to a wall. Great, so they were, they were like a great find. I was hoping there was going to be lots of them. Is this all you've got? That's all we've got, just there, three. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. But they're really funky locks, aren't they? I think they're cool things. Um, if I took, can I have, can I have three for 60 quid? 20 pound a piece? They're quite popular. Well, these aren't that popular, you've still got these left. Those ones are. Oh, I, right, I, okay. I, can, I can take them away tonight. So what, is that a no then? It'd have to be 25 each. Has to be 25, all in yeah. for three. I think Bradley is very, very governed on his prices. The prices are the prices. I don't think if you're buying the wing off a of Boeing, they're going to haggle too much. So that's off today. Yeah, Got yeah, yeah. Fine, we'll take them. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure, we'll take those. I bought three little things. Um, but you never know, he might phone me up and say, look, I've got another jet in, it's got 50 of these things in, do you want them? It was worth going there for that, for sure. A good contact, and I saw those beautiful old planes. Thanks very much for coming. No, look, thanks. Really appreciate it. Nice to see you. It's been good. Thank we'll you. See you again, hopefully. If you get any more of those boxes or any of the seats we discussed, just send me some emails. Let you know straight away. Great stuff. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Brilliant. Oh. Right. Happy? Over the moon, Brit. Because I'm with you. And you're my hero. <laughs> Back in the van. Drew and Julian realised that three small boxes is not going to cut it back in Wales. Yeah, but I tell you what, we're going to get grief when we get back to the shop. 
you bought Rebecca, one. You uh, Rebecca's going to kill you. Oh. Really tough week. Um, really little reward. It'll discourage Drew for a short period of time, but he will bounce back. He'll come back from it, but he's going to be a bit down tonight, I think. And I'm going to be drunk. <laughs> so they put off the day of reckoning, and rather than head back to the shop, they spend another day on the road investigating a new lead in East Sussex. I'm afraid you missed out on the Peronis last night. Really? It was a Peroni night last night. Oh, my good God. I got into my bed, and it was like literally sitting in a marshmallow. So I, I could, you, you can't move. It's been a tough week for us so far this week. Uh, we've travelled several hundred miles, and we've only picked up a few piddly little things. But uh, Mark has just rang me, and he's come up with a really good lead. It sounds like he's got some exceptional stuff, so we're going to go straight round. They're off to battle in East Sussex to see Jeremy Trinder, a collector and budding inventor who has contacted Drew because he needs a clear out. My family's always collected things, so I've been brought up with it. So it's, you know, it's uh, just carried on from there, really. It just seems a natural thing to do. He's got, and I'm not joking, a Batman suit he made himself for himself. No. The kind of stuff that I'm drawn to and, and enjoy are kind of one-off pieces which are slightly unique, slightly off the wall, a bit... Uh, a bit out there. He collects all manner of stuff. There's no real rhyme or reason to what he collects. A weird mix of stuff. But he might have something. This must be it. That's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Jeremy. Hi, Drew. Drew. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? All right. Very well, thank you. Yeah. Hello, mate. This is James, my son. Hello, James. Hi, James. We've got a lot of stuff, and it's it's just time to get rid of some now and make make some space. Otherwise, we're going to end up like sort of hoarders, and that can't happen. So you've got a lot of stuff lying around. We might as well start here if you like. Yeah, sure. Have a have a look. Have a look. Oh my God! Look at that. We weren't expecting that, were you? No. <laughs> I love the fact that he's built a time machine in his shed. Don't really need to say any more. He built a time machine in his shed. So is it a copy of the one off the time yeah, off the time machine? Yes, it is. Yeah, the HG HG Wells one. Does it work? We haven't wow. tested it out yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. we've got to uh, okay. do a bit more wiring and then. All oh, right. Uh, okay. Where are so we going to go first? This is properly mad. It really is. What possessed you to make this then? We. Uh, I remember the film from when I was a kid, and uh, I said those fatal words. I think we could build that. What a top dad. He's built a time machine for his little boy in his shed. I make a lot of the stuff. I suppose some of it's nostalgia from my point of view, and it's just great for him because he's out there with me and he's building stuff and getting involved in it all, and it's better than him sitting in front of the television. Well, fantastic. Well, clearly you're a man after my own heart, so I'd like to have a look around what you've got for sale and just oh, have, right. a, have a poke about. But that's really... You can't really top that, can you? I don't know. You're going to have to try hard. Yeah. Anything in the boxes I need to know about? I don't no, want to go no, opening all the boxes. Uh, to be honest, probably the only thing, unless you want a mummified cat, the only other thing in here is probably Ooh, is this safe a that you might like. mummified cat? Oh, my good God. Good grief. It is, it's like a little satanic, deadly looking thing. Look at his teeth. I've had that since I was 12. My auntie gave me that. It's great. I like that. Unbelievably, there is a market for mummified cats. In medieval times, it was considered good luck to seal a live cat in the walls of new homes. They are sometimes uncovered during restorations and can sell for up to £2,000. Like You're not going to get it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but Drew decides against the cat and goes from something macabre to something gothic. What's that there? Uh, they're the lights. Uh, light cages, yeah. Are these for sale, Jeremy? Yeah, they can be. They can be, yeah. Could be, yeah? yeah, yeah. They're very well made. I don't think they're very old. They're probably only 20 or 30 years old, if that. They're a great decorative pair of wall-mounted tour chairs. Put a big pair of candles in there. They're just a cool-looking thing. Put your candles in, stick them outside. Oh, look cool. pretty. Late 20th century decorative wall tour chairs like these are popular with props companies and interior designers and could sell for almost £300 the pair. I think £60 is about right. That sounds fair. I it? think if they were older, they'd be worth an awful lot more... Yeah, well, yeah. they would be worth yeah. an awful lot more money, but they're, they're not. Um, but they've got something about them. They've got a sort of Gaudi-esque bit to the top there. And... Yeah, so 60 that's for the pair. That's, that's fair enough. Is that all right? That's good. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. OK, great stuff. So you got some stained glass windows? Oh, or yeah, leaded put, windows? Had those rather. Well, we were going to put them in our new extension, but we opted for something else in the end. They're quite pretty, aren't they? 
I like these because they're in a cast iron frame. Second half of the 19th century, those are going to be. But these are something you'd, you'd, you'd want to get rid of? Yeah, for sure, yeah, because, I mean, I'd have to build a summer house now just to put those in. <laughs> <laughs> Once restored, Victorian stained glass windows like these can fetch around £220 for a pair. What do you want to do for these? 60 quid. For the pair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, OK, right. we'll have those. Yeah. They've got that sort of uh, lancet effect to the top there. They're very pretty. They've both got moulded glass roundels. We've given them a polish. They'll look a million dollars. OK, lead on. More sheds. OK. Shed round the corner here. OK, looks good already. So what have you got in there? Oh, my good God. Yeah, Your I, kids I... must be traumatised. He's been brought up on it, so he's quite used to it, but... Uh... And you're married? Yeah. yeah. Funny, <laughs> <isn't it>? <laughs> <laughs> he's the classic British... Um, eccentric, and there's just not enough of them around. There's a lot here, actually, isn't there? There's another metal sign up here, but I don't think that's French. I quite like it, though. It's, it's a nice little decorated thing for a restaurant or something like that. Enamel signs are something Drew can always sell. There are many fakes around, but assuming this one's genuine, it should fetch around £120. 20 quid. Well, that's more than fair. Just a good little decorated thing. For a pub restaurant, that type of thing, that's probably where it's going to end up. Some more of this fairground stuff up here. So what do you reckon? Is that the same again? Same sort of price? Yeah, right. Yeah, I yeah, think around, they're 20 yeah. quid. We'll, we'll, we take it for that. So what's this, then? That was for a Halloween party that we had, and basically there was a light, in, there's a light that goes inside it, a brain, that, a plastic <laughs> brain, that goes inside the jar full of water, and then a pond pump which bubbles, so it lights up green, and the water bubbles away. So it's part of a Frankenstein prop display that we did. It's a teaching aid one, aren't they, these? They're, they, again, were for the Halloween thing. You really no, get I, this I, I just, thing, I just, just wanted a couple yeah. of skeletons, really. Was, yeah, uh, of course you do. Yeah, I'm quite into the Halloween thing, because I like that aspect of the unexpected for people. You know, they come here and they'd be, like, slightly like, ooh, like that, but then they yeah, that's, that's good. Green Goblin. Green Goblin helmet. What, for, for people? Yeah, care, the padding's not in there, so be careful. Oh, and actually, if I press this button... It hurts, you, actually. Uh... Oh, my good God, my just... <laughs> Sorry, it was... A... <laughs> You're really out there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the only other thing was that you've got, you've got this fruit picker ladder behind you. Yeah, I've got another one just up there. It's a bit shorter. Agricultural antiques like these fruit pickers ladders are very rare. After restoration, Drew could sell these for around £220. OK, so what do you, what do you want to do? do? Are they for sale? They, they, Something they can you'd be sell? for sale, yeah. Uh, 20 quid each. Oh, yeah, that's fine. They're good decorative pieces, aren't they? So I'm really glad I called in. I didn't think we'd get anything. And uh, he's got loads of stuff in the house he wants to show me now as well, so I want to get in there. Not only are the prices great, but Jeremy's taste coincides perfectly with Drew's. What a great-looking place. Thank you. They're ahead of the game in so many respects with what they're doing, whether they realise it or not. Their whole look and their combination of their antiques put together in modern settings, in modern ways, it's brilliant. Really, just... And it's natural. They've just done it because that's what they like. To see one that's just evolved like that, cos he just likes 1950s-inspired sci-fi, and he likes skeletons, and he likes antlers, and he likes period-old furniture. This chair, is this something you'd sell? Yeah, no, that's something we'd get rid of. We've had it probably 12 years. It's just a great shape. The, is it a cl club chair, Club isn't chair, it? yeah. Ow, over your knee. OK. It's had a lot done to it. Half the frame's new. With something like that, I just can't help myself. As soon as I've seen it, I'm like, well, I know who I'm going to try and sell it to you, so do it straight away, stop messing about. Just a great shape. I mean, I'm open to uh, a very sensible offer, considering its yeah. condition. So, you know, if it's a good bargain for you, I mean, I don't know what you've got in mind, really. Well-worn leather club chairs like these are always popular with designers and photographers. Drew knows that even if he does nothing to this chair, it will sell for around £220. Been a bit mean at 100 that's kind of the figure I had in my head. So. Yeah, it's just a great shape, good size, very commercial thing, something I can sell pretty easily. Um, trendy at the moment in any condition. Oh, I love that Rocket Man helmet. Do you wear it around the house when there's nobody, uh, else, when there's nobody else in? I mean, 
<laughs> only on Sundays. He was telling me that that was the one that the guy wore at the Rocketeer premiere. The guy at the start put it on and, and walked around with it. There was only a 1,000 made of them. There you go. It's like a glove. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's, On me Vespa. It's you, mate. It's you. It's absolutely you. It really is. <laughs> well, it's good. And you've got a Batman suit as well. Yes. Yeah, you uh... just never cease to amaze me. I didn't see that before. <laughs> so you've got a time machine and a Batman suit. I made the majority of it. The cow came from America. And it's all wearable. Halloween. Do you wear it? Uh... Oh, I did last Halloween, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Halloween's a big thing in your life, isn't it? <laughs> 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 You can try that one as well if you want to. No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the rubber suit to you. And that owl's cool. Inside, it's all rigged up so that the wings will flap. Like a robot inside. And the head will turn, so it's a... I thought it was uh, the owl's a, sh a shop display thing, uh, but Drew had a look at it and he seemed to think that it was more of a film prop. So I'll have to do a bit of research on that and uh, see what it could be from. Do you pay a lot for it? I think it was two, 200. Around that 200. seems really cheap. It's just so beautifully put together in the back, all those air rams and pumps. You can see the rams working inside. You just need a tiny little compressor, little tiny little thing like that, and you get this working. I'll, I'll happily give you a profit on that if you want to get rid of it. I'm sure you, you don't want to sell it, but... Well, it's one of Sarah's favourite favorite yeah. pieces, I'm No, afraid, it's lovely. But... You know, I'd happily... Would I double your money on it? I'd probably get very close, I think. Okay. Just as it is, yeah. you know, just yeah. buying it in to do it, to, to fix it up. I don't think she's going to go for it. But... I can't blame her, I wouldn't. I think he's dropped incredibly lucky on something there for a couple hundred pounds. What a great thing. OK, here's the spare room, Drew. All right. Which, as you can see, is a bit uh, cluttered. Yeah. I think these have become quite... Yeah. I was going to display them. <laughs> 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 Oh, mine flashes. Oh, no. I was like nine. You know, oh, that's a good your gun's better than my gun. But they're becoming more and more popular. I've seen, I've seen one go for two hundred pounds. I think I bought that for forty-five. Okay, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to buy those at reasonable money. This you might quite like. This is probably up your street. Yeah, I do like that. Uh, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Very original. Untouched. You put, you have to put that on there, and they just calibrate your eyes or something, don't they? To it, they move these. I have had that. It looks like a face, you know, when you turn it on its side. It's got like the eyes and the nose sticking out, and the whole thing. So it's got that about it. I liked as well, and it was also really well made. The engineering side of it and the finish was fantastic. Antique optical instruments like these are popular with a small number of collectors, window dressers, photographers, and prop houses. This example could sell for around two hundred and forty pounds. I'll go straight in with the highest bid, 50. OK. Yeah? Yeah. What's that? Okay. That's, uh, that's uh, sound activated. Ugh! <laughs> that's disgusting. Light Did that ter terrifying. terrify you? They were just fascinated by it. I think it's brilliant. Oh, I like that. Are they foxes' like skulls? They're foxes that I put in uh, a box there. But... Where did you get the skulls from? They're just found on walks. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I like those. And you've made the little box nice. for yeah. it. It's just a nice little trophy thing. But in a quite a sort of old Victorian Jekyll Hyde type of way as well that I like. Could, um, for your type, £60? Would that yeah. be all right? Does that cover yeah. you? Yeah, no, you can, go and find, you can go and find some more skulls. Well, I've already, I've already started the next... Uh... <laughs> Next one. <laughs> God, you've got a lot of dead foxes <laughs> around here, haven't you? <laughs> this just fits in with everything we do, so my regular customers are going to go, yeah, yeah, I like that. You can, take the, you can have the other two. Are you sure? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good of you. That's great, because that one's... I think these could be mounted on the wall as well, couldn't they? I had a really good day today here with Drew and Julia, and they've been uh, good fun, and, uh, yeah, it's been an experience, and I've enjoyed it, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, initially I was just like, I just thought, oh, it's just a little house call, we might get the odd bit, but to get a big pile of stuff and to see all his cool stuff and, uh, and to meet his family was, was great. I really liked it. What do you reckon, James? How much would you want? A quid? <laughs> I can't give you a quid. OK. How about £10? Pounds? £10? Pounds? Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Is that a deal? Thanks, James. I'll take that for £10. Thank, Thank you, mate. You. James is tough. He's a hard bargainer. He got from me from a pound to £10 pounds like that. Brilliant. He's a great guy and he's got some mad gear. He really has.
We've driven through hell and high water this week to find something, and I'm really excited at the stuff we've managed to score from Jeremy's place. It's brilliant. So I'm, I'm really pleased, and we can go back up to Wales and show the guys what we've found. Very nice to meet you, Drew. A real pleasure. I have enjoyed it no end. I've enjoyed it too. Pleasure, Jim. What looked like a bad trip turned out OK, thanks to Jeremy. Drew now has a van full of unique and quirky items. He heads back to the shop confident that his salvage hunter reputation is well and truly intact. Cool. Well, I enjoyed that. That was good. And good stuff. We did well. We bought well. We bought all the right bits and bobs there that I like. Some real oddments. I keep trying to buy normal stuff. I just can't do it. He's, he's made for the trade, I was going to say, he's made for the trade because he's slightly not quite with us, you know? Back in Wales, the team gets word that Drew's heading back with a van full of goods. They clear the decks ready for the new stock. Mark, he's got tons. He's got half a van full. Hello, Mel Mel. Hello, babes. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? All right. You look very, very, tired. very, very tired. Of course. There you go. Fruit picking ladders, Gav. Need for restoration. Loads of different bits. We're doing it, testing your eyes on. <laughs> but it's cool, isn't it? That's cool. Sort of sculptural sort of look yes. to it. So I quite like that. Just needs to clean. But it was um, a strange collection of stuff. These are good. I'll have to restore these. Shop, pub, restaurant thing. It's always open. It's open close. This, no. we won't restore this, we'll sell it as is. Careful. Gavin, careful. Whoa, 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 are you going to rip it? Careful. Well, I know you haven't come back with a van full, but... It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. And in a matter of days, the chair from Jeremy Trinder is bought by an advertising agency who run a trendy multi-use venue in Sheffield's regenerated Kellam Island. The team have what they wished for, plenty of work to keep them busy and a shop full of stuff. Ding, ding. Go to the shop. Drew and Julian set out on the road once again. This time, they're passing Sheffield, so Drew takes the opportunity to see where the chair from Jeremy ended up. He's visiting designers Tim and Sally, who've used it in their latest project. The chimney house is a meeting room, it's a meeting space for businesses, and then by evening, we transform into a pop-up dining hall. Tim. Drew. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. In the area, thought I'd call in. Sally. Hi, Drew. Hi nice to Hi. see you. Ah, there it is. There's the chair. That's it. Hey, it looks good. It really compliments what we do in here, so yeah. It looks the part, it feels the part, it's tactile, it's interesting. People just instantly flock to it because they want to know what it feels like, what it is to sit in it. What I like about the chair is that not everybody will like it. It creates an interesting talking point. It looks good there. It does look the part, doesn't it, in the corner there? Yeah, it's nice. Coming here today and seeing our stuff in action, being used, makes what I do seem real. It makes sense of it. And we so often don't see where it goes. So it's nice to see where it's being used. And in a really modern and funky application, it couldn't be any better. On Salvage Hunters, it's Salvage Hunter versus Hoarders. I'm a dealer's nightmare in that I won't part with anything. Drew gets a lesson in negotiation. Cash. Cash. And a lesson in frustration. He won't let me buy anything. Oh, my God, yes! But can he beat the men who never sell? Definitely a tough nut to crack, this one. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Woo! That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. Helped by his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up the street. Yeah.
witch hunters are an odd breed, hunting down the weird and the wonderful. But they're nothing compared to the legendary British hoarder. This week we've set ourselves a challenge of going to see some hoarders, collectors, um, eccentrics, whatever you want to call them, God love them, we need them. Uh, they don't really want to sell anything, and they never want to sell anything, but they've got plenty to sell. And these guys, the one thing that knits them together is the fact that they absolutely adore what they're collecting. They really, really do it. I'm sure they'll sell me something. Drew and his sidekick Julian set out on a five-hour drive to Dorchester to lock horns with their first hoarder, Jeff Tight. Scrapyard's been here 60-odd year, so I um, took it over from my father. He's 89, so he's getting on a bit, but he's all right. He comes out and does a few things. We buy him mainly cars. We have a few lorries and farm implements. What do you reckon? Left or right? Right. Right there is. You look left. You should go right. I'm not the driver. I'm going right now. Okay. Have a look, see if there's anything. Ooh, looks promising. This is great. There's tons of stuff here. Tons of stuff. Hello. How you doing? I'm Drew. Yeah, I'm Jeff. Jeff, this is Jules. Hey. Yeah, how you doing? Hello, Jeff. <laughs> this place looks really promising. There's a few cars growing the brambles there. But what's he's this? He's a then? diesel roller. That diesel one, roller? He was petrol power fan, but he's converted to diesel. I've just driven one of those. Brilliant fun, though, to drive. It's worth more for scrap than it's worth as a roller. <laughs> what's it worth like that? He's about six tonne nuts, so he's like 1,200 quid without the engine, even. Oh, just because you know? the scrap value? Just. Yeah, just for the weight of it. Hmm. So um, Seems a shame to weigh it in, doesn't it? Yeah, really? that's why it's still here. <laughs> 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 Money and everything, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> but no, no, but definitely no. I couldn't. No. Not my sort of thing. Jeff's yard is full of cars and vans, but some of them have been there so long, identifying them is impossible. This is clearly not going to be straightforward for Drew. Some studio bakers. And... Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been there a couple of years. There's some that Father collected years ago. He's, he's always liked things like that. Well, there's two in there, is there? Where's there it? is, yeah. There's one behind as well. Blimey, they've been there a while, haven't they? The American classic can be worth as much as £12,000 if fully restored. This one is worth a bit less. No, I'm going to take them, Jules. Get them on the van. Yeah, no, yeah. I'll get a shovel. Take them out. <laughs> Ooh. He's a werewolf next door. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. He won't come out till after dark, if you're right. <laughs> we'll go around the other side. <laughs> There's just so much stuff here, it's just, and it's been here an awful long time. Drew thinks he's spotted a gem, an early 20th century wrought iron gate. Is there another gate to go with this, Jeff? It's just the one of these gates just... here. Do you know where there's another one? Where the other one is? No, I think it must be just that one, I think. That's a shame. <laughs> but half of it is missing, and he moves on. Even Drew is struggling, but then his salvage hunter instinct kicks in, and he spots something that could potentially make this trip worthwhile. It's all his saddle stone. These mushroom-shaped stones probably date from the 18th century and were used to elevate granaries and hay racks away from the ground to protect them from vermin. Today, they're very desirable ornaments, and garden designers will pay up to £350 a piece. There's how many here? One, two. Drew often finds one or two saddle stones, but Jeff seems to have a large number. This could be a great find. Quite a few. How many have said there? It's about seven now, is there? Yeah, it must be about seven things. or eight. These are all for sale, are they? Yeah, he'll sell a few of them, yeah. Oh, great. But if Drew wants them, he'll have to deal with Mr Tight Senior. Is this the boss? That's my father, yeah. Hello there. Awesome. Hi, Mr. Tight. Drew. Tight me name and tight me nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the saddle stones you've got. There's quite a few. I think there's I think there's probably 12 altogether. Yeah. And 10 that I can use. Yeah. I think they've got tops and that aren't damaged on the basis. About 225 apiece. Really? Yeah, we've got to start up somewhere. We've got to start somewhere, yeah. Let's we'll start really much, high. Yeah, you knock too much off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy all of them, so I, I need to get the price down as low as I can. What if I said I was going to take ten? Mm -hmm. What could you do if I took a big lump of them, a lot of them? Ten. I'd, I'd be after quite a discount, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of grand. 
I was hoping to buy them and buy all of them, everything, for 150 each, which would be 1,500. Yeah. If there's, I'll pull out as many as I can. If I find more, I'll pay you the same for more of them. Because um, some are good. Some I'm going to make good money on. Yeah. And some aren't so good. Mm. Some have got good tops and some have got no tops at all or a mismatched top. So it would be that. Mm. That sort of money. What do you reckon? One seven five a piece. At one seven five a piece. Mm. Okay, I'll dig out as many as I can. Okay. Good deal. Enjoy that. It's good. Finally, Drew has a good deal, but old Mr. Tight has a final surprise to let Drew know who's boss. Cash. Cash. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. I can see what I can do. Have you got a bank nearby? Nice petrol. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you got more of a shop in here as well. Yeah. I'm all right to have a poke around in here? Yeah, of course you can. OK. <laughs> now formally invited, Drew wades into the house at a full-blown hoarder's den. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where'd you start? Very difficult to take in. God, he collects anything, doesn't he? How much are these, Mr. Tight? These things, how much are these? Opaline, or white glass, was popular in the 19th and early 20th century and is increasingly popular with designers at bars and restaurants. These could easily bring around £120 each. £15 a pair. Let me give you 30 quid for the pair. He said he's going to give you £30 for the two of them. £30? Yeah, because he said uh, you didn't ask enough. Oh. And I've never heard anybody say that about you before. <laughs> <laughs> with the ice well and truly broken, Drew tries his luck with a slice of 50s nostalgia. Addresses chess. Mid 20th century furniture is growing in popularity, and Drew would have no trouble selling a pair like this for around £150. What do you, what do you reckon? How much for these, Mr. Tight? Um, £40 a pair. Yeah, they're OK. I think they're quite cool. Yeah, what did you say, 40 quid? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Drew has taken on his first order and won, but there's no time to gloat as there are several tons of stones that need to be loaded onto the van. <laughs> I was just getting warmed up. The van, as Julian would say, is on its arse, and it really is. I don't think we can get much more in there. It is full. This will throw us over the weight limit. Glad Drew dropped by. He was a bit of a laugh, he had a bit of a laugh and a joke. Yeah, it's a good time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you very much. I'm really glad I called in. Yeah. Uh, and any more you find in the garden, God knows where around here, yeah. stick them on a pallet, I'll have them. OK. Just give me a call. We'll, we'll take the rest. At base, the team can spot the signs of a good haul even before the van doors are opened. It's pretty loaded. It's dented it. Yeah. <clears throat> Julian! Ah, come on up. Um, loads of stuff. There you go. Staddles, though. Staddles. Staddles, Staddles. Yeah. Sales manager Mark and Drew's wife Rebecca know their garden mushrooms from their Staddle stones, but the question is, who will unload? Jules? That'll be Julian, then. Bring on the forklift. Where's the dog? Inside. All right. These are going to go straight in. Good, huh? <laughs> Where'd you steal this one from? Let's try and get as much as we can on.
You can give Mark a hand um, moving those out of the way quickly. Where do you want them displaying in the showroom? Put them in the building, not outside. Okay. And I think they look so much more interesting. But I bought some more stuff from him. Got these, which although they need a lot of resto, good polish. I thought they were a good look. Restorer Gavin is charged with bringing the 50s hairdresser's chairs back to life. See how what you can do with this. Yeah. And if you can't, we may strip them and just spray the frames. But more than likely, in that condition, a good polish, and we'll just put a glue patch in there underneath it. We got these from the same guy. I mean, they're a bit scruffy, but they're earlier than most. You see the seeds in the glass on these? Mm. So they're just a slightly earlier variation of that. The Staddle Stones are fantastic because you very rarely get more than one or two. To find 12 Staddle Stones in the same place is a pretty good find, actually. And they're good sellers. Uh, the stuff Drew's pulled back today is quite varied. Uh, good selection. Another day, another hoarder. This time, it's a three-hour trip to Buxton. But this one makes old Mr Tight look like a part-timer. Drew and Julian are off to meet Chris Sugden-Smith. I am an inveterate hoarder. I probably hoard everything, actually. Anything that the work in it impresses me or that has a bit of age about it, I collect. He's got a collection of stuff, from motorbikes to trucks to antiques to architectural fittings, farm machinery, modern, old, anything, and joy of joy. Doesn't sell anything. Oh well. But I reckon I can get him to sell me something. My thinking is, if he's impossible to buy from, that means he's got loads of really good stuff he's never sold. So, isn't it my turn to have a go? This is the place. Oh, that looks fun. Can we get in here. Hi, Chris. Uh, Hi, Drew. We spoke on the phone earlier about, uh, about some stuff you've got. How high are you? Where would we start? I'd start off in the field, if you want. Over here? Vehicles, yeah. OK, brilliant. Okay. Lead on. Brian, we've got all sorts here, haven't we? Yeah. Finding places like this is still a thrill. You know, there was always a guy down the road who had a field full of old cars and old machinery or loads of old furniture or something. My initial desire was to have a museum, and the, the main reason why I, why I have all this uh, ramble. Chris has kept every single vehicle he's ever owned. They now rust in peace in his car graveyard. My ex used to call it the herbaceous car park, as I park them up. So all these have been yours? <laughs> yes. It may look like a dump, but to Drew, it's a field full of potential treasures. Is this as far back as your little car graveyard goes, is it? Yes, this is it, it is does. It? That's the first row. I've really wanted to preserve it for the future. Is this one you went chasing women in, that one? Yes. <laughs> Romantic interludes in the back. <laughs> in order to buy from Chris today, I need to find some common ground with him. I'm not a dealer. I've never wheeled and dealed. As with many hoarders, Chris is happy to show off his treasures. And unusual treasure they are, too. That is a cement mixer. What's the interest in cement mixers, then? I'm obsessed with them. I collect them. <laughs> Even for me, that's a real weird one. That's a real straight to the top of the list of nuts things to collect. Yeah, I've got 43, I think. 43? Mm. Somebody's got to collect them, I suppose. Although it's a very small market, collectors are willing to pay up to £200 for vintage cement mixers but they haven't really caught Drew's imagination, and he moves on. Drew and Julian make their way through the cars and brambles. Eventually, they spot a potential buy, wrought iron gates. I like that gate you've got shoved down the side of that green container there. All these gates are of interest to me, but this sort of estate gate, the bigger the better, sort of 10 foot plus yeah. is what we're after, but they're hard to get at that size. They aren't smashed to bits. But that one's OK. These are highly sought after in home restorations and could easily fetch £500. It's the big gate, but the little I'll show you the little ones in, uh, in the back of this pickle. That's just, it's a big book gate and a little gate. Yes. Yeah, that's good. OK. It's very, yeah, this is my sort of thing. Is it? Yeah, yeah. this is the sort of thing I'm looking for. They're very early 20th century, say 1900, 1905. They're in pretty untouched original condition as well. They've had no welding, no cutting, nothing done to them, and they're a good height. I can think about it, I suppose. OK. The guy who never sells anything, 
was like teetering on, yeah, I'm going to sell you these. And I thought, oh, great, I'm going to be able to buy this. OK, so where next, then? Let me just go in the shed, if you want. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> You've won the uh, award for the best shed in Britain award here, Chris. It's this huge shed with three square feet on the floor that you can get in. That's it. You know, there's enough for two people to stand next to each other. And then it's just solid, straight up to the ceiling. You know, and there's this, like, lethal, upside-down, broken ladder to get up. And it's just packed to the roof full of stuff. Look at this place. God, it's fantastic. I'm trying to take all the sheer volume of stuff you've got here. Are these something you'd sell? Yeah, I've actually got those for the horse girls to hang the clothes on. Oh, right, OK. I've not fitted them yet. Not for sale? No. Not for sale, OK. Inside the shed, Drew's beginning to realise just what he's dealing with. I've come across lots of hoarders in the past and there's always a project they're going to do. So I just thought, well, let's just start asking, let's just start throwing things out and saying, do you want to sell that? No. Do you want to sell that? No. How about this? No. Quarter mile mark. Cool thing. Mile posts are a favourite amongst railway collectors and can command £200 a piece. Is that for sale, Chris? No, that's uh, not odd that long, actually. That's something I bought at a railway uh, auction. OK. I like the bulkhead light you've got in there as well. Are those anything for sale? Yeah, just for installation here in time, actually. So they're not for sale, no. those ones there? Are these something that would sell? No. No. <laughs> that big signal you've got there, the big red-handled yeah. thing with the white on there in 24. I've got to ask, I know what the answer is, but is that, is that for sale? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I'm a dealer's nightmare, possibly, in that I won't part with anything. There's so much stuff up here I want to buy. The frustration today is Chris knows I'm here to buy and he won't let me buy anything. He could drive somebody around the bend, you, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I could have a pot of gold this, but he's not going to sell me anything. He's not interested in money. I've just got this fetish for keep hoarding and collecting stuff. Every single piece of this, he loves. Drew senses this hoarder is getting away from him and tries to bring the conversation back to what he thought was a surefire sale. While we're up here and discussing things, then, what about the gates we found outside, the pair of double gates? And uh, the uneven ones. The uneven ones, so there'd be a, the, the, the pedestrian gate and the other, yeah. other gate as well. They are really for the front of this property, actually. Typical hoarder, I've got a project for them. I'm going to do something with them. He's got a lifetime of projects here if he lived to, to be 300. Cutting his losses, Drew leaves. I hate leaving empty-handed, but sometimes you have to know when to fold. Be in touch. And I'm sure you will be. You sure? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, good to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. It was a you pleasure. Well. I feel bad about not having sold him something, but I've made a friend and a fellow enthusiast today, so that's, you know, it's fine. Today was absolutely bloody useless for making any money. Yes. <laughs> I asked him about, what, 20, 30 items? Nothing, not interested. Doesn't seem like he's interested in money at all. But this salvage hunter doesn't stay down for long and has a plan B. Uh, I have a new lead, it's over 100 miles away, but I'd rather go and do that than face everybody with an empty van. Drew and Julian point their van east towards Ellis Manor in Grantham, Lincolnshire. After two hoarders in a row, they're looking forward to dealing with someone who actually has things he wants to sell. OK, so we're down in Lincolnshire. A pal of mine down here has given me a hot tip uh, about the local guy who's rebuilding a manor house, been doing it for 30 years. It's got some overspill of stuff you might want to get rid of. This building perfectly encapsulates the whole of early European and British history from the time of the Northern Renaissance. What we're trying to do now is to grow this into a cultural centre. Raising funds, it's very much what it is about. It's another real odd lead. Odd ones do work. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Wow. Well, that's pretty damn impressive, isn't it? Look at the colour of the stone. Very unusual. Clive. Yeah. Hi, it's Drew. We spoke on the phone earlier about uh, you have some antiques for sale, I believe. Come on in. Pretty amazing, dramatic building you've got here. It doesn't look British at all. No, very continental, I'm amazed you've noticed. 
most people think it's Jacobean, and I say to them, you need no. to look again. No, it's a million miles away from Jacobean, isn't it? Oh, much older and much further away. Yeah. Houses like this in this country evolved over periods of time, so they'd have built, say, the main house, and then there'd have been other pieces built on and knocked down. And when they do that, pieces survive, pieces are put away, so there's always a maybe that there's something interesting. Legend has it that there's one gargoyle, which is quite possibly the earliest bespectacled gargoyle in the land. Really? Yeah, and we, we keep a picture for the kids when they come round. How old's that? The tower was said to have been built in 1519. Wow. We suspect it's Ellis himself, because in all the early wells he said it was, he was partially sighted or blind. Is he looking over the place? Yeah. Overlooking his building. I had some beams in stock recently, and they had that same ending to the carving there. With that chamfer at the end, we're looking at a 17th century. Mm. So we do feel that the ceilings were put in at a later date. This wall, this is said to go back to 14th century. Though this wall has been here, it belonged to another building. So was this ceiling height being changed? What's the, yes. What are those things there? They imagine, the experts, and I say the experts because they come in and they try to read the building, that we had a coffered ceiling. This as it stands is too crude for the status of the house. Would have had. So, so a coffered ceiling is, is panels, panelling? Exactly. So it's exactly. like roof ceiling panelling? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly it, a perfect description. And you can see where they've been cut off. And incidentally, if you trip there, don't be embarrassed because that's a sword step. There's one which is about two inches higher than all the others. OK. Because if the lead was being pursued, you'd dash up the stairs, his assailant would trip, and this bends to the right, so you'd turn with the sword. I've never heard that. If I didn't call in here today, I'd not know that. This is incredible. Well, these are said to be the most important and extensive in Britain. This is the emergence of the new middle classes. Yeah. I found it extremely refreshing talking history with him because it also made me look at certain things from a different perspective. So this is nouveau riche? Exactly, yeah. exactly. There you go. No, it's really staggeringly good. Yeah. So does this have national monument status? Yeah, I have to look after these. Even though, yes, they look great at the moment, there's an awful lot of distemper, lime wash, which is still covering. Now, when all of that is professionally removed, it'll be phenomenal. Clive is keen to show off the house, a huge and very expensive restoration project. This is a good sign, as it means he needs to sell things to raise cash. The cost of restoring all boils down to money. We need to raise just over 100,000 to have the whole of the upper floor down. Well, that's, it's, I think that would be money well spent. The paintings on the wall are really special. What he's looking after is British national heritage. But so far, there's no sign of what's for sale. Not for sale, obviously. No. no. <laughs> we, well, if you can get it off the yeah. wall. <laughs> we do have a garage, and perhaps Some we should look in there. Yeah. And stuff we can have we a look can through. Have a look. Yeah. I need to be in the outbuildings and in the sheds, finding the little things that they're not using around this house anymore. What have you got in here, then? This is our shed. There's bits and pieces. And sure enough, motorbike enthusiast Drew spots a tarpaulin covering a very familiar-shaped object. Where did this come from? Well, that's, um, I've had that for a long time now, as you can see by the tax disc down there. 1983, mm. the last time it was on the road. Mm. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's antique. That's quite a layaway, isn't it? Even in its neglected state, a motorbike like this can sell for £750. 6,500 miles. Yeah. And new. it's a genuine 6,500 miles. It's a single cylinder, is it 500 yet? Yeah. Should imagine the poor little thing's seized up now. And next to the motorbike is something with a little less horsepower, but backs of charm. I like this old bike you've got down here as well. It's one of the early tradesmen's bikes. So that was here when we came, and we just put the name of a place on it. That's quite a nice thing. An interesting old bike, actually. I can sell a bike like that. It's not my normal fare, but then again, what is my normal stuff? 
With a little bit of spit and polish, this 1940s delivery bike could bring in around £250. I'm not quite sure on well, the value of something like this. I think what you've got to do is not so much think about what it is, yeah. but what it will do. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where I'm going to have to differ. <laughs> Clive wants the best possible price to help pay for his restorations, but Drew isn't getting on board quite yet. Is it worth 200 quid? I can tell you it's a great deal more. Is it? Oh, my, yeah. God. my God, yes! Yeah, so... What would you want for it? Um, let's say 700. Ooh, 700 pounds. I'm not going to pay you 700 quid. 700, 700. Primarily now I'm concentrating on starting to get those wall paintings restored because we owe it to the nation for them to be seen at their best. What about the bike behind them? Well, now, obviously, that has an intrinsic um, aesthetic value as a, yeah. an old piece. I'm thinking about buying the motorbike, you see. I'm thinking, well, up that a bit and then go in for the bike. The condition's not brilliant on this. Do you, do you think? I yeah, think it's yeah, all very it's bad. All, but what has got other things going for it. It's original paint, all the original transfers and paintings and badges and everything on yeah, is all it's there. there. It's right? there, there's nothing missing. Obviously, I've got to make some money on it. I was going to say 450 on this one. And I'll, I'll push that one up to two, and that gives you 650 for the pair. As the negotiation falters, Clive plays his trump card. Look, we're not that far. Why don't we say, and knowing what, this is being turned into... Yeah, it's going to turn... It's good. Why I, don't I, we I'm say 700? To... Clive really did hit me with the ultimate sort of deal maker. I appreciate what he's doing, so... I really shouldn't have, shouldn't have but it's like, OK, fine, we'll go the extra mile. 700's fine. OK. Thanks, Clive, and I hope the money goes well. It certainly yeah, shall. Yeah, I'll yeah. make very good. sure. Motorbike enthusiast Julian takes charge of the scramble bike. It's just an iconic shape, isn't it? This is clearly going to be his restoration project. Drew gets to ride the push bike. Oh, dear. Grab hold of that. No, like, that's nice, and look, the sign in the middle. I really love what you're doing with the house. It's, it's fantastic, and uh, hats off to you. And, and hopefully we'll see you again. OK. Cheers. OK. I'll make some time when you're coming back. <laughs> All right, thanks, Clive. See you again. Right, bye, bye. A safe journey. With the future of the medieval wall paintings a little bit more secure, Drew and Julian head back to base with their two-wheeled booty. I enjoyed today. What a guy. I enjoyed looking at, uh, at Clive's house. It was just really, really interesting. Nobody can accuse you of just buying the same old, same old. <laughs> what it's can a, you say? It's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. I like the delivery bike, though, a lot. Uh, and I think we can uh, turn that over quite quickly. It's not going to take more than a few hours to get that polished up properly, pump the tyres up, fix the punctures, whatever it needs. Drew and Rebecca have been married for almost 10 years. Over this decade, Drew has learned that showing Rebecca the scramble bike first might be a bad idea. So the delivery bike is first off the bat. Which was for Gavin to restore. Yeah. Ooh. Basically, it's a delivery bike. Just needs a really, really good clean and a polish. Get that off. See if we can find an original seat. I've got a, a more original one somewhere in stock. Leave this on. Good call. There you go. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's an Ellswick. Really good clean the polish, and I've got the pump for the for that somewhere. How old is it? Uh, I'd say 40s. But he can only put it off for so long. I got mm. one more thing from him as well. 1979 XT500. When I saw that scramble bike, I thought, oh no, not another one. Mr. Pritchard, it's not for you. No, it's not for me. For it's you. more or less sold. Thank goodness. Luckily for Drew's marriage, he sold the bike to one of his motorbike enthusiast friends on the way home. The other items enter what Drew calls the production line to get them from junk to desirable objects for sale. The amount of effort that goes into the restoring and the photography and then the waiting and then having to usually get knocked down a little bit on the price and then the packing and the shipping and the payment. There's all that before, you know, from, from there, finding it in the shed through to end user. It's never so easy. Drew's recent encounters with hoarders have brought mixed success. 
Now he faces one of the most notorious in the country, John Digby Lovell. My grandmother bought the farm in 1948, and that developed into a second-hand farm machinery dealership, which lasted until recently. John has an incredibly varied collection, and he opens it to the public at selected times. Many have tried to buy his objects and failed, but to Drew, those are fighting words. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Lovell. Yes. Hi, my name's Drew. Well, we're here to, we're looking for things to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're dealers and we're looking for architectural and decorative items mm -hmm. and garden items. Mm -hmm. So just wondering if we're able to look around. You can look around, but there's very little for sale. John lays out clear rules as to where Drew and Julian can and can't go hunting. All the sheds open, are we able to go the, through those? Those are all open down there. Yeah. And I'll open that one when I'll move that tractor in a minute. That'd be brilliant. OK, Good that's much. very good of you. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. I love this. It's not trailing mobile workman's hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, isn't it? I just saw it parked in my garden. Deck chair outside, radio going inside, glass of beer, and happy as Larry. Ho, ho, ho. Millions of spades. It's not like the wobbly lines that we do, then. Yeah. There's so much stuff in here. There's a lot to see, isn't there? Look at this. Bond microcar. These 60s classics are hugely popular, and fully restored, a car like this could bring around £3,000. 44,000 like miles. Seriously? Every one of them terrifying, painful, cold and slow. There'll be somebody out there who wants it, won't there? Even though it only has 44,000 miles on the clock, Drew leaves this three-wheeler to its fate and moves on. I've been round there. Oh, they're good. Just roof supports for a building. Got to be. Something like that, aren't they? Yeah. Just internal supports for, like, a gar an old, old garage. Cast iron. Mm. Too That's much. Thing. Too difficult. Yeah. He's found nothing yet, but Drew is in his element. This is raw salvage hunting. John just has a assortment of stuff. I think the common theme is you're not going to see another one. For this type of digging, this is, like, the best. This is the f my favourite. Just felt like a kid again. There's so much stuff here, I, I really need to find some stuff now. I, I need to find some something I can buy. I've been to the back of beyond and found nebs. Nothing there. <laughs> have you been to that back far corner? Yes. You haven't? Go on. I have. Go back in. Up yours, I've been. Go on, go back in. I've or been. I've got to do it. Not You're going. in there now. Go in. No. Nope. Right, I've got to go in there. there. Come on. You go. Can't be that bad. You made the right performance out of that, didn't you? Uh, how do I get down from here without breaking my leg? They've checked it properly now. You sure you're sure? You don't yep. want to go back in and check it again no, no. just on the off chance? No, 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 there's nothing there. All right, OK. There's nothing there. If you're sure. Oh, hello. That's nice. This is a Georgian overthrow by the very late 18th century, early 19th century. Um, and this would have been on the entranceway to your house or a church, but there'd be two pillars, and this would be between the two. So you'd have, like, an opening. And then this chap would be up there like that. Yeah? Either, yeah. either either side of the pillars going down. You can see where it's been leaded in there. The overthrow was the rarest thing here today, and obviously, for me, the best thing as well. The Georgian period, for me, is the best. It's got the best design attributes to everything they built, to from houses, to fireplaces, to lighting, to furniture. It, it really is the, the period I like the most. He obviously knows what it is if it's down here. We don't know if we don't ask, mate. I want to get round to the other side of the, of the yard. <coughs> Just do this bit here, and then we'll go round, OK? And finally, the hunter finds some prey in a skip. Oh, that's cool. Wow, look at that. That is cool, isn't it? In the skip. I like that. In the skip, I reckon that's probably going to be for sale, yeah. I'll put money on it. So it's good. Base isn't broken. Mountain on the bottom's not broken. These will free up easy enough. Yep. I like it, it's good. And then he spots another piece with potential. Things are looking up. Not decorative. They're pretty good, aren't they? I like these. There's a pair of them, yeah? Same size. Uh, three, I think, mate. Right? No, that one's different. 
One, two, and that one, three. Oh, no, yeah, it's the same. Just a good structural thing, but people can build projects, they can build porches and various things around the house with these. We'll ask him about those. I'm not going to drag those around the yard. For a salvage hunter like Drew, it's all about finding special items that he knows will appeal to his customers. But when that item comes in multiples, even better. And it looks like Julian has just hit the jackpot. Drew! Yeah? You need to see these, mate. Ooh. We found about 30-odd stacking chairs, but they're quite good-looking ones, particularly the green ones, and they've got the wood slats. They were just quite charming. Some are worse, some are better. Can you just count how many we've got that look like they're usable? It looks like there's about 20% of these are scrap. Take slats off the bottoms to fix others. These are ideal for a little pub, club, restaurant, that type of thing, aren't they? Yep. Pretty and good. the most important thing is, bizarrely, with all these little cheapy chairs like this, is they stack. But when dealing with a collector like John, finding something is not the same as buying it. Oh. Another one of these chairs. Oh. Launch it. Sure. Yeah. We've got three of those in the shop already. Don't break the wood. <laughs> yeah. OK. No, we're done here. Let's go through. Can we go in the sheds now? Go on, him. Oh, cool. Look at this. This is a great shed. This is brilliant. He's got tons of gear in here. I've got a feeling this is the bit he opens to the public and it's not for sale. There's a pair of bench ends down here, but they're really buried. I can't see if they're broken yet, but they look pretty good. Mr Lovell has said not to move anything in this shed. Until we've spoken to him and he can say, yes, move it or don't, don't move it, in which case we'll then find out whether we can even have it or Res not. Respect what he says then and so. let's, let's leave it where it is. Let's go and ask him. That's going to be the easiest thing to do. OK. Yeah? Yeah. Just as we were about to do the deal, I spotted an old trough in the corner of the yard. That's good, isn't it? That's nice. Not really exciting thing, beautiful, but it's exactly the sort of thing my customers want and I could definitely easily sell it. Drew sells troughs like these as planters to garden designers. An example like this could fetch as much as £150. All the legs on it? Certainly seem to be. Yeah, I can feel those on both sides, whether they continue across or not. Wicked. Just a feeding trough or... Well, it's just a water trough, isn't it? It's great looking, though. He doesn't seem too interested in them, that. He's got the plough leaning on it. Mm. Let's ask him. Down here, the old cast iron bath full of water on the side there. It's in really nice yeah. condition, so that's great. Well, it's been in that store down the bottom for okay. since about 1970, I would think. Okay. We had one stolen already, and that was even bigger than the one I've got now. No, he wouldn't be for sale. Not for sale. No. Okay. We bathe our dogs in that. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, knew that was one was coming, you know, but had to ask. Behind the door, over there in the corner, there's a metal arch. It's painted black, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we've just done it. You know what it is? Around about 1860, I would think. Yeah. That was in the back garden. It's a nice We're thing. We're keeping it. OK. All yeah. right, there we go. All right, well, there you go. That's that, yeah. then, isn't it? <laughs> Won't take an offer on it. No, I should keep it. And he knows what it's worth. And he knows what it is. The lamp we found right in the back, that was in the skip? Yes, we put it there recently. OK. And that hadn't really been touched for probably 40 years. Once rewired, this industrial uplighter could fetch as much as £350. I'd give you £70 for the lamp. It's an industrial lamp, and oh, it's yes. come from a big old shed yeah. or something like that. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. It's not worth any more no. to me, but that's, that's about yeah. fair for that one. Yeah. Everybody has to live, and they have only live by buying and selling as a rule. Yeah, you can have that. Well, I think that's, that's fair. OK, so, A, breakthrough. The man who never sells anything has sold me something. It may only be something you put on a skip, but the ball is now rolling. In the big shed, yes. there's a pair of cast iron bench ends, white ones, lying flat on the floor. Right, let's go out and have a look, shall we? have a look at yeah, those, yeah? We'll have to try and pull them out. Yeah, all sorts of clutter in here. I think what we're going to have to do is pull one of them out, cos you could hardly see them. They're down there. <laughs> what you might call a human ferret. He is a little ferret, isn't he? Yeah, he's human sort of, ferret. He's sort of ferret-looking, isn't he? Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> Smells like a ferret. <sighs> What do you think? A nice heavy cast one, isn't he? Yeah. Are you OK with that? Yeah. I just can't remember where they came from, but um, they're unusual, they're interesting. That seems all right. Seems all right, OK. I got, I got him. 
Victorian cast iron is hugely popular. A pair of bench ends like these could fetch almost £400 when restored. What do you reckon, mid to late 19th century? I said late, you know, late. 1880 onwards, perhaps. Late stylistically, aren't they? And they would restore nicely. They would, wouldn't need much, would they, to sort those out? Well, you've got to get the right timber. You know, a decent pair. Would £75? I was thinking more. OK, well, how much would you like? Certainly 100. You try and meet somewhere in the middle to suit both parties. At least 100? Mm. Would 100 buy them? I think you'd have a good deal there. I think there's money to be made on those. OK. Right. Thank you very much. So, the man notorious for not selling has sold two things. Can Drew score a hat trick? I've kept them all these years in case somebody wants them. Yeah. yeah. They came out of a coach house about 1860, 1865. OK. Cast iron pillars are very popular with home restorers, and Drew has sold several similar pieces for £175 each. We've taken down many nice houses and used to restore others, and this is what restoration partly is about. Are these something you want to sell, or I'd are these to be, yes, be sold? Them. What would you want? There's three, but uh, One, what, what two, do you want for the three? three? I always pay about £150 for a pair of columns. Three's an odd number, and, you know, I may get left with the one. I would want 75 apiece. 75 apiece, 150. Kids, 200? No, I think 75 apiece is sure. fair money. All right, let's have that. We'll have those at All that. Right. That's fine. Drew is definitely on a roll and goes in for his fourth purchase of the day. And these are the chairs. Drew's clients in the restaurant and bar trade will snap up these mid-century stacking chairs, which can easily fetch up to £40 each. What would you want to give me for those? Five or a chair. Everything else, he'd sort of knock me up a bit every single time, you know, knock me up, knock me up, knock me up every single time. So I went in low. Yeah, I suppose you could have them, because I've got some others I've just got hold of, yeah. some upholstered ones. This is what it is in keeping these older things. It's if I don't, somebody else will restore some of them. Otherwise, they may well remain in storage, out of sight, till I'm gone to ground and... Uh, the auctioneers have a lovely day, enjoying themselves. Unfortunately, probably at my expense. Right, we're done? We're done. Finished? We're loaded. Good, I'm glad it took me ages to load that one. <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> see the stress. you had an interesting run. afternoon. I've really enjoyed and an it. an interesting morning yeah, somewhere else. Good. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we got your name and we were able to come over and see you. Thanks for that, Thank John. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, good one. Yeah, good bloke. No, did some uh, proper old-school salvage job, that yeah. was, wasn't it? That was good fun, that was yeah. proper work where we, where we like to do it. Finally, Drew can head home. His triumph over this infamous hoarder means he can now present the spoils of war to his awaiting team. We went to a chap who had, like, a home museum, weird collection of stuff in his yard. So we had a sift around there and we got all these chairs off him. But we found in a skip... <laughs> which is this. Nice, isn't it? Look at all these little faces. Look at, <laughs> Look at him. So did you have to pay for that? Yeah. Uh, there was a reason it was in a skip. No, it's great. I picked it out of a skip and I gave him £70. I'll put it back in that skip. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just 70 quid. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go back into your workshop. Go on. The dungeon. Go away now. Go on. Take it away. The uplighter should keep electrician Ollie busy for a while. And there's a couple of jobs for restorer Gavin, too. I did some proper old school scavenging about as well in his warehouse he had and found these right under piles of stuff. Yeah, bench ends. Pretty ones, though, aren't very they? Very pretty. Yeah. yeah. Very pretty. Yeah. Very good. Lovely, aren't they? They're in really nice condition. No cracks, no breaks, nothing missing. Quite like the colour. I don't want to mess Just with them too clean. much. Just a good clean. Lovely. Good find. That's a good find. Yeah. 
Thank you, sir. Yeah. More work for you, Gavin. <laughs> Got three of these. Mind your fingers. Fingers. There you go. Three of those. Do you know we're always asked for that sort of height? Perfect for a house. Well, they yeah. are. Some of them are broken like that, so you just got to replace them. We've got to wax them all and clean them all up and get all the excess rust off them. Quite nice when they're done. And believe it or not, these sell quite well, especially in the summertime. You don't have to do too much to these. Put a coat of clear wax over the, all the metal work. It's nice and clean. To the photography area. <sighs> Online sales manager Mark gets the pillars ready to be photographed and posted for sale. But his photo is missing a crucial ingredient. Drew's terrier, Enzo. Enzo is going to be in the shop for scale, because these are quite large pillars. Come on, come here. All right, sit. Stay, he's a good boy. And, as usual, it's not long before the new items begin to fly out of the door. When it comes to hoarders, well, you win some, you lose some. Um, it's been a good week. Uh, the Staddle Stones I bought from the tights, well, we've got a, a film producer in America who's interested in, in all of them. Those beautiful bench ends I got from John Digby Lovell, they needed a lot of work, took a lot of time, but now it's restored and sold. Chairs have gone off to be used in a fashion exhibition in Berlin. Fantastic. The most unusual sale of the week has been the push bike we bought from Ellis Manor. It's going to go to an artist and she's going to paint it green, put a big parrot on the side and use it to promote her art gallery. I can cycle it round Greenwich advertising the gallery when it's open or just chain it up outside and I'll make a basket for the front and the dog can ride around. Come on. Here you go. Oh. Maybe not now. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love it. On Salvage Hunters. Go on, get on, boys. This baronet gets all fired up. It's a real tank. Drew weighs up the options when offered a tank. 25 grand for a tank, 50 grand for a divorce. He gets taken for a ride not once, but twice. And the team is stumped by what Drew's brought home. What is it? It's an unexploded World War II bomb. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up the street. Yeah. Drew Pritchard is famous for his ability to find unique and quirky items. Often, the owners of these items are unique and quirky too. The best thing about my job is the people we meet, from aristocrats to uh, eccentrics. Um, their places are difficult to get inside, as sometimes inside their heads too, but you just never know what you're going to find when you get there. <laughs> Drew and Julian have been friends and on-off colleagues for 25 years, so each understands the salvage hunting potential of a visit to a stately home. Their first stop is five hours away in Somerset and an appointment with a rather colourful peer of the realm. Today we're trying to find Mournsall House, uh, we've had a call from a guy called Sir Ben Slade. And he rang me and he was just like, have you got cash? <laughs> have you got cash? Bring cash. Hot and stickies. Bring some green with you. I am Sir Benjamin Slade, some baronet of Mansell, and this is my home. I have many things for sale. Every in fact, everything is for sale. Anything you want to buy, we'll make you a price. Here we are, Mansell House. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now, that is a tree line driveway. That is. Wow. God, it's beautiful. 
Sir Ben's assistant, Michelle, is on hand for the tour. Nice to meet you. Hiya, Michelle. Hi there. Hiya. Hi, Julian. Hiya, Jules. How are you doing? Hello. Welcome to Maunsell House. Hi, this great. is the, one of the most important events that's after the Great Road through here in 878. <laughs> Chaucer was here as well. John of Gaunt and that dreadful woman, Queen Matilda. Sir Ben is a true original. I think what Britain's built on is the guys like Sir Ben. Our slades are fairly new around here. We've been stuck here since 1771. Just here to look through your sheds, to be yeah. honest with you, and try and buy some things. I am totally, absolutely motivated to get some money in right now, and I will sell anything. I hope he makes an offer for the whole damn place. About 25 million see me right. It's exactly what Drew's looking for. A stately home, an eccentric, impoverished aristocrat willing to sell. Let the hunting commence. This is our ballroom and dining room. The unfortunate thing about it is the floors need renewing because they're absolutely worn out, so I need some dosh off you today. I would like about 20,000 quid. Great, if you've got the stuff, I'll spend it. <sighs> Go for that. I want it in notes as well, because if I put it in the bank, they snatch it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's one of the reasons why we have absolutely no, no money. The last of it spent by Uncle Alfred, who was unknown as Alfred the Rake. He had 25 horses when he was master of the Avonvale Hounds, yeah. and that's where all the money went. Plus, he had six illegitimate children. Been going downhill ever since then. It happens. What's up for grabs in the house? Nothing or anything at all? Everything has its price. Everything. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. I'll show you one or two interesting things here. The mirror? Yeah. Beautiful, that mirror, isn't it? Mm, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, that's a bit special, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Lovely. I think that's a 300-year-old Florentine mirror. It must be worth a few bob. Yeah. What's it worth? Well, I think it's worth um, nearer 30, 20 to 30. Eccentric, yes, but Sir Ben is bang on the money with his estimate for this mirror. All right. Okay. I think everything in the house might be slightly too pricey for me. Yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah, well, maybe a little. Well, you we can do a, a finance plan, if you like. Yeah. So much <laughs> down, <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> Clearly, Drew needs to look for slightly less upmarket hunting grounds. So you're going to show us some sheds now, are you? Sheds? Yeah, yeah. Should we do a bit of yard now? And on the subject of hunting... Ben said, hang on a second, well, before we go outside, I just need to get my shotgun. I thought, oh, my God, I, you know, what have I done? I didn't pinch anything. Go on, boys. Keeping an eye on the cocked rifle, Drew and Julian follow into the outbuilding. Come on, boys! Get him! Where's that rat's got to? Hop, 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 hop! All clear! Any self respecting rat would have done a runner. Is it safe? I don't know if it's safe. Not ben. really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the light on, Michelle? Put the lights on. Sorry, <laughs> Okay, watch where you, you step, go guys. Past, it's dangerous. Sure. Oh! Dead rat. Dead rat. Nice. Okay. Right. Oh! Ed no! <laughs> I'll that give him a here. Drew's trained eye spots a diamond in the rough, an Edwardian fender designed to protect from the fire, but with a handy seat for warming a cold backside. The fender, club fender. A fully restored Edwardian fender recently sold at Christie's for £1,625. This one is worth around £580. That's something you'd part with? I don't know, you've got to hit me. What would you want for this pigeoning, poo-encrusted thing? It's a, worth a powerful amount of money. It is in disgusting condition, Ben. No, no. Yes, it, it's covered in poo. How much have you got? £150 for this pigeon poo rusting thing. £150? Yeah, look back. at the state of it. <laughs> what? It's stinking. What about a couple of hundred? 200 quid. What? 200 quid. Done. <laughs> Right, you've got the fun job. You've got to get this out I've of here. I've got to get it out of here. Oh, yeah. help. Don't worry, Jules. We've gone from £30,000 down to £200. That's much more my sort of level. So Ben's clearly now want to do some deals. I'm excited. Go get them, boys. Get them. Go on, get them, boys. Fetch them out. Sniff them out. And sniff out some money while you're about it as well. Molly, Molly, Molly. Come here. Come on. Oh, right, that's all right. I've got, I've got the creature. Right, there we are. It's now safe. Drew has found something unique, but not as unique as Sir Ben would have him believe. Where did this come from? <laughs> Came out of a Medici palace, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look at it, see if it's got any age to it. What is it? What would you call that? It's a, it's a, it's a fireplace. It's a is part it? of a chimney piece insert, yeah. 
Probably not from an Italian palace. But Drew suspects that this is a mid-19th century fireplace insert, extremely rare and worth around £1,500. What do you want for this one, Ben? Well, it's going to be hundreds. I don't want tier yeah. 50p. 350? Hmm. I'll have a think about that. Hey, could you go up a little bit on that? Just a frackle. Just a frackle. All right, well, look. 400 quid. Done. Done. Thank you. Lovely. So Drew's hunting has uncovered some unusual pieces. Sir Ben has been doing some hunting of his own, but it's a little more mundane in its results. I've been looking for some bloody egg cups. I've been looking everywhere for egg cups. Don't, don't lose them. Drew has met Sir Ben's type before and knows that, despite appearances, he needs to keep his wits about him when it comes to doing deals. This little table's quite nice. Just like the finish on it. Sort of like a fake bird's eye maple like one. It's pine. Something normally I wouldn't touch, but it's just very, very pretty, and the finish is good. With a bit of dusting and polishing, Drew believes this practical pine table can fetch close to £300. But once again, Sir Ben knows its value and starts the negotiations at a price that leave Drew with no profit. The colour is supposed to be worth quite a few hundred quid, isn't it? Isn't it? No, not really. No, it's really not. honest with you. It's got to be worth two. No, not to me. It's just a simple thing. It'd have to be. It'd have to be less than hundred quid. Nothing sells for under a hundred quid. You can't buy anything for <laughs> hundred quid. I'm trying to buy that for hundred. And these things are bloody gold dust. You, there it's won't be any. He's beating me down now. <laughs> I'm just giving in. <laughs> oh, I call it hundred. Hundred. <laughs> What, what about this one here, Ben, this, uh, this large hall bench you've got here? It came out of White's, I think, when they refurbished about 100 years ago. White's is a famous gentleman's club in London, dating from 1693. If true, this would add considerable value to the piece. Are all the legs there? Yeah. It's a, it's a genuine article, all right? Yeah, that's for sure. It needs a bit of um, upholstery, isn't it? Yeah, it needs, it needs a lot of work. The frame's good, though. Oh, the, well. the horse hair's original. Yeah. Drew knows that a fully refurbished 19th century club bench could support a £1,500 price tag. So where do you want to be? How much do you want me to buy for this for you? How much? Grand? Grand, no. No, nowhere near. I'm thinking sort of 400 quid. 400 quid? 400 quid. I couldn't get out of bed for 400 yeah, quid. Yeah, come on, you're already out of bed. <laughs> I'll have to think of it and see what else you spend. All right, OK. Yeah. But once again, he's dealing with a man who that knows the value of what he's selling. He decides to leave the bench for now. Oh, I haven't seen that for ages. Little nursing chair. A pair of chairs like these are rare and in their current state could bring around £380. Alex could probably sort that leg out, I suppose. They're fairly easy to get hold of these singles, but a pair's interesting. Mm. Give us a fair price. Then I might be more friendly on the bench. Mm. 200? Well, they're a pair, mate. That's 100 each. I've got, well, yeah, I've got to start somewhere. Each. Up a bit, up a freckle, up a freckle. Up a freckle. 250 for the pair. Not up a freckle. It's only 100 pounds. You can't get no, a... That's, you that's cannot gonna, buy a... That's going to cost me 100 quid to sort that leg out, for sure. That's just woodworm holding hands holding that together. Look. <laughs> yeah. Come on, I don't think so. What? Go on, two, 275 for the pair. Call it three. I can't pay three. No? No. Oh. oh, all right then, 275 even. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Anything else you could find? Maybe. One of these. Well, there's a pair of these. Yeah, you got a pair? Yeah, there's a pair. That makes them valuable. Yeah, look. Legs are different. The other way, Jules. No. No, they're different. The one closest to me was oak, really well made. Very attractive, and no metal supports on it. What would I want to pay for that? 50. Is that all? Yeah. Sure? Sure. Are oh, you absolutely positive? Absolutely positive. But what about the other one? The other one's no good. It's yeah. pine, and it's been messed about with, and it's a different size, and it's nowhere near as good as that one. Really? So, no, that's just a... That one. It looks the same, but it really, really isn't. They're Could chalk and cheese. a little bit? Maybe a tenner. That would be it. Yeah. 60 quid? 60 quid. What about this, Ben? 
saddle horse. Well, it's old, it's genuine. Yeah, it is. Sensing he's winning the battle, Drew quickly makes an offer on another Regency piece. Got the tack hangers on both ends. The saddle horse is great. It's in the condition I wish everything I found was in. Original paint in beautiful condition, great colour, size, everything going for it. Used to store and display saddles, this piece could easily fetch almost £500. Where do you want to start? Three or 400 <laughs> Um. Yeah, three I'm going to do. Three? Three I'll do. Sure? Yeah. Are sure. you positive? Positive. You didn't say four? No. Nope. Oh. All right, then. Lovely. <laughs> it seems like Drew has the upper hand, so he returns to the piece he really wants, the bench. What do you reckon, Ben, on this bench, then? Can we do... Can we do that? Four and a half? You said, did you say 475? Did I go up to 475? More no. than likely. Didn't I? No, you didn't. Didn't I? No, you didn't. Oh, OK. But you would do, wouldn't you? For a deal. Done. You did now. Lovely. Right, we'll have that. <laughs> done. I think we're done in here, then. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to miss that stuff. Some of it has been around here for <laughs> centuries. <laughs> Anyway, look, Ben, I really enjoyed it today. Okay, thanks, thanks. very much. Thanks for coming. I, I've got Night, to come guys. up to Wales now and give you all the bloody money back. Come, come and on. see us. Come and yeah. see us. I've got lots of nice things you'd love for your house. Yeah. After making a great haul from a grand house and making a new friend, Drew and Julian arrive back at the base to unload and unveil the valuables. Waiting for them are Drew's wife, Rebecca, sales manager, Mark, and restorer, Gavin. This is one thing which should just... Saddle, Saddle horse. horse. Lovely bridle hooks on the end. They make They're it, don't really, they? Really, uh, I love the colour. Perfect. Mm. What do you need to do to it? Nothing really. This, which is just really cute, it's meant to look like bird's eye maple. Very naively oh. done. You're going to keep it like that, or? Yeah. Don't touch it. I like it. I think it's got a charm of its own. That's just quite sweet, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. That's a big fender. Big club fender, caked in pigeon poo. So Gavin, what? That needs. No, oh. no, no. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that, guano. <laughs> That's guano. a lot of poo. Mm. You've probably got two days in this, Kevin. Just on the poo. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do with these is just going to trade them straight out. Yeah. Hall bench. Upholstered hall bench. Very nice. 1870s. That's stunning. It's great, Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely stunning. You like it? Yep. That's my favourite so far. Classic. Absolutely. And then the best bit. Look at wow. this. Wow. 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 How that's amazing. Look at that isn't it incredible? That's fantastic. That's Jeez. Unbelievable. That's the best thing you've bought back so far. And after a bit of detective work, the good news is that Drew's hunch about the fireplace was correct. On the rarity stake, it's right up there. There's probably not another one for sale in this country. I know what most guys have got for sale. I can't see one, haven't seen one. It's just beautiful. God, it's good. The next day, Drew and Julian are heading off on a five-hour drive to Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Today's destination is Julian's opportunity to combine business with pleasure. This is your call, this one. You've told me there's a guy down here who's got a tank and you want to go and look at it. Look, no, you know, don't be scared of your sexuality. <laughs> Since I was 18, I've been interested in military vehicles. It's just brilliant. The noise, the smell, it's totally different to a normal car. We'll go and see this chap, but it's purely on the off chance he's going to have something of interest, right? Yeah. Haven't got all day to hang around with the guy and talk oh. about tanks, even though you want to, and that's the yes. only real reason we're going. Oh, all right, so you don't have to humour me. Yeah, yeah. Me. This is to humour you. You've got half an hour with this chap, all right? Hopefully there'll be some stuff for Drew to buy, uh, which will make his day. Um, I'm sort of dragging him along. But, as I say, anything military, my sort of day out, and hopefully Drew will get a few bits and pieces while we're there. And if he says we're going, can we go in the tank, we're going to say no. Why? Because we can't, we're busy business, we can't go driving around in tanks. So this is it, yeah? Here we go. And there's a tank. I told you it was a tank. Are you Sean? I am, yes. Hi, uh, we've um, it's a friend of mine called Julian. I'm called Drew. Hi, Hi, Hi Drew. How are you doing? Hi, Julian. Yeah. We've, um, okay. We're in the area and we've, we've, um, we've heard you've got tanks. I thought any guy who collects tanks must yeah. have something else of interest, so 
Yeah. We're in the area, we thought we'd yeah. call in. Yeah, why not? We're looking for sort of odd and unusual items. Engines? No. No? Not engines. No. An ejector seat over the back. Oh, I've got... Is it um, an alloy sort of frame? Um, yeah, yeah, alloy frame. Yeah. yeah. At the mention of the ejector seat, Drew suddenly become screen, more interested. Like... They're popular as video gaming seats or with interior designers. The uh, seat itself is a Martin Baker ejector seat. Came out of a jet, um, a Hunter Hawker. There's something about it which is unique. Have you got padded seats or anything for no, it? No, I haven't. That's just not, it, is it? So it's just one, a yeah. shell. Yes. It's just a shell of a yes, seat on the frame. Yeah. Examples like this can sell for around £450. So you pull that. Well, nothing, nothing's going to happen, obviously, if I pull No, 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 not at all. No. Is it gone off? Has it sort of been released? Is it full of pressure or something? Um, how does, well, how they're they, all, they're how all, they work? They're all taken away anyway. Um, all that's yeah, gone, is it, yeah, off the, it? Yeah, the explosive uh, ram. It's like a sort of hot rod, bucket, racing car, spaceship type of fighter yeah. aircraft thing, yeah. isn't it? The other one I have is in um, actually a lot better. You've got another condition. one? Yes. Two ejector seats? Yes. Just in case. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> his, his and hers, you see? <laughs> in the convertible. Oh, right, nice. Yeah. yeah. As, as if she gives you all this, you know. Yeah. So, Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah, you just really talk too much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do that. So, not married? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hence, the ejector seat is one of the most expensive parts of the aircraft. Is it? Yes. So how much would something like this cost, then, to...? Thousands. Thousands. Possibly hundreds of hundreds, thousands? Possibly hundreds yeah, yeah. of thousands, yeah. yeah. What can we do on this, as it stands? I couldn't honestly tell you. Um, really? Um... Ballpark. Ballpark. Just imagine about three, four hundred pound, I'd think. There's not something what you see every day. No. No. <laughs> don't don't, don't that's come that's across true. ejector seats... You haven't. ...often. No. No, no, not common. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see it at 300 quid. It's the sort of thing I like. Yeah. I've never bought an ejector seat before, but, um... Yeah. Have I? No. No. I think I'd pay 150 quid for it. I wouldn't pay any more. Do you want to think about it? Yeah, of course. Because I know he really wants to go and look at your tank. Which one? Which one? I can say that. Sabre. The Sabre. It's a real tank. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a that's real, a, proper... a, a light tank, they call them. Do you drive it on the road? Yes. Road legal, normal road tax, insurance is cheap. To buy something like this is around about 25,000. Drew may not be in the market for a tank, but military enthusiast Julian has definitely given it some thought. Can't afford one, but I'd have one. Can't be honest. When you actually fire one of these up and then go for a spin, um, I'm, the adrenaline is just un unreal. So does it go? It does. Yes, it does. Would you like uh, a ride out? And if he says we're going, can we go in the tank? We're going to say no. Oh, never thought you'd ask. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to have a crash, are we? No, not at all. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I got a fire up. Oh, cool. Don't worry about the miles per gallon when you've got something like this. You really don't. You're right. Right, Chuck. Everybody, out of your houses. <laughs> Hello, dear. I've, um, I've been out today. I've bought something rather unusual. <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> it's just so much fun. 25 grand for a tank, 50 grand for a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> now the ice is well and truly broken with Sean, Drew takes his opportunity to resume negotiations over the ejector seat. Is the ejector seat any chance of a buy on that, or yes or no? Yes, you could. Yeah? Yes. £150? <laughs> go on, then. Yeah, yeah, great. Lovely, we'll take yeah. that as well. Got to go in a tank and an ejector seat. There you go, but nobody else has done that today. How are we going to explain this one? <laughs> <laughs> It's up there on the list of strange things I've bought. It's, it's getting up there. It's top ten. I think we should see if there's any mice in the top of this. What it's is a it? Boyd's nest. That's not, that's not. No, it's a robin's nest. Oh, is it? Yes. He's a brave man. Ah! <laughs> Over to you. Thanks yeah, for that. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> see you. <laughs> oh. 
nice bloke. He's just you got love unusual him, taste. Julian and Sean definitely bonded over their love of all things military, and Drew can't resist teasing. You can stand around it all day in fatigues, looking at each other's tanks. <laughs> Back home, and the team are used to unusual things coming out of the back of the van. But even they are floored by this one. We went to a guy who uh, collects tanks and military vehicles. And uh, we drove around his village at a tank. <laughs> Terrifying. I just laughed for 10 minutes solid. It was brilliant. And I was sat up in the top, and I had the helmet on with the big ear things and my shades. It was brilliant. <laughs> but we bought this off him, which is really cool. It's an ejector seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's all alloy. And it's just got such a fantastic look to it. It's got the thing out the top here where the, where the parachute would come out. That's where the explosive would have gone. It could make it work. No, it won't work. <laughs> Sincerely hope it doesn't work. No, you can't make it work, because you'd be shooting people 150 <laughs> foot into the air. That's right a idea. Oh, idea. Where's Mark? Yours will definitely I'll do it. You were the, yeah, you were top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not sure whether to strip it and polish it, because no, the... Uh, no. But it might take Gav a week to strip and polish it. That's the problem. You'd um, love that. Uh, so you don't know how much restoration you're going to do? No. The look on Gavin's face when I said I wanted to strip and polish it was like, oh, my God. But it depends. If, he's, if, he, if he gets on my nerves, I'm going to make get it polished. <laughs> it's nice to see Drew back. Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? While Drew decides what to do with his ejector seat, the decision to restore the couch from Mansell House has already been made. Usually, we would sell furniture on straight away, but that, I think, is worth having it professionally reupholstered. Very saleable. Upholsterer Craig Hughes is based a few miles away in Colwyn Bay. He's been restoring furniture for Drew for many years and knows exactly what he likes. When we strip this out, you've got 100 years of muck and dirt in it. And it all blows around, it goes up your nose, it's absolutely filthy. It's cost around £400 to restore, but Rebecca's instincts have paid off. Perfect. The worn-out couch is now a stunning piece of furniture that Drew knows will sell easily. We've done it in just a natural calico, so this can easily be taken off and reupholstered in, you know, somebody's choice of fabric over the top of this, and now it's ready for sale. It's almost a blank canvas now. The last visit was a rare treat for Julian, but today it's definitely one for Drew. It's a 300-mile trip to Aylesbury, where he's meeting a true car enthusiast with some genuine pieces of automotive history. We've been called down to a farm by a guy called Neil Tuckett, who runs Tuckett Brothers, which is a Model T Ford restoration and repair and sales specialist. This guy's like the leading authority in the country. I keep a few Model Ts back for myself, they're my own personal ones, but otherwise everything else is here, it's for sale. And uh, I'm always glad to see another one go out of the yard because at the end of the day, it's another Model T that's going on the road. But restorer Gavin, who's accompanying Drew today, is not so thrilled. Sick of bloody Model T Fords. I try and paint some interest in Model T Fords. I'm not as much of a car nut as Drew, so um, I'd rather be back at the shop. I don't have a problem. You're the one with the car aversion. Of, you need car aversion therapy. Oh, I can hear the whiz of a grinder. That's got to be the place. Oh, I like the look of this place already. Oh, Drew, hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. Well, where would you like to start? Just... Do you want to have a look round? Please, yeah, can yeah, I just, fine. just have a look at through everything, please? You can, no problem. I love that one over there. I've never had a, a Model T Ford. I've had hundreds of classic cars, That's literally. That's a chance. That's I've a never... chance. <laughs> Neil shows Drew an original, unrestored Model T Ford, but it's not for sale. But this, this is the car I'd take home. Okay. I just love this one. Pretty, this well, is... pretty original car, even the upholstery is pretty original. And I've been offered quite a lot of money for this car, but that's my car and I enjoy it. Look at him go. Yay. Gavin has been looking elsewhere and thinks he's found something for Drew to buy that doesn't have four wheels. Drew? Yes, mate. There's green lamps up here. Oh, yeah, there's some green enamel lamps up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I have a dig up there, Gav, see if you can get them? Watch yourself, mate. Yeah. All the, you know, the modern aluminium ones. Yeah. Yeah, Coolicon. Yeah. Sucked together. Popular in the trendy restaurant and lounge market, Coolicon shades can fetch as much as £45 each. Excellent. Thanks. 
excellent. How much are these, Neil, each? Yeah, Good, yeah. bad and ugly, I'll take what, a lot. What do you think they're worth? Um, well, I, I want to buy them for as little as I possibly can. So, what, how much a pop? Oh, they're worth a five rupees, aren't they? Five rupees is fine, I was going to say that too. True meaning of ferreting. You've got gap in one side and drew the other. Arsenic poison. What I like about it is the poison, it's not just painted on, that's actually embossed in, uh, into the front surface of it. So it's always, yes, yeah, 50s, and it's always been for poison. And it's a cool colour, you know, it's just a nice little thing. And uh, I like the fact that it's non returnable. <laughs> Original 1950s canisters like these are popular with collectors, designers, and film and TV prop agencies. This one could go for around £65. Poison tub, how much is he? Are you going to draw for on that? What are we going to pay for that? 20 quid? That's going to be the max. I can't go any more for that one. I'd actually got a 25 in mind on that one, actually, because I thought that was a decent decent tub. Go for 25, because you've got off lightly on these. OK, we'll have a deal at £25. That's fine. Yeah, we'll have those. I did, I did get off lightly on the lights. We're going to find another shed, then. Yeah, let's we? go and find some more stuff. Right, Drew. So here, Drew, we've got some real agricultural salvage, which... Well, we'll have a look. May or may not excite you. Maybe. You never know. Quite like these big old troughs. Yeah, some of the old riveted ones are quite pleasant, yeah, now, aren't they? Yeah, I quite like those. You know, they're quite interesting. Just pull that one down, Gavin, and just have a quick look at it. Are these, are these for sale? Are you using these? No, I'd sell them. You know, they're basically gardening ornaments, aren't they? Yeah. That's what well, I, what I like about them is the rivets yeah. and the, just the sheer size yeah. of them. They've definitely got something about them. Cleaned and converted into garden planters, these early 20th century feed troughs could easily sell for £200 each. What, what, what sort of money are we looking at for these? Oh, give me an offer on those. Probably more than scrap value. They're worth more than scrap value. So what, what do you reckon? £50? Yeah, I'd take £50 each for those. Yeah. OK. That's a good one, yeah, I like this one. They'll end up as a nice pair of planters. Yeah. A few more agricultural bits in here. Oh, goody. We've been tidied up. Well, it's all disappeared over the years. Yeah. Been scrapped, but a few things here I don't like throwing away. Sorry, Neil, I couldn't help myself going in here, Neil. What have you found in there? That beautiful speedster. That's the golden Ford. Do you want to look in there while you... Yes, please. I've read about this car. All oh, right. This is a car, Neil, that, on a personal level, I really, really want to see. Wait till you see this. 1911 Model T Ford. Wow. If you don't like cars, after seeing this, you're a soulless, heartless person. Reputedly, it's the only brass-bodied car in the world. As you can see, it's in its winter condition, all greased up. Yeah, you can feel the grease yeah, over yes. everything. Yeah, yeah. The Golden Ford is actually made of solid brass and is unique. Neil has owned it since the 1980s. It's a real piece of automotive history, as it won the 1912 All Ford Race at Brooklands, the historic racetrack based in Weybridge in Surrey, now the site of an auto museum and venue for vintage car racing. Whoa, look at that. So basically a Model T engine, overhead valve conversion. I bought it out of a cellar up in Shropshire. An old boy had got Model T's and bits and pieces, and he said to me, well, there's something in the cellar. I know it's interesting, but I don't know what it is. This is Neil's pride and joy, and is difficult to value, but he's already turned down many offers for this car. Almost time to leave, but not before an automotive trip back in time. Do you want to learn uh, how to drive a Model T? I'd love to. Who's going in the back? I'll go in the back. Thank there you. you go. <laughs> That's the advanced retard. Yep. Set that up. Okay. Throttle down. Yep. Handbrake back. Yep. Switch on. That's yep. a coil buzzing. Yep. And then we have to wind it. Choke. <laughs> okay. Okay. Handbrake halfway forward. That's the first key thing. Right, when you're ready, handbrake forward. Reduce your revs and take the foot off. How's it feel? Fantastic. <laughs> 
The first production Model T Ford was built in 1908 and sold for $825, the equivalent to $15,000 or around £9,000 today. It was the first car within the reach of America's middle class due to the innovation of the assembly line and interchangeable parts. At the height of its success, it took as little as 93 minutes to build a complete car. We're done. That's it. You're a Model T driver. That's fantastic. I've enjoyed that so Gavin's much. Gavin's bright and stiff. Look at him. <laughs> He's gone bright red. It must be the sunshine. <laughs> Gavin has been huffing and puffing and whinging all day about not wanting to go and play with the Model T Fords, but I knew the second we got him behind the wheel, he'd just love it. Really what we've got is... Thank you very much. That's all right. That's most enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs> I want one now. Yeah. Quite an experience. Never driven one of those before. So uh, a really good end to a quite a boring day. What's your poison? There you go. I've got a little present for you anyway. Oh. You know you hit that gatepost on the way round. <laughs> well, there's the hubcap. You can keep it as a souvenir. <laughs> That's brilliant. It's an English one. Yeah, was it? I haven't got USA on, you see. English ones. That won't be sold. That's brilliant. Thanks a lot, Neil. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. I think today was... It was more fun than work, wasn't it? After a small but successful haul, and with Gavin finally converted into a classic car lover, Drew and Gavin head back to the shop to drop off the items. Big pile of those. Mark, Loads. little ones. That's Lovely, yeah. just little what ones we need. Difficult to sell. No. Thank you, Mr. Wally. It, then I don't want to do too much to them. It'll take all the charm of them away if we do too much work. Yeah, I don't want them to look new. I want them to look they're 100 years old. I don't want them to look pristine. They are good, old-fashioned, heavy engineering trough. That's its charm. Why ruin it? Right, sit there. That's it. The items are prepared and photographed to go online, with a little help from Enzo. Good lad. Keep him, keep him with the jerky. Think keep the jerky. Safe. He's such a poser. So He's such a poser. Good lad. Come on in. Out. Out you come. Good lad. Oh, come on. Oi. Can you have a piece now? I haven't got any. I'll put it back in the jar. Oh, that's <laughs> rotten. Go and give him a piece. Come on, mate. Slightly. Which one do you reckon? He's starting to pose now. He is, isn't he? Love me. Love me. Love the camera. Oh, look at his face. Hey? Enzo is the... He is my most valued employee. He's the one I get the least grief from. There's only one thing that gets Drew more excited than a trip to a car enthusiast, and that's a trip to a scrapyard. Today, Drew and Julian are on their way to a legendary yard in Bista. But first, they need to catch up on the pressing issues of the day. So what was it? Muesli for breakfast again? No, I had cornflakes, oh. yoghurt, oh. apple juice and a cup of tea. Because oh. yesterday, I went for a curry and loads of lager. <laughs> so after now, my yin and my yang need to be... Uh, I need to ying my yank, basically, and sort okay. myself out. We're going to a guy called Tony. He's got a scrapyard called Elsie Hughes in Bicester. My name's Tony, and um, I came up here when, we was, uh, when I was a boy, of about four years old. The main fund producer would be buying and selling scrap. That's what we do. We process it a little bit, grade it, and then it gets uh, sent out on lorries. I don't want to do scrap. I need to find something beautiful amongst the scrap. I think this looks like the place. Office? Yeah. Okay. Tony. Hiya. Hello. Hi. Um, Drew. Hello, how are you doing? Hi. This is Jules. Hi. Hiya. Really... How are you doing? Hi. I see you do a bit of reclaiming. That's or... right, yeah, we do that. How big's the site? It's about 10 acres, roughly. Drew is living proof that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And even after 20 years, he's excited about what lies ahead in an undiscovered scrapyard. These are brilliant, these big crucibles, aren't they? they where, are, do you, yeah. where do you get these yeah. from? We often do factory clearances. These must have been part of them. House clearing stuff, skips, all manner of things. You just don't know what you're going to find. 
in the corner, I can see three large cast iron floor grills. These look like Victorian church floor grills from the last part of the 19th century. They're not new, that's for sure. And they've got this quatrefoil detail on here, which is like four petals like that, usually seen in church windows. Victorian cast iron grates like these are easy for Drew to sell and can fetch around £60 each. Can we pull these out, Jules? Just see what's... Yep. Make sure they're all, all all right. Yeah, that's all right. They're OK, aren't they? What do you reckon? The, the other two OK? Yeah, the two. I think they'll be fine. Yeah. They look all right. How much for these grills, Tony? Uh, 20 quid a piece, something like that. Then it's an item with, you know, interesting shape, and so, you know, that's how I price things. 60 quid for three? Yeah, OK, Great. that's fine, yeah, 60 pound, yeah. Well, straight away, I've managed to find, a, you know, a period piece of architectural salvage. Perfect. So there's more in here? Yep. Go into the shed and there's a, another strange mix again, wheelchairs and kettles and all manner of thing in, in there. But on the floor, there was these three or four pieces of timber, a couple of them carved, and the carving just looked a bit different. Are they oak, are they? Yeah. Is it light oak, is it? Really Literally. They're just very dry. These lines here, that's not machine done. It's just, it's off, it's clearly hand done. Yeah. Carved pieces of architectural salvage like these are popular in restoration or just as decorative items. Drew could probably get around £200 for this unusual pair. You just found them in a skip? They've been hanging around for quite a few years. Mm. It just seemed a shame just to burn them, you know? Yeah, they're too good for that, aren't they? Up a bit, up a bit, mate. Next one. again. It's that way round. Yep. Oh, wow. Lots of uses these could have had. They could have been from the gable of a, of a building. But again, very unusual. What would you want for these, Tony? I thought you said £50 for the lot. What do you reckon? They're good and they're interesting, but there's not an awful lot you can do with them, so they're. No. Mm, uh, gonna... If he thinks they got potential. Yeah, well, I'll give you on that. That's fine. OK. I'll take it's... a chance on 50 quid. Yep, OK. Cool. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, that's all right. Nice no worries. One. I think I've possibly got an absolute bargain, or I've just bought some nice bits of timber for £50. I need to sort of sit down and go over them and just live with them for a little bit and get my head around what they are. Underneath a pile of stuff in the distance, I saw just the end of a cast iron column coming out, so you can see the square plate with the four holes in it, and then the, the top of the cast iron column. They're some are Victorian, aren't they? Out of a... Yeah, they're Victorian, yeah. They're only very, very short, uh, yeah. so they're probably on a brick stanchion. But I'm hoping there's a couple of pairs. They're slightly narrow towards the top. You've got two pairs there, you know. I hope so, but one's broken. They always yeah. crack around the base here. Just checking they're the same height. Don't want to buy mismatched stuff. They're period and they're attractive and they're useful. They're not the most exciting thing that we buy, but we always no. buy these no. regularly, because whenever we get them, they sell straight away. Always popular in the home restoration market, a pair of these columns can bring in almost £300. These two taper from the base to the top, which is very attractive. Yeah. It's a shame, bloody shame that's broken. It is. What do you want for them? £50 each? No, too much. Too much? Yeah. What would you want to pay them? Um, I'd probably be, because of the break, I'd probably be trying to get away with 100 for the four. No, but I don't think you could get, I don't think they'll, we'll let them go for that. I think they're worth a little bit more. Do you want to meet in the middle again? So I said 50 a piece, which was, which was 200. You wanted to say 100. 100. So we say 150 then for uh, the four? I'm giving myself a bit of a headache because when I come to sell it, I've got to explain to people, say, well, yeah, they are a bit broken, but they're still usable. Yeah, go on, we'll take them. So 150 yeah. for the four? 150 for the four. OK, okay that's great. OK. Wherever he goes, Drew is always looking for the one piece that will make the trip worth his while. This is where I've spent most of my childhood roaming around places like this. Oh, yeah. And he's just spotted it. I like that pot. Do you? Yeah. It's got everything I'm looking for. And it seems obvious to me. It sort of jumps out at me. It's like as if it's got a flag waving at me. It's like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. It's definitely got a bit of... Um, it's, it's a, a very visual piece, isn't it, if you had that in your it garden? Is. Yeah, I think so. That's what I'm looking at it for. Cast-iron cauldrons like these are coveted as garden planters and often command around £1,000 each. What do you want for it? Ah, oh, very good question. Mm, 400 Four. Yeah. That's too much for you? Yeah. What would you want to pay, then? Um, when I saw it, I came with a figure in my head straight away, which is what I'd be happy to pay, which was yeah. £200. £200. Yeah. 
I know that someone will come and they'll look at this and they might pay more. Maybe. Well, that's you know, the chance. It depends I'm... on the customer. That's the chance I'm going to take with it. Tell you what, look, can we tip it out? Can we tip it over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heavy. Oh. Okay. It's just starting to go on the seam there, isn't it? I'll have to tidy that up. Do you want to meet halfway then? Tell you what, 375 then. 350? Yeah, 350 would be okay. Yeah, that's yep. okay. Lovely. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Fab. Right, there you go, Jules. You've got to get that on the van. Ah, oh, just drag it around there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want the normal stuff. I want the strange stuff. For me, it holds the most interest, and certainly that's got it all. One, two. <laughs> all right, watch yourself. Why is all the best stuff always heavy? There you go. Cheers, Tony. Thank you, mate. There you go. Where do you want to put them? OK, we'll do that. I came to a scrapyard and bought some scrap. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we okay. Tony, right. thank you, mate. What have you bought today? Quarter of a ton pot. <laughs> yeah, big pot. Massive big pot. pot. The van is full, but it's the reaction of the team back home that really matters to Drew. <laughs> what is it? It's an unexploded World War II bomb. No, no, it's a great big... It's, it's a, a big... big uh... down. It's a fantastic shape. And what are your plans with it? I want to put it in the middle of the shop. It's not as bad as it looks. It looks like it weighs a ton. One, two... <laughs> Gently. Right. OK. When you see it stood up, it looks a million dollars. See the rivets on both, both sides. Gav, just take this off. Stiff brush, take that off. Anything loose out of the inside. And while we've got it here, drill a hole in it. In fact, drill two holes in it, please. Just for Stay drainage. Up. OK, we've got loads more to unload. There you go, they came from the same place. Okay. Yeah? Seems to be collecting these at the moment. We've got God knows how many of them. The cast columns, very interesting to see two pairs. Um, they can be mounted on big stone blocks, make a lovely veranda. They're nice, aren't they? Yep. Decent size, no breaks, no cracks. There's only three, though, which is a bit disappointing. But not all purchases are met with enthusiasm from the team. And there's a pair. Right, they're both pretty badly damaged. Do you know what I think we're going to make out of them? Console tables. They're against a wall. You know, you put them against the wall there. Get rid of that. Do you like them? Well, you're going to have to spend quite a bit and do something with them. Yeah, I think everybody was like, oh, uh, why have you bought those? Maybe I sort of see something in them that nobody else does. Maybe, I don't know. But they're certainly different. Up, that way. Oh, no. Try that. No. Yeah, oh, that's, that's it. Can't see it selling today. Who knows? But I think it'll probably take some time. It's going to have to be a garden designer or somebody who really understands and knows the best use for something like that. What you don't want to do is take too much off of it, but leave enough on so that it looks aged. After a quick clean and a few snaps, the items are online and ready for sale, less than 24 hours after they were picked up at the scrapyard. These are great. At the end of the week, a new friend takes up Drew's invitation to drop by the shop. Although Sir Ben seemed desperate for cash just recently, he's now looking to wheel and deal, and Drew hopes he has just the item for him. Sir Ben. Hello. How are you doing? Good boy. Good to see you. Michelle. Hiya. Hi, Hiya. how are you? Sometimes the people I buy from become customers. In fact, it's quite common. Um, I knew if I could get Sir Ben down into the shop, he definitely could be interested in that big pot. It's close to the door because we didn't want to move it too far. What do you think? It's bigger than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. It's probably heavier than I thought it was. Yep. Uh, but you're getting more for your money. So what do you reckon? So I'm asking 900 quid. I'm asking a bit more, but to you, it's 900 to start off. Well, there's a lot of diesel. It's a lot of diesel, yeah. So, should we say five? No, can't do five. What can you do? Best um, price. 700 quid, and that's 
it. That is it. We're not doing any more. <laughs> the wad comes out. No. <laughs> 700. Thank you. There you go. Once again, the eccentric aristocrat exterior belies a shrewd businessman. Sir Ben has managed to get the pot for £200 less than the ticketed price, but Drew's happy with the deal. Seeing Sir Ben and Michelle was great. It was really nice to have them in the shop. Taking those things from one place, from out of context, something completely odd, and selling it to a new grand house in a wonderful setting like that, it's what I do, and it's what I have the most fun doing. Always a pleasure to meet you, and I'll see you next week. Michelle, Thank good you. to see you again. And you. Drive on, driver. From the couch, from Sir Ben's, right through to the columns, to the ejector seats, to, to the lamps, to all these other little things we buy. And they do have a new life, and that's what the most important thing is, for to make these things do something else and look good again. And we made a few quid too. On salvage hunters, some curious collectors. Every time they build a new car, a panda dies. A toff with a tall tail. Have you got a ghost? Floor creaked. Did you hear it? And could Drew be losing his salvage hunter mojo? Somebody will want them. Just, just not me, I'm afraid. Not for sale? Uh, not for sale. Not for no. sale. Been a pleasure. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems which then find new homes in houses, good, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah! In over 20 years of salvage hunting, <laughs> Drew Pritchard has learned that when one door closes, another one opens. A last-minute cancellation has left him stranded in Somerset with sidekick Julian. Rather than waste the trip, Julian has found a nearby collector who runs a museum dedicated to Bakelite. It's very difficult for me to describe how disinterested in Bakelite I am. It's not desperately hard on the top of my list, but it's nearby. Might look okay. something. You know, he wants to go, we'll go. It's a day out for him. Collectors are an unpredictable lot. Some have a wealth of interesting things they're willing to sell, but others just want to show off their collections and hang on to it all. My name is uh, Patrick Cook, and I have been owning the Bakelite Museum for about 30 years. We've got coffins and plastic bikes and all sorts of extraordinary objects that you never guessed were made in plastic. There it is, to the Bakelite Museum. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh, yeah. Ooh, Bakelite, I love it. But it's always worth taking a chance, and already things are looking up. Oh, they've got a little dog. Oh, well, oh it's worth coming, coming the dog, for the little dog. Look at his little face. Hello. Hi, Patrick. Hello there. Hi, Drew. How nice are you doing? To meet you. Hi, Julian. Um, we believe you've got a Bakelite museum tucked away in here somewhere. Uh, tucked, absolutely, yes, in the deeper depths of Somerset. And he really wants to come and see it. So if we can learn sure, something. Sure. Come on in, yes. I have a little uh, tour around the Bakelite museum. Wow. I love this toy here. That's the Sunbeam Landspeed record car. Absolutely, and that is more than a toy, really. It's, 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 to me, it's like an early executive toy. I, keep ta I, know everybody, I just walk around tapping everything. Is that what everybody does when they come uh, here? Yes, uh, it, everything's so tactile, you want to touch it. That is one of the largest pieces of cast phenolic, which is actually a very pure resin. You're able to achieve astonishing colours. OK. This is what all lazy bachelors should want. It's about 1930s, but they made them for many, many years. And uh, it's called the Tie Master, and it vomits out the tie <laughs> at some rate, fully pressed and ready to go off to work. <laughs> that was a strange thing. Despite his reservations, Drew sees something he wants amongst the exhibits. That's fantastic. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, I know. And it's full of hidden secrets. Look at that. I love that. Antique medical teaching tools are popular with specialist collectors. Something like this could fetch upwards of £200 at auction. So is that something, I mean, can I, would you sell this? You can buy things elsewhere, possibly, but not in the museum.
with the objects in the museum. I get a lot of collectors and uh, either they stay in the museum for a long time and they get um, absolutely intrigued. I would charge them bed and breakfast if I try and prize them out of the museum. This is Thank remarkably you. gruesome. Yeah, shall I open my mouth now? Yeah, Jules. No, <laughs> for once, <laughs> definitely not. Look, it's belt, is it belt driven? That would be driven by a string all the way through. So that's never going to get up to a really good fast lick, is it? So that's going to really hurt. Other collectors really can't cope. They're out in ten minutes uh, because there's a sort of competitive, jealous element. I think these are just caps. I think these are ready-made caps and you just stick them on. Because quite a few things in here are quite fancy. Well, I specialise in disappointing people. <laughs> <laughs> the Bakelite is off-limits, but Drew soon finds there's more to Patrick than just old plastic. He mentioned he's got a load of gear in his sheds and that he used to be an architectural antique dealer 40 oh, years ago. Oh, Suddenly, I'm incredibly interested. So, is there other things in here for sale? Uh, some are, yes. Some are. All right, OK. Possibly. Oh, this is good. What about, what about this, Patrick? Can this be sold? This British design classic dates back to the 1930s and carries the manufacturer's mark of Herbert Terry. Fully restored, this one could sell for £180. Do you want me to give you a price? £100. £100. I can't pay you £100. Can I give you a bid on it? Just to condition it's in. A little minor bid. A little minor bid. I'm going to go knock a fair wedge off, to be honest. I was going to say £60 in this condition. Had it too long ready for burnishing myself. I was going to go into the studio. I'll do a gesture. Gestures, you know, £10. Pounds £10 pounds off. off. 90 quid. Yeah, 90 pounds. All right, let's get the ball rolling. £90. Pounds. Deal? Yeah, that's done. OK, great, we'll have that. Fab. There's lots of other things in here, Patrick, I can see straight away. These um, staircase balustrade sections here, these are the ones that would have been on the balcony, balconette panels. Clearly influenced by the late 19th century Glasgow school, Drew knows he can sell balustrades like these for around £40 each. 14 complete and all the rest are broken. What, what would you want to for, for one? That's just price them as a single, single unit. Fifty pounds each. They went for. I can't. I can't get anywhere near that. What I'd like to pay for the pile is including that one there. So just the whole lot. Um, I think the most I'd want to pay would be a couple of hundred pounds for the lot. So what do you reckon and, then? Uh, Can we have a deal on those? Um, not of the two. Not the two. All right. Well, you're welcome to go wander around. If it's playing on your mind, because they're uh, the um, they're not standard railings. Let's just leave that for now. You know, just, just walk away from them, cos I think he is quite keen to sell me some stuff here as well. He needs to clear that room. I get that feeling. I like this, Patrick, at the back here. Um, Pelmet? Yes. Distressed pieces are very fashionable at the moment, and Drew's interior design customers would happily pay up to £180 for this copper pelmet. What sort of price do you want for that, Patrick? One and a half. Ooh, what? Really? Really? Oh, OK, then Re 300 <laughs> Your bargaining skills are... They leave a lot to be desired. How does, um, 75 quid grab you? Uh, pretty insulting, yeah, I like these, <laughs> It's uh... not... The... Where do you want to be? It's just got a lot of... It's pretty and everything, but it's got a lot of damage. It is, it is pretty. Well, what did I say? I mean, You actually... said 150, I, I went to 75. 125? Come on, I can go to 100. I think that's fair. Come on, I've come up. Well, because I feel sorry for you, yes. <laughs> thank you. I feel sorry for me all day long if you knock some money off. That's great, thank you. No, I love that. I keep noticing you've got uh, these things around. I think I've spotted two or three so far. Uh, these cast Gothic strap hinges, decorative strap hinges. Original door furniture of any period is easy to sell, but unusually ornate pieces like this could fetch £50 each. There's another one there. Do you want to drag that one down, Jules? Yeah. Go on, no? This one's got damage, Drew. Ooh. That is, um... Oh, yeah, it's missing, nice a, one, it? missing a little trefoil. What are you going to sting me for these, then? Well, they, they look to me like £50 each. Ooh, so really? £50? Pounds it? Oh, no, we're... Oh, no. OK, you're yeah, back to the no, scrapyard no, prices, no, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you've well. been spoiled. No, we're miles apart on these. Can I just... I'll give you a bid and that would be it. You can insult me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm now. going to on this one, I'm afraid. Just... But nicely. Go on, then. Nicely. 40 quid for the pair. Because I'm buying one good one, really. Yeah. Come I would on. say £50 a pair. £50 oh. a pair, done. Right, fine, we'll have those. 
Now that he's made some deals with Patrick, Drew returns to the items he really wants, the Art Nouveau balustrade. So I'm at 200 quid for the pile. This sort of stuff is quality. OK. And, you know, you've got to bump it up a bit of a chunk mm. to take them home. Because, you know, mm. it'll barely fill up my Rolls Royce, will it, with fuel? <laughs> 250 for the pile. No, I thought you were going to be generous. I thought you no, could that's... take yeah. three and you can take oh, it. Patrick, and you can on. leave one behind as a sample for what, me to What, you want to charge me more her. money and keep one? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just throwing gonna, in the broken well, ones for happen. you. OK, 275, including all the broken ones. Give me one to look at and drool over over the next 20 years. Deal, 275 for the lot. And, I'll, and you can... Uh, can keep one. I'll pick you one out specially. <laughs> <That's very damaged. laughs> yeah, I'm going to check for the I'll broken. Bring you the bits. most broken one. Despite his earlier reservations, Drew's got a good haul and not a piece of Bakelite in sight, and he's not finished yet. Now I noticed these as we drove in, actually, Patrick. Iron garden chairs of this quality are very rare and command large prices. Drew could easily get two hundred and forty pounds each for these French beauties. Are these something you'd, um, you'd part with? Well, I say no. I'd prefer not to sell them because they're looking pretty here. Oh, really? They go with the rustic wall. If you were to sell them, how much would you want for them? Well, I think they were about 125 each. 125, so 250 for the pair. Oh. Don't take them. I persuade you not to take them because I like them. No, I really like them. I really no, like don't. them an awful lot. No. They're very, very good. No, they're... They're just great looking, aren't they? Well, that's why they're there. Um, yeah, 250 we'll have them. Damn. <laughs> I was Fine. just going to say 200. But never no, mind. It's <laughs> <laughs> but something that looks that good and is so desirable to me, I want it. So that feeling may translate to somebody else. It's not just about profit, I mean. Although he's going to make a massive killing out of it, of course. Going to a Bakelite museum, which I'd have never have done normally, um, I was able to buy several items, all good, some expensive, but hey, I've got them, they're mine, and it's a good, good group of things for me to put into the shop. Been a pleasure. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was for me anyway. Yeah. No, I think it was very good. Yes, okay. I enjoyed it. After a good day out, it's a five-hour trip back to Drew's shop in North Wales to unload the van and see what the rest of the team think of their treasures. Um, load stuff. We went to a Bakelite museum because Julian wanted to go and I didn't want to go. Okay. But you, we, you enjoyed it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we loved it. Day, let's be honest. Ex dealer retired and opened this Bakelite museum. He was great. We've got this pelmet off him. It's beaten up to hell, but I still think it's it has wonderful. a strong look. It's Lovely. wonderful. Gavin, if you could just make sure it's safe for people yeah. to handle and that it can be, still be hung on the wall correctly. Aren't they lovely? Lovely. Nice gown, yeah. Pay top dollar for them. <laughs> just make sure they sit flat, give them a dust off, that's it. They just have such a good look to them. Look at that, look. Proper angle poise, floor standing lamp. Full polish, all the base, everything. Look at these. Nice, huh? Aren't they fab? So all I want you to do with these, Gavin, jet wash. is clean them. Jet wash. I don't want to do any, any more than that to them. Gavin is one of Drew's longest serving staff members and is responsible for general restoration, cleaning and repairs. Restoration can be a delicate and tricky business, but sometimes a jet wash will do. Don't need much doing, so I'm just give him a quick jet wash. Get all the dust and dirt and cobwebs and etc. off them and get them in the shop. Once Gavin has worked his magic, it's Mark's job to get it photographed and on the website as soon as possible. You can imagine that on a, a door, 
like a studded medieval door. If you've got a door this big. <laughs> the chairs sell in record time and don't even make it onto the website. Could these two chairs uh, go on one pallet? Yeah. We've paid for one pallet to go up to Scotland. Okay. And they're coming this afternoon. I don't know if they're going to fit. Oh, made to measure. Mm -hmm. That's great. The delivery company are going to collect them. Could be now. Second only to Drew's love of salvage, it is love of cars. And it's a happy day when he can combine the two. Accompanied by Julian, Drew is off to Doncaster, to a man who's famous for racing and smashing up early 20th century cars, and who may just have some car-related salvage for sale. I've loved daft old cars forever, really. Um, something with a bit more charm in it than a, than a modern car. Uh, and I like old cars where I can fix them myself and, and play with them. Yeah, that's this place. Look, you've got a GN badge on the front there. This would be Dougal, then. Fabulous. Brilliant. Dougal pulled up in his hot-rodded Fraser Nash. Today's going to be a, a brilliant day. Really looking forward to it. Wonderful. Hi, Dougal. Hi, Drew. How you doing? I'm all right. Good to meet you. Yeah. It's Jules. Hey, Jules. Right. OK. Um, yeah. God, I love this. I know, I'm, I'm here on business, but wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Well, yeah. Did you build it or did you buy it part built or what did you do? I rebuild it three times every year. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Drew needs to be convinced, but Dougal has an interesting way of justifying his obsession with vintage cars. It makes so much more sense to, uh, to drive an old car than have a new car built. Um, every time they build a new car, a panda dies. <laughs> Amusing, but is this someone Drew can do business with? This is a, this is a sort of... Well, it's like a boot room, isn't it, really? With a kitchen and things like that. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Uh, this was the old mill? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen something I like straight away as soon as I walked in. I don't know. It's, it's the, um, the curtain pole. This complete set of pole, rings and finials, probably from the Victorian era, could fetch as much as £400. Yeah, I like that as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I just thought, well, you're not using it. I mean, my wife does hang things like that off it all the time, so... What about, um, 180 quid? I'd rather have that hanging on the wall than 180 quid. Yeah? Mm, I would. Mm. Thank you all the same. He wanted to buy it because it's a really nice piece of kit. I want to keep it because it's a really nice piece of kit. If that, that was a pretty definite no, wasn't it? That was a definite no. That was a definite no. Uh, it's not a good start for me. I mean, I'm enjoying my day here and to meet somebody new, good connection when I need parts for my cars, but I need to make money. Oh, how about... That's not actually for sale. That's an old tongue press. A what? It's for pressing tongues. Cow tongues? Yeah. So you put that... Put your tongue in there... And then, and then pop that on the top to press the tongues. And then, you could, of course, you could put whatever weight on top of that you wanted. Ah, I see. <coughs> well, that's not for sale either. No, but it's lovely, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's great. I'm just showing off with it. Okay. <laughs> He's a collector. He really doesn't want to sell anything. He's just really enjoying showing me his stuff. And I'm really enjoying looking at it. But we'd like to do some business. Have you got that? What's that? That's my wife's Triumph, 1914. Not for sale. Really lovely, that is. We've also got funky not little for, not kids. Not for sale. Kids drop handlebar racing no, bike. No. That's not for sale because that's uh, baby stands. Okay. Uh, Nor's that one. Okay. Uh, not for sale. No, not for not sale. sale. Definitely okay. not. Particularly bad motorbike. You're not really selling that to me, are you? No, it's not my best pitch. No. Uh, I don't really have a great deal for sale here. Um, you know, a lot of the things in this house are my knickknacks collection. Things I've nicked and things that I've knackered. Uh, that I've got them from where because I like them, and uh, so there isn't a great deal for sale. As the time passes, it looks increasingly like Dougal has nothing of interest to Drew, who may be going home empty-handed. Oh, Coracle, distinctly second-hand. Never been raced or rallied. <laughs> Bloody hell. If you, can, if you can get from this side of the pond to the other in that, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it's seaworthy anymore. Yeah, I think it's not, not built for water. The things that are for sale, the things I'd happily get rid of, uh, I'd happily get rid of them for the same reason he wouldn't want to buy them. It's all about quality yeah. and condition with yeah. these things. And, but the quality of the initial make, and it's been overpainted. How about this hammer? It's 
fantastic, isn't it? I don't know, I've got to tell you, I'm not going to sell it. I just love it, because it's a proper... <laughs> it's a boy's tool, isn't it? A look steps. Yeah, the the old, these are the old mill wheels from the building. The old millstones, they'll be what they ground the corn with. Yeah, they're fab, aren't they? Yeah, great things. That's good luck. That's recycling. It is, on a grand scale. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, I've got a manky old 2CV. This okay. used to be my cousin's. He's called Mickey. Yeah. And he uses a camper van, so he called his Mickey Bago. <laughs> I did a Winnie Bago, but possibly not quite chic. And it's now my wife's potting shed. Oh, it's quite cool. Eventually, Drew's perseverance pays off and he spots something attractive and French. Not the 2CV, but some chairs. They, they're Funky very... little kids' chairs. Yeah, they're very much up my street. Kind of... Drew could easily get £120 for these from his interior design or shop-fitting customers. Now he has to do a deal with self-styled joker Dougal. They're very, very small, aren't they? These are toddler size, aren't yeah. they, almost? Yeah. yeah. OK, well, what do you want for these? I do like them. Great Fine, colour. Yeah. Nice and beaten up. Yeah, they're great. Five quid each, 30 quid for the four. God, you're hilarious today, aren't you? Fifties and French, by the looks of them. Can't see any maker's marks or anything on them, but they've definitely got that feel about them. No hallmarks on them. Yeah. So we're talking... So, we're, so where, what did you say, 15? <laughs> I'm sure that's what you said, yeah, yeah. 20 quid for four chairs. Got 20 quid for four chairs. For teeny-weeny little chairs, yeah. like that. Yeah. That you've left in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, where else you get pattern from? Mm, true, true. Got yeah, lived okay. in Okay, 20 quid, we'll have those. Sold. Lovely, thank you. Not going to take up a lot of room in the van, are they? It's a stunning place, absolutely beautiful. But unfortunately, I can't buy much, can I? No, well, I sort of like it all. Yeah, okay. 20 <laughs> quid's worth of chairs. 20 quid's worth of chairs, yeah, that's oh, it. Okay. Have you got 20 okay. quid, though? Well, have you got 20 quid? <laughs> you owe me 20 quid. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. I've got a tenner. <laughs> we, see this is we, can probably, we can probably <laughs> rustle up a tenner from the <laughs> ashtray in the van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack. Today, financially, was a loss. We've bought one little thing for £20. It's my job to salvage things, to hunt around and find things. That's what I do. I don't do anything else. If I'm not buying stuff, I'm not making any money. Well, look, we're going to get going. It's been a pleasure. Great stuff. All right, Thank no, you. it's been a pleasure. Oh, I've enjoyed seeing Drew. Uh, he's, a, he's a similar character to myself in that he likes sort of silly old impractical things that a lot of people have lost interest in. I think we could probably have a few laughs over a pint any time, really. Well, he was a nice fella. <laughs> You're being very tame with that one. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was, it was, it was great, wasn't it? Couldn't give a toss. Absolutely Sodger. didn't give a damn. Living his life by his own rules. Yes. Very good. But slightly disappointing we didn't find anything. Four chairs. Some days, that's how it goes. The day may be about to turn around. Mark has called with a lead. He's received an email from Amanda Sinclair, who's desperate to clear some of her dad's workshop and hopefully make a few quid selling off some antique garden ornaments. So it's off to Sussex for Drew and Julian. I love it when Mark calls me on the road, and he's clearly excited he's running at a million miles an hour. He says that he's found a property that has got period garden urns and garden items Antique ones, I'm there. I absolutely love buying them. So if they're there and they're real, I'm buying them. So where are we going today? Seeing a girl called Amanda. Amanda Sinclair. Amanda Sinclair, she's an interior designer. Dad makes furniture, but also along the way he's sort of into old bits and pieces. The workshop is an absolute tip. Um, <laughs> and one of the major reasons for calling Drew was to see if we can tidy up a bit. Yeah, Amanda. Hi, Hello. Yeah. Hi, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, for everything all right getting here? Yeah, no problem. Straight yeah. in. Great. It's Jules. Hi, Julie. Hiya. Hi, Amanda. Um, we got your email. Fantastic. Uh, I've only seen a couple of images. Yeah. Um, uh, of what you've got, and they seem to be garden items. Yeah, that's right. But... Dad's got some old garden furniture um, that's been hanging around for ages, the planters' pedestals, that type of thing, and I thought Drew might be interested in them. Right, they're just over here. Right. So. Right. Oh, I see. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> but Drew has some bad news for Amanda. Yeah, they're uh, they're all they're all modern ones. Mm, they're a bit... they're sort of they've got the look, but they just haven't got the age. 30, 40 years old, maybe. 
Maybe some of them probably not that old. Yeah, Period pieces is what yeah. I'm really after. Very That's nice. for sure. Somebody will want them. Just, just not me, I'm afraid. I feel like I've wasted your time there. Thank you so much, though. It happens. Don't worry. Sometimes we can pass without knowing a bit of duff information onto Drew. He finds it quite annoying, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. It's a long way to come for nothing. And Drew employs the salvage hunter golden rule. Don't just look at the things the seller thinks you want. Look everywhere. As you can see, it's working in progress. <laughs> yeah, working environment, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. There's bits and pieces everywhere. Oh, this is the office? Yeah. Oh, I see. Right, OK. Yeah. Yeah, he's a messy pup, your dad, isn't he? Yeah. Blimey. He sort of just chucks things wherever they land. <laughs> yeah. Really? You know, you've got to... That's his breakfast. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, the base of a very big candlestick would have been a pair, probably ecclesiastical, looking at them. <laughs> you haven't got the rest of these. Uh, not as far as I know. <sighs> Ganesh. Yeah, could be. What is it? Yeah. It's all yeah. broken. It is Ganesh, yeah. You see that? That's it. Yeah. You see a lot of these. I know that upper mind in gods, but I didn't no, know. No, nor me. The railway line outside is gorgeous, isn't it? What is it? It's the Blue Bear Railway. Very, very famous. It's not a Pullman carriage. Absolutely. They do food and afternoon teas and fish and chip parties. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fish and chip on the Pullman. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, yeah, no, nothing in here for us. I just had these in the drawer that I put away. Oh, that one's a nice one. Do you have the keeper? No. Mm, shame. Right, so you just want to keep looking. Yeah, see please. See if you can find any goodies. Drew searches high and low and then hits gold. Well, brass. Oh, these are the brass plates. Oh, quite nice, aren't they? These brass finger plates or push plates, people call them. Yeah, they come from a big house um, in Copthorne, which is about 25 minutes away from here. Mm. Um, it's like the house was apparently owned by Lord Dowling um, okay. in Sussex. Yeah. and. The house was actually knocked down, and my father actually redeveloped the site, but he kept all the bits and pieces from the old house. OK. And these are them. They're stylistically, they're quite nice. They've yeah. got a little registration mark on oh, there right, as yeah. well. See it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. The English from the 20s. Mm -hmm. How many of those have you got, Drew? So this would be either side of the door. Right, yeah. So you have that one on yeah. the door. Yeah. That one on the other side of the door. Mm -hmm. Must be nine. 12. 12. Oh, good news. Quite like these. When it comes to door furniture, multiples of two work best. Once cleaned up, these early 20th century examples could fetch £10 each. OK. Right. Did you say there was a loft space? Yep, just behind you. Right. Be there. Attics are often salvage hunter gold, as they are places that people put Damn. things and forget about them. <laughs> uh, these are interesting, these columns you've got up here. Right, OK. Six of them. Drew has found a set of six <laughs> matching wooden columns. Even numbers are always better for salvage, and condition is key. There's nothing else I can see up there right, at all, okay. just loads of old tools. Mm -hmm. These are good. I like these. Where did these come from, do you know? Um, Stratford upon Avon. Dad was doing his normal walking around, looking to see what he could find, yeah. and he found these from the RSC Theatre. Don't imagine they're from the building. They were probably used on a set. No, probably set. a set or something I'd like say, that. Yeah. yeah. This is exactly the kind of provenance that can add value to an item. These columns could sell for £60 each. I'd be interested in those. Right, for sure. Okay. okay. Unfortunately for Drew, it's Amanda's father who needs to be convinced to sell. Yeah, hi. Hi, Dad, it's me. Um, yeah, I've just been here with um, Drew and he's just been looking at some stuff. Um, you know the finger plates from the old house? Let's see what she says. And also all the um, the columns from that place in Stratford where you and Mum went. So have you got any idea of price or anything? Right. Hi. Oh, hello. Hey. Well, I spoke to Dad. What's he say? Yeah, he's happy to go ahead. Okay. What's we can he... get a price. And these. And the plates. They're not cast brass. They're just sheet. Okay. So we'll have to get the paint off. Three pound each. Three pound each. Well, that's it. That's exactly what we were just yeah. saying. We need to pay a few pounds each for yeah. these. Yeah. Um, I think with for the columns. The dowels. Yeah. 
And these have snapped. Yeah, they just came as they were. Yeah, did, he didn't strip no, the paint didn't off strip, them. No, 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 mm. no. It's a shame that they've, they've done that. Sometimes when you strip hardwoods like this, they'll crack. Mm. About 150. Six for hundred and fifty. Okay. Yep. That's a great price. Right. Okay. Yeah, that that that's fine. Damn, should have gone higher. Oh uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. It was worth me coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I've cleared a bit of your dad's junk. Yeah, a um, little bit. Not. <laughs> <laughs> what started as a search for antique garden ornaments has resulted in a find of nineteen twenties door furniture and a set of columns from the Royal Shakespeare Company. Proof again that when it comes to salvage hunting, Drew never knows what he'll find until he gets there. Anyway. Thank you very no, much indeed. No, Lovely to meet you. Back at base and more jobs for the team. We went to see a girl called Amanda. Do you remember that email you sent, Mark? Oh yeah. Uh, I didn't. I'd, I went in there blind. I hadn't seen anything. All the garden stuff she mentioned was all new. Yeah. None of it was any good. But she did have. I was going to say these are nice. Aren't they? Six of these. And a father bought them, and they're from the Royal Shakespeare Company. They were used there as set dressing. I'm assuming. Um, what do you think? Yeah, great. Lovely, aren't they? Mm. So strapped from the Avon. So all I want you to do is just go over them with a clear wax. Right, what else do we get from her? Oh, yeah, these. Uh -huh. Thanks. Look. We stack of them, all matching. Huge water, yeah, all matching finger plates. 20s, British arts and craftsy. All matching? All matching. They sell well as is. No, they need you to give... There you go. <laughs> That's your next job now, then, for saying that. There you oh, go. I've got to do that. <laughs> that one. Full polish on those, please, Gavin. And straighten them out, flatten them, yeah? But it's been a bad few days, and the purchases from Amanda won't keep them busy for long. When you're not finding anything, it's the worst. You just think, I'm losing my touch, uh, what am I doing, I need to get a real job, you know, all these different things. And then you find that other thing and I'm off. I'm off again, I'm like, brilliant. But Drew's fortunes may be about to change. He's just got another call that has made him put any thoughts of a nine-to-five job to one side. It's a place he's been trying to get into for years, it's off to Derbyshire to meet a bona fide lord with stuff to sell, music to Drew's ears. So we're off to see Sir Richard Fitzherbert. Quite a handle. But he's rang us, so I think it's sort of game on straight away. There's no messing about whether we need to... Is that for sale? Is this for sale? And he has loads of old furniture he wants to get rid of. Uh, my name's Sir Richard Fitzherbert, and I live at Tissington Hall, and this is our family home for 402 years, and I've been here 22. I think it's uh, essential that sometimes country houses reinvent themselves and occasionally have a big clear-out, but there's a lot of clutter in this house, and it's my responsibility to, to maintain the house, and if I could achieve a few quid, uh, you know, to do up a window or another room uh, through selling some clutter, then let's do it. But the sense of blue blood may be giving this salvage hunter ideas above his station. This is where we need to be all the time, in these beautiful old halls. Spend far too much time in scrapyards. Oh, look, it's a whole village. It's a hall with a village. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice, isn't it? On your best behaviour. Absolutely. No spitting, no swearing. What about farting? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Hi. Hi, good morning. Hello. Sir Richard? Hello, yes, Richard Great. Fitzherbert. What we've got for sale are the things really in the storeroom, so in the sheds, down in the cellar and up in the turret room at the top of the house. Wow, fabulous hallway. Oh, my God, that's gorgeous. Well, this is the main hall of the house, the uh, 17th century part of the house. The house was built in 1609. Great front chest. Yeah. That's a drawer. Yeah. Someone's left there. Do you want a hand? <laughs> it was in my aunt's house, and I'd moved it from her house. It always rattled. I found these drawers by fiddling with it one day, and in these drawers there were jewels and necklaces and things like that she'd hidden. Anyway, I got so excited, I got three younger sisters. I rang them up, they're in London. They said, oh, we'll come up and get them. 
And that was the last I heard yeah, of it. Yeah, I was going to say you never yeah. saw them again. <laughs> exactly. I did ask my sister about the earrings, and she said, oh, Richard, they weren't your colour. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go up this way and up these stairs to the turret room. We have a turret room at the south end of the house at the top of the stairs. I'd love to make that my own sort of little study, but there is a lot of clutter in there, and hopefully we can find something in there for Drew. Music to Drew's ears. To a turret room turret in a country room. pile that needs to be cleared out. Doesn't get much better than this. Is this one of the oldest bits of the house, is it? Yeah, this is part of the oldest bit. So you've got, the again, the 17th century flies um, and things like that. These are rather marvellous. Yes, yeah, so a light should be weighted. You've got to wait in there, so there you go. Drop lamps are ceiling-mounted lamps that can be adjusted in height. Rewired and restored, this late 19th or early 20th century version could sell for around £480. The drop lamp, when we rewired the house in 1990, a lot of these drop lamps were taken out because they were deemed dangerous for the electrics in the house. The, the house had not been rewired for 40 years, so we took some of these out. I'd forgotten that I'd uh, got a drop lamp like that, which is a rather nice piece. You pull this up and down, the counterweight moves it up and down, and so if you move it so there, it stops. So there it stops. Everything's here, nothing's missing, and uh, it's not been messed around with. So, ideal for us. What do you think? What do you reckon for that one? <sighs> Couple of hundred. The max for that one, max, 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 would be... I'd really like to pay 80 quid, but I'd probably push it to 100, but no more. That's for sure. OK, it's doing nothing here. Yeah. Excellent. Now we'll have that. To get anything for that I was thrilled of, I could easily have thrown it out 20 years ago. With the ice broken, the next stage is to get Sir Richard to open the estate sheds, Drew's preferred hunting ground. We store a lot of clutter in here, as you can see. At the back of the shed, Drew spots a very large kitchen table that has definitely seen better popular, days. Then, Apparently, it's... this is a rather good table. Where's, where's, where's this from? The table in the uh, the shed outside, I think, was a was a servant's table at some at uh, some stage, probably used in one of the kitchens. And I believe when the house was uh, readdressed and restructured in 1900, that that table probably came out uh, of the house then 1900 1910 and has been in that shed, certainly, since I've ever known it, the last 22 years. Great big chunk missing out the corner here, oh. where somebody's just hacked into it and cut the end off, cut a corner off. Two-plank top, that's really good. Let me just get down and have a better look at this side. Is this something that's for sale? Yep. Oh, that's the ghost. Have you got a ghost? We have corresponded with some of my great-uncles, I believe. One particular evening is very memorable. It was uh, one in the morning, and we went into a particular room, my old study, and uh, ten of us clasped hands all around. I didn't know the other nine at all, they didn't know anyone, and we went, we had to be quiet. So we were quiet, we put our hands together, went in a ring, and uh, somebody said, is there anybody out there? And then the floor creaked. Was that you? Was that you? Was that you? No. It was the floor creaked. And so somebody rather brashly said, is there someone there? The floor creaked. Did you hear it just then? And then this conversation developed on a sort of yes, no. Are you William? Floor creaked. Are you George? Nothing. And we worked out that it was one of the Sir Williams that lived here in the, in the 18th century. Right. Skeptical. Okay. I think we'll get back in the van. <laughs> <laughs> At the risk of upsetting the spirits, Drew and Julian hoist the table outside to take a closer look. Ah, oh, it's soaked in oil. Somebody's been re rebuilding engines on it by the looks of it. The Qataris pay a lot of money for that sort of thing, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> drain the table out. There's at least a litre in there, isn't there? That's uh, right. Well, that's worth it. Oh, God, in today's price, it's got 15 gosh. quid in there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The oil and the damage don't deter Drew. He knows that after restoration, this 10-foot example could fetch around £1,800. How much? I mean, I'm not using it. It's pretty sturdy. I mean, I've sold similar ones, not quite as in good condition, for, uh, you know, 500 quid. Um, 500 is going to be too much. Well, I was thinking more cheekily, mm -hmm. 200 quid. 
200 quid. Yeah, when I first saw it, that's my, so we're a bit apart. Right, OK, we are a little bit on that, really. Well, I'd have to think about that. I'd have to think about that. Um, what about 300? 300 with that very good green on it. That's estate green, you know. That's Hollybush green. You can have that, though. I can have, you that, can have back, that. If you can, can get I? that off, you can have it. All yours free. Well, I suppose <laughs> I'll carry it down to 400. 400. Still seems a little bit heavy. It is heavy. Yeah, well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 380. We'll have a deal on it. Close right. enough. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. The £380 I got for the table, I think, is, is very fair. In fact, I'm probably very pleased with it. 500 was probably a little naughty of me to try that on with Drew. Yeah, pay £380 for the table, which looks like a hill of money for a broken, oil-soaked, cut-up, knackered work table out of a kitchen. But what I'm looking at is I've got a 10-foot, two-plank pine table with a nice history that, once restored, will command a lot of money uh, because it's very much in vogue. But Drew's not finished yet, so Richard has one last place to take him. I think Drew might be able to find something in the cellar. This it's become stairway. the receptacle of lots of junk. Mind your steps as you come down this stairway. You can hold on to the left. We're deep, aren't we, down here? It's, it's deep down here, oh, yeah. And there's that door, and I'll turn the lights on. And this is my glory hole. Ah. My old... Uh, I'll give you that cellar. So... Lots of clatter in here. More wine. Yeah, more wine that was the port around there. section. That's the port. I've, I've had a bit of a go at that. You've got these lovely old bin numbers everywhere. Yeah, and there's the odd. Is that the Armagnac one or Cognac? Yeah. I mean, in the old days, the, these, these would have held a pipe of port each or a pipe of Armagnac. So you'd have had 144 bottles of. Your merchant would have given you 144 bottles of claret of Burgundy, of Armagnac, of Cognac. And that's called a pipe? A pipe. That yeah. quantity is a pipe. 104, 12 cases of 12. Ah, OK. And in the cellar, something Drew can never have enough of, old country house chairs. I've got a bit of a fetish for old country house armchairs. Right, I OK. I do tend to buy them weekly. That's a beauty. Yeah, what do you think they are? They said 19th century. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Then you've got this one here. But, yeah, these are all... All 19th century. This one's got a broken arm, unfortunately. OK, so are these things... Are these for sale, these? Uh, possibly, yeah. Drew never passes up a decent old armchair. Even before reupholstery, he can sell these for up to £300 each. What well, price-wise? Um, I'd average them out at 300 quid each, 900 quid for the three. Um, I'd probably go to 450 for the three. No, that, I think that's me done. 450. That's 450. Thank you. Lovely. Right. To clear it out, 450 pounds. I was very well pleased with. I hope they find a good home. They need a new life. It's what I'm always looking for. It's quality, uh, quality, quality, quality sells. That's why I come to these houses. They didn't buy junk. That's why I like to come here, and that's what I'm always looking for. Chairs of that size, I've never had a problem selling them, whether back into sort of the interior design trade generally, or back into big old country houses. As well, there's an awful lot of them around. All right. Well, yeah. Tissington Hall has been great for us today. Um, I've never been here before. It's stunning. Uh, meeting Sir Richard was fun. He's, he's, he's a laugh, to be honest with you. We got on well, I think. Um, and I've bought well. I've bought a few items, and they've all got perfect country house provenance. I was thrilled that Drew came today. I've learned a lot from today, and I've got a few quid in my pocket as well, so we'll be going to the pub later. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I'll ask him to come again. I've also got a few mates who've got a few houses as well, and he might like to visit them. OK, we're done. Done. Finished. Loaded. OK. Thanks Thank you so much. much. OK, Thank good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. See you again. Thanks for the trip around the house as well. I really enjoyed it. See you okay. soon. Bye-bye. On the ride back, Drew tells Julian just how much he loves old armchairs. I love armchairs. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with them. Really, really loves old armchairs. I actually don't know how many I've got in the stock at the moment. A lot. 20? 20. 20 country house knackered armchairs. <laughs> yeah, knackered armchairs. I'll keep buying them. Back at base, the armchair love fest continues. Hello. How are you doing? 
Can I see some chairs? We couldn't take, yeah. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise, I bought loads of chairs. Drew's wife, Rebecca, is used to upholstered rivals and is unfazed. You can't go wrong with bums on seats. No. Um, it's the, uh, but the frame is, is good and the shape underneath this is great. You can see underneath this... Has it got all its casters? Everything's on there. Oh, good. But the arm's broken. But what a super shape. Look at the shape. Isn't it great? I'll just take, take the back there. Look at this. This is a beauty. Let's spin it round. Look at that. What a super chair. Isn't that just wonderful? Is it me or have I just got too much of a thing for chairs? Um... <laughs> That's a yes, then. Three chairs, £450 okay. for the three. But don't you think that's great? It is. You, you, you guys not not as no, enamoured with it as me? No, I am. It's just obviously, mean, it seems just like today's... Perfect. To a lot of people's eyes, they just look like a load of old sofas that some people would say should be skipped. But underneath all that is the frames are beautiful. They're Victorian. Again, Drew's eye. He spotted those chairs, the turned legs, the casters. Um, so they're great. The giant oil soaked table is more of a hit with the team. What do you think of that? Well, ignore, yeah. ignore the extremely filthy oily condition, which the oil is an issue. Yeah. Well, that's two planks. <coughs> two plank top. Two plank top, yeah. yeah. Look at that. One plank, look at that. Lovely. Wow. Most people wouldn't have even spotted it. It was, it's a real state, a real state. But um, great proportions, as Drew would say, um, trust me, <laughs> with a lot of restoration, that will be back to a very, very good standard. It will be good. Salvage hunting is a tricky business, and despite some doubts, Drew's persistence has paid off, and he lives to hunt another day. I have to rely very much on my own instincts. Uh, I have to know that what comes off the back of the van is going to sell. The lads look at me sometimes when I bring in an oil-stained table or a little kiddie's chair like this or, you know, a knackered old armchair. It's not only my livelihood, it's their livelihood. We need to make sure we can sell this stuff, so, and it's a big responsibility. When you take a little chair like this out of context now, you see, you take it out of the garden and just put it down and go, look, it's a funky, cool item. So sometimes just taking those pieces away from a normal environment, you expect to see them, and showing them for what they are, which is really very simply and beautifully designed little piece of furniture. This is the wonderful and amazingly good quality rise and fall lamp we found at Tissington. Um, it's now working. Ollie did a lovely job rewiring it and getting it to work correctly and balance properly, which is really, really hard. But now you can just hold that stops perfectly any way you like. These are some of the finger plates we bought from Amanda Sinclair, again, which are just um, Wonderful now they've come up, they've had a polish. I mean, they've been handled, but uh, we've sold the larger ones and we've sold the columns that we got from Amanda, um, but we've got these smaller finger plates come through. So exactly what I like about the job, you know, just taking something like that, completely usable, but also authentic. So this table now, this is the one we got from the garage at Tissington. I did take a bit of a flyer on this one, to be honest with you, because that oil was really deep in it. But Alex and Gavin between them have done a super job. And you can really see now that why I was really fancied it. The two plank top just makes a great look to the table. Experience has taught me that you always keep going because it literally can be in the next five minutes or tomorrow or the day after, you'll find something great and we can make some money and we get the excitement and we get the rush and we get the interest and we get the new thing through the shop. So you just keep going and think, well, tomorrow, I'll find a shed full of stuff. On salvage hunters. £200, fixed price. Really? Drew faces some difficult customers. 150 <laughs> <laughs> This cider must be affecting your ears. <laughs> That's a no. I'll get my coat. <laughs> Rebecca faces some difficult calculations. I haven't had a drink yet. And Julian's skills are much in demand. You're not getting a rest, you're just testing. <laughs> Come back, Julian. <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. 
Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. Drew's business is built on his ability to unearth unique one-off pieces. Crack on. We're, we're going, Jules. Get going. That means hunting in places no one else would think of going. Accompanied by sidekick Julian, Drew's off to Stafford to meet a man who specialises in decommissioning planes, helicopters and weapons. This business, from what I've seen of it, and uh, the brief email we had from them, they just I said, you know, what have you got? And the listing of stuff that they had was breathtaking. My name's Ian Dodds. Uh, this is Air and Ground Aviation. Uh, this particular division of Air and Ground Aviation is called VWINME. It's uh, part of the disposal contract for the Ministry of Defence in the United Kingdom for the sale of surplus aircraft parts, land vehicle parts, and associated material. Spitfire. Hi there. Hi. How are you doing? All right. Ian? Yes? Hi, Drew. Hi, Drew. Pleased to meet you. All you all right? right? Hi, Julian. Hi, Julian. You all right? You. Welcome to Air and Ground. Thank you. We're going to come in and uh, we'll get signed up. OK, great. So, here we go. Wow. God, it's huge. Everything in here is for sale. It's extremely rare for a dealer like Drew to get access to ex-Ministry of Defence items like this, so he needs to make the most of the opportunity. But knowing where to start is a challenge. Wow. Oh, what's these? Um, they're actually uh, tail rotor blades off the Westland Lynx helicopter. Uh, these would actually be demilitarised before we'd sold them. We'd drill a hole through them so they could never be used on an aircraft again. Sure. We'd probably be selling those around the 40 to £50 pound mark, uh, as they are, as is condition. The rotor blades don't really do it for Drew, and with over 150,000 square feet of warehouse, he'll have to focus and work fast if he's going to cover the whole place in a day. What's that? I have absolutely no idea. These cases, the cases alone are just beautiful. Yeah, what we do with a lot of equipment is we'll take the original component out of it. That yeah. is actually a piece of peculiar test equipment. Scrap value is probably only worth about five pounds, yeah. uh, if not less than that, although it is clean sort of stainless steel and alley. But we're normally selling these from anything from 50 to 150 pounds each. Wow, look at this. This is like... This is how you want our Look at that. This is what I want. This is what yeah. our place should be like. This up and down and all those through there. I was just directing planes then. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people buy these for converting for artefacts and... Yeah, they're good, aren't they? They're great looking. Um, but something like that, we'd normally sell those between 150 to 250 pounds, depending on the condition and whether they're serviceable or not. Per seat? Per seat. Per seat. OK. Drew knows his interior design clients will pay around £250 each for these 1960s seats. Hmm. Yes, they're good. His strategy is to buy a few smaller pieces first, in the hope that Ian will give him more favourable terms on the big items. These are quite good. This thing? Trolleys, yes. We've been using these as uh, tool cases. Can you imagine all your tools laid out there, or if you're into discos, or you're a musician and lighting rigs, I don't know. It's nuts just trying to get your head around it. We've been selling these up to sort of 250, 400 pounds, one or two we've sold, very good. And we've put some more in the lot. No, it's great, I think I need a bigger van. Yeah, and there are... Doesn't like a big sunbed. And you can diverse. <laughs> yes, it does, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> These are great containers, aren't they? Just ditch all that lot. Yeah. I mean, you look at the, the type of test equipment and computers that are in there, it's so old. So you could equip a small army. Wales are thinking of having a bit of an uprising. <laughs> you spend about 500 quid here, well, you're in trouble. Can you say? <laughs> he's wearing it, he's bought it. Oh, yeah, I'm somebody else is going to want to put the gob in there now, are they? You like this. that, don't you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you're right. Isn't there's only one issue with wearing it. You can't breathe. And you look like a massive <sighs> pervert in it as well. Does that light up your life? Yeah, they do. <laughs> These lights will be very desirable to restaurant designers and could easily fetch £20 per piece. Runway Same lamps. sort of thing, runway lamp. 
100 pound for the pallet. Well, it'd be silly not to buy those. I think it would, to be honest, I think it'd be insulting if we didn't. Yeah. Okay, we'll take this pallet. Look. 100 pound? Lovely. Nice. Yeah, brilliant. Here's uh, another selection of runway lighting. That look fantastic in a restaurant, in your bedroom. Yeah. In your bedroom? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> uh, I'm just, yeah, brothel. Stop. <laughs> Go. Go. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> So does this go over the top of it? How does that work? Actually, I'm not 100% certain. It's all part of runway right lighting. I think this is actually the lens that goes over the lighting in the ground, so aircraft can run over it. It's very, very <laughs> thick, won't break. I'll tell you what, my dog, dog bowl. You'd yeah. love that. Oh, it's got to be worth 50 pounds for an indestructible yeah. dog bowl, hasn't it? <laughs> it would need to be with Enzo. <laughs> These are very cool. I like those a lot. They're like some sort of retro steampunk library ladder, aren't they? Imagine them all polished up, or even left like that. I love these red rivets on there. These are currently off the C-130s we're refurbishing, but uh, these are available for sale. How many did you want, both, or just Yeah, one? how much for the pair? Uh, I would say about £50 a piece, so £200, and I, I wouldn't sell them for less. £50 a piece, £200? It's massive, but... You've got pounds. four in total, Oh, I sorry. see. Oh. All right, OK. <laughs> yeah. Steampunk is a style based on the Victorian vision of futuristic technology, like H.G. Wells's Time Machine. It's very popular with interior designers right now, who would pay up to £140 each for industrial functional pieces like these. Well, if I took all four, 150 Like I say, £200, fixed price. Really? No, that's a bargain. If, if I told you how much just that piece there is worth, £150... £50 for one of those? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, having them. Lovely, thank you. Right, great, you'll have to get demilitarising. Super. <laughs> so far, Drew has found some unusual pieces of salvage, but everywhere he goes, he looks for one special piece that will amaze his customers. And it looks like he's just found it. I want those. I really, really want those. We don't actually have a customer for the propellers at the moment, so um, if it's something that you'd be interested in, we'd be quite happy to take these propellers off the engines. They've got that percentage that just sets them apart from everything else. You can go and buy plane propellers. You can. You know, they're not uncommon. You can buy all of this stuff, but you can't buy any of those. But if you wanted to buy the complete prop assemblies... Uh, what, the whole thing, so it comes with this? It comes with, with that complete unit. So that whole unit. So you're actually talking from this split ring forward. Uh, we don't have any stands for it, so we'd literally take them off and put them on a pallet. They are pretty big, as you can see. Yeah. But uh, aluminium? Yeah. How much? We'd normally sell something like that at about £400 for a prop. For the whole thing. For the whole thing. Aviation pieces like these are very decorative and could sell for up to £750 each. Uh, if you want to take both of them, uh, there's a deal to be done. We've got a customer for the engines. They don't want the props, so... These are very the whole rare. whole thing, I think, yeah. is quite interesting. Rare in a plain way, but I'm, I'll be selling it as a decorative item. So if I was going to buy a pair, I'd be thinking... 400 quid for the pair is probably more where I'd want to be, and I'd take both. What about halfway, 600 pounds for the I two? I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. That's a, sort of, every time I look at something like this, a figure will always pop into my head. As soon as I'm interested in something, I think, what would I want to pay? I mean, both of them off with the nose cones. I'd go to five, but I wouldn't pay any more. Okay, 500 pounds. 500 pounds? Job done. Excellent. There you go. Bidding £500 for the pair. Got them. Deal. Deal of the week. Fantastic. Now I've got the two best pieces of aviation wall art out there. How cool are they? They're brilliant. Now it's time to see if Drew's strategy pays off, and it's back to the chairs to see if he can get Ian to accept a lower bid. These chairs that we've mentioned... This is the sort of thing you could buy today if you could afford to buy them. <laughs> I want them. I can afford it, but it's about spending the money in the right way. You know that. Um, and you're asking how much each? We normally sell these for £150 each. But I'm buying quite a lot of things now, aren't I? And I'm definitely going to be back. I mean, you've so far sold me two massive propellers and 400 lamps, so, you know, I'm not messing about. With these, I'd really like to pay for four, 300 quid. Wonderful. Thank you. Brilliant. Excellent. They're yeah. just super things.
So there you go, Drew. I think you've just about seen everything we've got. Yeah. Um, so when would you like to take delivery of your first aircraft? Yeah, sure. If we can get it on the van, we'll buy one. Slight issue. <laughs> get the van in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we put a few uh, vans in it. <laughs> but look, thanks for showing me. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, Thank you so much. An honour and a pleasure to meet you. Great. Whilst the top gun of the salvage world is enjoying himself in Stafford, wife Rebecca and sales manager Mark are holding the fort back in North Wales. Drew's on a pretty long mission this week. Hopefully, if it all goes well, he should be coming back with a lot of lovely items, which means here we're going to have to get all the backlog sorted out, get the sales moving, move the items out, ready for his return. We're trying to work out the price per linear metre of uh, this flooring. We bought it in square metres and um, our customers are asking it for in linear metres. That doesn't matter too much, does it? If you're laying a floor... Oh, if you want Pacific. Yeah. Pacific? Is that the right word? The Pacific. <laughs> 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 I, haven't had a drink. I haven't had a drink yet. I've got a sort of random selection of five and three quarters to six and a quarter, but it's fine. It'll be all right. I think I'll leave the flooring to Julian. Come back, Julian! We've never asked for Julian to come back, have we? That's a first. That's it's a first! <laughs> <laughs> but Julian is 200 miles away, driving from Stafford to a manor house in Greenham in Somerset. Big country houses are perfect hunting ground for Drew, as they usually have good quality furniture lying around in sheds and outbuildings. This was Mark um, sending out flyers, wasn't it, that got us this next one? Yeah, they came back to him and um, he sort of decided to book it in because we were going to be close. What's the place called? Uh, Puffet Manor. I've lived here for 18 years and we run it as a business. According to Christopher Hussey, writing um, in the 1920s for Country Life, described Cotte as the finest example of a small medieval manor left in the kingdom today. I'm not sure about it, to be honest, because they're saying they've just got the odd bit to sell, but um, they've been doing antique fairs down here for a while as well. So every trader and his man and his Every, so everybody's been through the place. Everybody's been through the place. So I'm hoping it's not a total bust. They seem to make everything beautiful down here. Yeah. Whoa, look at this place. <laughs> hi, I'm Drew. Mary Ann Rock. Hi. Nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. This is my daughter Charlie. Hello, Charlie Campbell. Hi. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah. Uh, it's Jules. Come along with me. Julie. Oh. Oh, hey. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Good to meet you. Hello. Fantastic place you've got here. It, all this is uh, 1480. It's almost as it was when it was built, mm. so they say. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. lovely, I'll take it. It's everything. I think the British Country House style has got so many things about it. It's lived in, and it's been lived in and lived in and lived in, and they evolve, but they never really change, and they get a bit crumbly and a bit saggy when they're covered in ivy and... You can't not be taken in, like, you really can't not be. Mary Ann gives Drew and Julian the guided tour of the house, and it's full of unique and beautiful things. Was this the chapel? Um, no, it was where, um, in medieval times, where all the staff would have slept. slept. Oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? Do you actually want to sell it, Mum? Do you, really, would you want to sell it? I don't know anything about them, and I can't even remember how long I've had them. That's the modern are, one, isn't the, it? Yeah. These are the same as the ones I had. Okay. I had the paper tags on them. Yeah. Which I don't know if they were real, but it did look the part anyway. Yes. Do you want to sell it? Yeah. Can I think about it for a minute? Yeah, sure. Is sure. Come right? back to it, yeah. What about that? The what? Cupboard. No, that cupboard mm. I keep... That's not old. No, I keep not old, no. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie would sell you absolutely everything. She used to sell anything, wouldn't she? Yes. That door's quite nice. <laughs> the door's very yeah, nice. Yeah, love the doors. Yeah, afraid not. <laughs> Come along in. This is our little antique shop that we... Um, you sell some stuff from here? Yeah, a little bit. It's a hobby. hobby. Yes. We two like going junking. We go junking two or three things a week. Do you? Yeah. She says, um, 50 <laughs> till 50 and spend till the end. <laughs> and I, I love quite that. Reached that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got loads and loads of Chinese chinoiserie influenced stuff here. 
Bits and pieces. Yeah, just, loads just of odd it. odd bits and pieces. Do you know what this is? No. It's a little tear bottle, Chinese, so the lovers would send their tears to each other mm, in nice. it. Do you feel how heavy it is? I thought it was a snuff mm -hmm. bottle at first, but I'm told that it's a... a oh, so you it's scoop got, your tears it's off. It's got... Uh, and you put them in there. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So where's the love of all this Chinese and Japanese stuff come from? I don't know. It just sort of came out of the air. That's OK. I like anything beautiful. Yeah. They do make lovely stuff, don't they? Yeah. Wonderful things, yeah. yes. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes. What do you think about that? It's really... It's lovely, isn't it? Do you think it's... Uh, early? Um, I'd say so, yes. Yeah. That, that's um, 1500, 1550. Uh, Northern Frank, France. Wow. This is um, this is Iranian, fifth century BC. Who's is this one? That actually belongs to me. There's some debate as to its authenticity, it's a tea. but probably it's not 17th century, um, no. 19th century, or later. Week, la week last Wednesday. <laughs> Did you get this from? Was this from the house? I should think it's about turn of the century, eighteen ninety. Do you agree or not? Uh, yes. I'm glad I don't have to push it round the garden. A bit pricey for me at one fifty. Would you make an offer? Maybe trade price. I know mm. what I paid for it. How much did you pay for it? I paid... Don't tell him. Oh. <laughs> I'll go and stand over here. I... <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know. Where, 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 what do you want to do? No, no, this no. This is no, your no. antique shop. For that. This is your antique yes. shop. You're uh, in charge now. I'm the customer. Oh, he's clever, isn't he? Um, um... 140? No. Keep uh, going. Keep going down. No way! Going down. Yes, no way! way. Well, make me an offer. 100 quid. I paid a lot more. <laughs> no, I think we will, uh, I think we'll, we'll keep it. Yes. The retail prices in this antique shop are too high for Drew to make a profit. If he's going to find anything today, it won't be in here. We can show Drew the Aladdin's cave. That's a good idea, but I think it's probably full of rubbish. Why don't well, we go no, through the... Let's, why do, why let's, do we go... let's see. I'd love yes. to see you anywhere. Do you want to go through the garden yeah, or that'd back be great. through the house? Yes. When they said, well, the only place left is Aladdin's cave, I was like... There, that's it. <laughs> this is Aladdin's cave. And, oh, okay. um, sorry. Oh, dear. Don't worry. I'm so, not sure that you'll um, see oh, anything you know. like in here. You never know. Maybe my expectations were high when they said Aladdin's cave, but um, no, unfortunately, nothing in there. Undeterred, Drew presses on and eventually finds a promising-looking shed. Uh, My gosh, what a lot of junk. You sure you don't want it all? Take it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some glass demijohns, or what are they called? These would have wine and olive oil and things like that. The only thing in there was two little carboys, these two little bulbous glass jars in uh, little metal carrier crates. They're covered in bird mess. Yeah, these are great, aren't they? The ones I've had have had sort of paper prints on the front saying olive oil, wine, that type of thing. So they were used for storage. We can show you that one. This one's sure. a lot older, I think. Is it? Yeah. Nice condition, particularly one of them. There's, they're not broken. No chips to the rims on the top of the bottle. Same size. And I like the little baskets they're in. Very lightweight, but they're unusual. Carboys like these were used from the 14th century onwards to transport wine, beer and other liquids. These Victorian examples could fetch as much as eighty pounds each. Okay, so what are they going to cost me? Well, what do you, what's your, what's, what do you want to offer? As oh, little as I can possibly get away with, to be honest. I that. <laughs> no, I want you to make me an offer. Well, I can't be buyer and seller. <laughs> no, come on, Charlie. Come on. You got... I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. So what would why... you be happy with? What would you be happy giving me? Uh... Because they're not the finest antique in the world, but they are. A... No, they're certainly not. One hundred and fifty. Oh. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Gardener, comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking a lot less. I was thinking sort of 40 quid. No. 
yeah. way. Yeah. I needed to, I think, lower Charlie's expectations, so I sort of chopped them right down to 40 quid, knowing that she'd go, what? Uh, but maybe we could start to get on a level where we could start buying them. 100 for the both of them. 100 for both of them. How about we split it at sort of... 75 quid. 80. 80 quid. Thank you. No, we'll have those. <laughs> OK. £80 for the pair, £40 each. Fine, I'll buy them. Still a lot for two empty glass jars in rusty metal frames, but they're very good looking. They're a good size and they're a pair. OK, is, uh, have we seen everything? Well, not quite everything, but just about everything. <laughs> everything that's for sale. sale. But okay. I'm sorry that there wasn't more for sale. Don't worry, don't but worry. It's taken it's nearly 100 years for me to collect all those bits and pieces. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> I understand, that's fine. Being, but anyway, it was really good to meet you. collector yourself, you'll understand. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't collect much. Yeah. <laughs> good to meet you, Shirley. You drive a very hard bargain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> OK, thank you. See you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye now. I have sort of not got what I've come for, you know, to buy two little things, really not enough. I've just heard from Drew, and sadly, things aren't going well for him. He's not finding an awful lot to buy. Uh, he sounds very down. He misses not being at home. Um, and all the expenses are just, you know, they're mounting up, mounting up, and he's not able to put the stock in the van to bring home. Rather than returning to Wales with just a few items, Drew and Julian press on further south to Dorset in the hope of salvaging this long trip. Good morning. Could I speak to Mr Chapman, please? Good morning, Mr. It's Julian. Um, I'm with Drew Pritchard. Uh, we have spoken recently. We are in your area. Would it be convenient to call in today? Yeah? Um, in the next sort of half an hour? Three quarters of an hour? That, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, OK. Lovely. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Cool. He's happy for us to go? He's happy. Cool. I'm uh, Winston Chapman. I've lived here nearly all of my life, in Dorset, in West Dorset. And I'm a farmer. And, uh, he does make cider. Oh. Yeah, his own cider. It's a bit early, but... Uh, it's not? No, it's not, actually. It's it's not. We're awake. We can I'm drink cider. <laughs> But it seems that Drew's fame hasn't quite made it this far south. Yes. Hi, Drew. Drew. Drew who? Hey, Drew Pritchard. We Drew spoke Pritchard. on the phone. Oh yeah. Well, that's you spoke right. to Jules. You just spoke to Julian on yeah, the phone. Yeah, I spoke to me on the phone. Hi, oh, yeah. Julian. How do you do? Um, yeah. Well, we're here about your call to us. Oh, yeah. You've got some stuff in some sheds. Well, I've got some stuff, but whether you'll like it, I don't know. But uh -huh. we can have a look. Uh, yeah, please lead on. Okay. Let's have a quick look. Like country houses, farms often have outbuildings full of stuff that interests Drew. Fab old building. But farmers are a notoriously eccentric breed and often tricky to deal with. So where do we start? OK, you follow me in then. <clears throat> well, this is the inside of the building. Went into the first part of the barn and his son's using it for storage. There's some skittles he's been working on. Timber's that? Uh, lignum, lignum vitae. vitae. Yeah. yeah. So, so they, make bowl, they make crown green bowls out of yeah. this, don't they? Yeah, yeah. At first, it looks like the shed has nothing of interest. But in true salvage hunter style, Drew spots something hidden in the corner that he suspects is extremely special. It's that door there, that's been... It was an old blacksmith's door from down in the village. And um, all the customers had their names um, burnt into the door. And it's about as special as it gets. Antique doors like this are very popular, often converted into tables or panels. This one-off piece of local history could easily sell for upwards of £200. So these are all his customers? Yeah, yeah. Any, yeah. any names you recognise? Yeah, quite a few of those, yeah. Happis, that's an unusual name. How old is this? How, what have they dated it to? Um, 
I would think it's um, it's around the you know the turn of the last century. Cop, Gardner, Manley, Cousins, Turner. What's that? Rat mens. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. It's the sort of thing I'd love to have in the shop. I'd like to sell it to you, but I'll, I can't let you have that one. No, no. OK. It's a blow, but the first rule of salvage hunting is to keep looking high and low. Eventually, it pays off when Drew spots some large baskets. We use them for um, transporting a few chickens if we need any chickens. I wondered what was spotted been in them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or a duck. But they have a certain charm about them. Um, these ones are a little bit different to the norm because the name's across the front. So when you stand back from it, the lettering's quite sweet across the front. A little bit different. Would you part with these, Winston? These for sale? I'd have to find something to replace them. But the question is, are they for sale? So far, Drew has had no success in convincing Winston to part with anything. But surely a pair of old baskets he uses to transport chickens won't have any sentimental value. I'd be interested in those and any others of these you've got. As many as you've got, really. Yeah, I, um, I think that, that's the um, limit of it. Is that, the, that two? Just, just a yeah. brace. All right. Vintage hampers are very popular with photographers and decorators. These early 20th century examples could fetch up to £120 each. If they're for sale, what would you want for them? Um, I don't know. You make me an offer, cos you're the one doing the buying. Yeah. What about 50 quid for the pair? That's pretty good. Well, I think you could do a bit better than that. I'll uh, have to work a bit of cider into you if you can. <laughs> you can try. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, show me the cider. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh. uh, sixty pound, thirty pound a piece. Um, keep thinking. Keep, you keep thinking. You keep thinking. Am I getting anywhere near? Well. A little bit more might be nice, yeah. What about £75 the pair? Give me a couple of minutes to think about it. OK. Drew decides on a tactical retreat and lets Winston show him his pride and joy, the cider house. Stubbs arms. Yeah. This is a cider room. Wild cider perfection. <laughs> is that your own brand, is it? Well, more or less. The whole sort of feeling in the cider house is just great. It's somewhere you just want to hang out. You want to go and sit down there and have a, a pint of uh, homemade cider, by the fire, listen to the radio and have some laughs. It just looks like a fun place to be. The juice oh, runs into there. Yeah. 80, 90 gallons to about 120, 130 gallons Ooh. on a squeeze. A proper Dorset cider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about the most blokiest shed we've been in for a while, actually, yes. isn't it? It's the... It's, I it's want one of these. It's the best this shed is for the brilliant. bottom of anyone's yeah. garden. <laughs> You've got a brewery in your garden. It sounds like the best hobby in the world. It's got to it? be, isn't it? It's just, it's just, just got to be. It's, it's not a hobby, is it? I suppose it's a tradition. No, it, it is a very traditional thing, and there's not much cider made with um, straw nowadays. But even the promise of super strength cider can't put Drew off his game, and he spotted a gem. Oh, this is nice. That is nice, yeah. This is good. Where'd you get this from? I was hoping you weren't going to notice that one. This is something I'd be really keen on buying. Benches of this scale are rare and very saleable. Drew has recently sold a similar one for £1,500, so this is exactly the piece he'd like to take away with him. Would this be something you'd be willing to sell? It would be like selling a wing off an aeroplane. Oh, really? If I sold that, my life wouldn't be worth living. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll get my coat. <laughs> <laughs> Finished. <laughs> Well, it's so comfy and it can tell so many stories and everybody around here would kill me if I, if I got rid of it, so um, it's staying, I'm afraid. Once again, local history and sentimentality has stood in Drew's way. But rather than leave empty-handed, he has one last go at making a deal on the hampers. What about these, these baskets, what do you reckon? Got um, a deal? Can we have a deal on them? What did you say? A hundred, was it? No, no. no it, it must, the cider must be affecting your ears, Winston, to be honest with you. Um, I, say, I think we went to 75 quid. It was a hundred, wasn't it? No, he won't. Trust me, he won't say anything. Sorry, um, you're not going to pull me into this one. <laughs> no, I have, to, I have to work with him. Yeah. Um, I'll split the difference then. Go on. OK. Split the difference between 75 and 100. OK. Roughly speaking. Roughly speaking. 80 quid. 
85. 85 quid. There okay. you go. Thank you. Cheers, Great stuff. <laughs> All right, so we'll get that. Let's fill those baskets full of cider and get right. them. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of holes in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to let him have them because I probably, I probably won't uh, use the baskets. Or if I do, I'll have to find something to replace them, which will probably cost me 85 pounds. Yeah, I took pity on him because he, he was really struggling. Yeah, these are great. Uh, really like them. The best. That's just that uh, lettering on the front makes them. Well, it's different. Yeah, it's different to um, my normal mornings. Much more relaxed. Usually we're very busy, so um, this is like being on holiday. You blokes have it too good. As they load up the van, Winston presents Drew and Julian with a memento, a sample of his homemade cider. Winston. Why is yours bigger than mine? <laughs> well, some things in life oh, are just okay, like that. Things just like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just born lucky. Cheers, Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thanks, Winston. Okay. I'll, I'll treasure this for at least ooh, till about eight tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. See you okay. again. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers, Bye -bye. Cheers Bye. now. I want to go to one of Winston's evenings. Yes. Like more than most places I want to go. <laughs> I want to go to one of his do's at night over there. When they uh, get all that cider out in that little room, sounds brilliant. Sounds great fun. Yeah, brilliant. Back at base, Rebecca and Mark, unaware that Drew has only found a few items, are clearing the backlog of jobs in anticipation of a new van load of stuff. But renovator Gavin's mind is clearly elsewhere. Wakey, wakey! Oh, it's... <laughs> she lot boring me. <laughs> uh, right, we've, we've just been walking around the showroom. We've got to get everything ticket and price ready for Drew when he comes back. What did he say he wanted doing to the pair of pillars? Cast iron pillars. He just said... Clean them. Jet wash and that was it, isn't it? Mm. Mark has offered... I can do. Yeah. <coughs> going to do some <coughs> manual labour. Do you show you how to use the jet wash? Yes, please. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'll man the phones. It's, okay. um, and then I'll price. The jet wash working, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Good. Your wellies. Leaks. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? it? Oh, it leaks all down your arms. Yeah, that's right. I can cope with that. Do you need a bath? It's not Sunday, is it? It's not bath day. <laughs> it is, it's bath night, isn't it? Hey! <laughs> Sunday in Van Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, is it? With the whole team getting ready for an influx of new stuff, the pressure is on Drew to fill the van. On his way home from Devon, he takes a short detour to a legend in the salvage world who may just save the day. Based in the village of Old Sodbury, just outside Bristol, Jim Wilkie has a passion for Land Rovers and vintage agricultural machinery. Well, today, we're down near Bristol, and it would be, I think, rude not to go and see Jim Wilkie. Okay. Jim Wilkie of Land Rover fame, uh, infamous Jim Wilkie, who started the old Sodbury sort out. All right, this is Wayload, where we do lorry load weighing equipment normally, but also the home of the old Sodbury sort out, although we now go around the country with it. It started here, and what it is, people bring Land Rover fools of drunk, uh, they load up their trailer or they load up the Land Rover and bring all the bits that are left over, because it's a funny thing if you repair a Land Rover, you always seem to have a lot of bits left over. Got to be worth calling in, and also I think he's a, 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 a prolific hoarder of junk. Hoarders may have lots of stuff, but as this week has taught Drew, getting them to part with their treasures isn't always easy. Hey, dude. Are you, are you lost? Hi, you Jim. Yeah. Uh, my name's Drew. Hello, Drew. Um, we've heard of you on the Land Rover Grapevine. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you run the old Sodbury sort out. That's right, yeah. So, uh, we were in the area. Yeah. And uh, there's a pal of mine, Jules. Hi. Hi, Jules. <laughs> and, uh, well, we just thought we'd call in. Well, you've come to the right place. A lot of it sort of tends to hang around. I'm, I'm alleged to have put the old, in, old sod in old sodbury. So. I'd, I'd heard that, but I wasn't yeah. going to say it. No, so, well, you, so you are the official of the old yeah, sod? Yeah, well, the sun's shining today, so the temper's good, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, are oh, we OK to have, have a look around? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, great, OK. This has uh, definitely got potential. Um, it's off the beaten track. You can't see it from the road. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of stuff here that hasn't moved in years. You've got so much stuff in here. 
It's, it's very, very light. How rotten. You're a proper hoarder as well. You know where you got everything from. I have all this stuff. It just, I like it, so I have it. It isn't everybody's taste, but it gives me pleasure, and I, I enjoy looking at it. I suppose at one level, you could say it always talks to you. I do like somebody that does the job properly and is prepared to burrow. I was amused, actually, when Drew, just watching his back end as he went in there, it was just like watching a terrier going after a rat. The only thing he didn't have was a tail that wagged, but otherwise, it was just the same. Yeah. Drew loves all old vehicles, and it's not long before he's distracted by something with four wheels. I like this, Jim. Oh, yeah, it's a bit different, isn't it? Well, as far as I understand it, it's either the French or the German version of the uh, Alpine Laboratory, because it was a Swiss Army tool for checking uh, the Alpine uh, avalanche risk. FBW was a Swiss company making vans and buses from 1922 to 1984. This 1940s mobile laboratory is worth around £6,000 in its current condition. It's just great looking, and the styling of it is, is superb. It's got a sort of slight art deco-y, jet age sort of style to it, which I think is really beautiful. God, no. Wow, this is fantastic, Jim. If I was going to buy this today in this condition, what what's it worth? Well, I, I suppose if you came in and weighed 5,000 at me, I would be tempted. The interior is fantastic. The condition is amazing. Uh, everything from the wheels, uh, it, it's just a great looking big truck. And they've got the maker's mark here. This yeah, is, there you the, go. That's the coach builder. That's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah, Corrosory, yeah. which is the coach builder. Lagenthal AG Lagenthal. I tell you what, they did a bloody good job, didn't they? It's incredible condition. Yeah. If, if it went to an auction, I think it would make considerably more than that. It's, yeah. it's that old thing of, of, you know, if somebody hit me on the right day at the right time, five might do it. If it went to an auction, it, I'd, I'd expect it to make quite a bit more. Mm. I can see it being used as a transporter for historic mm. race car. I think it's got that written all over it. A 50-year-old truck isn't really what the team is expecting Drew to bring home. So, reluctantly, he gets back to business. And refocused, the hunter turns up something that may just salvage the whole trip. I like these old chairs, Jim. Right down in the back in the left corner, there was this stack of uh, Cox chairs, which are the stacking chairs that everybody remembers from school, usually, with the little canvas seat and back. These seem all right. Yeah. Well, they've been, they've been undercover most of the time. These are sort of ten a penny chairs. Just starting to be of interest to me for our sort of clients who are doing pubs and restaurants. Oh, yeah, these stacking, stacking tubular ones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a Land Rover connection there, I suspect. Is there? Because if they, yeah, if you look, it's a Cox, Cox, Cox chair. Yeah. Well, Coxies used to make a lot of the seats for Land Rovers, the uh, Range Rover seats. If you look, it's oh, the same okay. people that did the Range Rover seating. Are they something you'd, you'd want to sell? They're, they're stuck in the back of the shed there. Yeah, wanna... they, could, they could move on. Yeah. Uh, there's, um, there's some rust staining on some of the canvases on some of them. Oh, but yeah. I, I, think, I think there's 20. I'll go back in and count. I think I'll be sure cautious about the canvas anyway because you're probably, you're probably as well to renew that because it's only a sale-making job because yeah. otherwise they give way. British firm Cox designed their iconic stacking chairs in the 1930s. Chairs like this in good condition can sell for £25 each. We need to put some weight on one and test it, really, <laughs> don't we? You're actually going to let me sit down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm happy days. <laughs> Oh, not mind if Sit I on think. both, you know, because you are, you know, rotund. No, well, no, larger. Slightly overweight, larger How's than the that? average. Are they, are they making ripping noises? No. I'll give it a minute. Try that one. That one's rusty. Oh, sorry. You're not getting a rest. You're just testing. <sighs> well, get the other. If you get the other ones down, I'll test them as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These chairs are just the renovation project that Drew's looking for to keep Gavin busy for a few days. He just needs to get them at a price that can give him a profit. What would you want for the for the 20, if they're all all right? I would have thought 150 would cover them. There's about 25% of them are got some rust staining on the seats. One least where there's a bolt missing as well, the fixing, but it's just an ordinary Whitworth screw goes in. I think they're Whitworth. Yeah. <laughs> So, 150 for these? Yep. Deal? Deal. You're on. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers, Jim. OK, on to the next one. Just as he'd hoped, this visit is paying off. Moments later, Drew spots something else. What's that? It's one of those. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. 
Is there a clue on it? Yeah, I've just spotted, I think it's a lamp. It looks like a lamp. Yeah, it's probably... Novelty a... lighting sells well, and this medical lamp, probably from the 1950s, could fetch around £100 when rewired. Look at that. Is that cool? Oh, I, I get it. it. Funky, isn't it? Would you want to sell that, Jim? Yeah, I think so. I've um... got no idea what it is or what it's for. It looks medical, vaguely medical, doesn't it? It does. It looks impressive, doesn't it? Yeah, Even it though I have no idea. I've no idea what it is either. Quite. And I don't know. I have no idea really what it's worth. What would you want for it? I thought about twenty-five pounds would cover it. Um, yeah, I was thinking twenty quid. So, what do you reckon? Can we do a deal? Sure. But I reckon we do a deal at twenty quid. Yeah. Lovely. Sure. Sure. You'll love that. I've got no idea what I've just bought. No. Ollie, you'll love that. It's good. It's good looking, though, isn't it? Great shape. It's a great looking great thing. Shape. I love the the bar thing on it. You can move it around. Twenty for hundred and fifty. Is that seven pound fifty each? That's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We found five more chairs to match the 20 we've just bought in the barn. They're in much worse condition, but they might, might yield some sort of good pieces to fix some of the other chairs. We might get 20 good ones out of the batch. That would be great, a real saving. When he's tidied them up, he will make sure they go to somebody that appreciates them, if only because they're the only people that will pay the price he needs for them. But they will be in good hands and, and they'll be kept. The bar's in there, you see, it's just... Yeah. Screw, yeah. No, great. You want a screw and you, you want a rubber washer in there. There should be a rubber washer between the Sure, we'll sort that out. Brilliant. Any more of that, Jules? Um, no, but if you take these off me, I will grab that torch off you and I'll have a gander under the stand. And it's not just Drew who's on the ball today. Jules, have you just dug this out? Yes, mate. That's in quite good nick, though. These BP enamel signs are very easy to sell. Drew has an almost identical one for sale at £450. What would you want for these signs, Jim? Um, the... I suppose you've got to be looking at 120 each for them. What's the condition of the back one? Uh, well, they were tarred over, you see, to make the shed. So, mm. you know, as any as the tar wears away, you realise what they are. Um, I think we'll take... Can we take this one for 100 and do it for 100? No, I wouldn't do it for that. No? No. The trouble is, you know, with doing the sort-outs at Bewley, we see what they can command down there. So. They can, can't they, these ones? Yeah. yeah. particularly in good condition. OK, look, right, let's take that one at 120. We'll take it. If I can pull this one out of here and it's not in too bad a condition, I'll, I'll buy this one as well. OK, I'll on. be all right. Jules! 120 each for those signs, you know, I tried to haggle him down a little bit and then I thought, no, I might just pay the guy, you know, that's a good price. So, with his reputation intact, Drew calls it a day. I found some good things here, some saleable items at great prices. Good contact with Jim, he now knows the sort of thing I want. Jim's just really amiable, you know, a lovely guy, um, not bothered about us turning up, freely giving his time for us. So, yeah, great, why not? I think we can load up now, Jules. Yeah. yeah, certainly made a change from the normal routine and, uh, you know, glad to see him because it's always nice when an enthusiast drops in and just as happy if somebody comes in for a natter and we spend all day looking at stuff and do nothing. But it's a shared enthusiast. If nothing else, it validates your, your desire to keep the junk. There you go, can you find somewhere for that? Jim, right. really enjoyed that. Well, Great. Thanks for just letting us turn up and wander around. It's really well, good. Well, I was going to say, I'm afraid it's disrupted your schedule a bit today. It has a bit, really. <laughs> wasted half the day playing in trucks, but still. Well, not wasted. Wasted. Not wasted. Not a waste of time. Wasted. Anyway, if you've enjoyed it, that's oh, amazing. Well, a great yeah. time. Thank you, Jim. OK, cheers, Andrew. Thank you very Have much. Have a good trip. Thank cheers. Bye-bye. Worth calling in. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I love watching wandering around all that stuff. Brilliant. He had a proper, it was a proper mess, wasn't it? It was. He needed the old salt need sorted. <laughs> well, yeah. A 
at least one member of the team is anxiously awaiting Drew's return, whilst the others rush to finish the jobs in time for his arrival. But will they think his trip was worth it? Ta -da! So we've got another one to add to the collection. Yes. So, so, so we've got two size. now. Same, same size. size. This one's two. earlier. Because nice. you can date them if you look down yeah. on the bottom yeah. there. Uh, this week, great. We found some super things. Uh, we had it all this week. Great. Good, huh? Cox stacking chairs. Oh, we have to guess. Well, it's a lamp. It's a yes, lamp. It's a lamp. That's oh, fantastic. Not as we know it. Would it be not a, a rod? Right? See, so it screws in there. Mm. So a floor-mounted base, then a screw-in pipe, then that. Then this, that would have gone through there. So it turns. So it's directional like that. That's fantastic. It is, isn't it great? Yes. I loved it. Yes. Cooling. Yeah, I think it looks like something off Doctor Who. Don't you think so? It looks like one of those oh, heads. So. Oh, right, yeah. That's what I, I know mean. what you mean, though. A few days later, and there's a delivery outside in the yard that's got Drew spinning with excitement. And the best thing I've found in ages is these babies. These were something we bought uh, in Stafford off the specialist guys there in air and ground. The good news is we sold them in less than 24 hours. They've gone. Uh, they've gone to a pal of mine, actually, who drove in, and he goes, God, I love those, they're brilliant, I really, really what do you want for them? And he gave me a bid, I said, yeah, you're sold. I think sometimes the first bid can be the best bid, and just, like, sod it, take the money. Uh, but they're really cool. I mean, look at them, they're the business, aren't they? When I saw them hanging up there, I just had to have them. We soon changed our minds about them when we went to unload them off the van, which took four of us four hours. Um, for something that flies, these are seriously heavy pieces of kit. You can't even move them. On Salvage Hunters. <laughs> it's either working or it's going to blow up. Things could be getting explosive for Drew as he goes in search of crazy collectors with things to sell. It's 100 quid a boat and you can have the frame for nothing. His own desire to collect threatens to get in the way of business. Gosh, stop just buying cars. Stop next week. Buy this one. And leaves wife Rebecca less than happy. On a Series 1 Land Rover. Another car. I bought a car. Another car. How many cars can we have? Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? ..and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems which then find new homes in houses, good, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. Drew's reputation is built on his ability to source items that no other dealer will have. This means he has to constantly think outside the usual antique dealer's box. But there's one type that almost always comes up with the goods for him. Compulsive collectors. In my line of work, you do meet a lot of collectors of all sorts of things, really, and I've got several people lined up for items that I buy all the time because these collectors are a backbone of my business and I need them as much as they need me. Can't get over the weather. It's following us, mate. Accompanied by his trusty sidekick, Julian, Drew sets off to meet a brand-new contact, who he hopes will become a regular supplier. They're taking a five-hour drive to Portsmouth to meet a man who's turned his obsession with collecting into a business, supplying costumes and period weapons to film companies. Good luck is following us, Julian. Good luck. <laughs> it's about bloody time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so it's the right down here. What's this guy called? Hamish. We're theatrical armourers, uh, prop manufacturers, costumiers, and we work in film, television and theatre. Apparently that's it. Hamish? Yes. Drew. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Julian. Hello, Julian. 
Do you want to come on in, have yeah. a look around? Yeah, I'd love to. I'm love sorry to. about the mess, but uh, have to take us how you find us. No, no, that's fine, no problem. Quite a mix. Yes. We have equipment, clothing, armour, swords, shields, various kinds of props from ancient Greece, Spartans, right the way through the Roman era, medieval, through Victoriana, the Napoleonic Wars, World War I, World War II, the Gulf War, the Falklands War. This is completely different from downstairs. I've got you know, a whole floor just full of uniforms. This is all original stuff in here. Here's a test for you. One of these is original, one of them's reproduction. Oh, really? Original. Correct. Yeah, it was just the zip. Yeah, it's That's good giveaway. Yeah. Well, there's an A2 in extremely really good, good condition. Original condition, isn't it? And you can just oh, see wow. it had yeah, a paint yeah. of an eagle on the back. Commonly known as a bomber jacket, the A2 was designed in 1930 for use by the US Army Air Corps. Vintage examples like this can sell for upwards of £200. I've got a particular fascination with sort of uh, Second World War American flying jackets. They're good looking, they're comfortable and they're desirable and maybe even me could look good wearing one. Can I try it on? Try it, yeah. I was getting That's as nice. excited as he was and I was begging for that thing not to fit him. It was too small. Just so it wouldn't be so painful when I said, no, it's not for sale. <laughs> but just how cool is that? It just feels... Feels perfect, doesn't it? On. I probably want one of these again. If I was going to buy the jacket, it's there's no way I could even deceive myself by thinking it was going to be a buy for the business because it really wouldn't be. It's for me. Well, am I all right to have just a sift through then? And just yeah. if I find something, I'll just shout out and say, "What about this? What about that?" Yeah, yeah. Just have a, have a dig around. Antique weapons are a very specialised market and one that Drew usually avoids. Walking around in his warehouse, there's boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff, most of it of no interest to me. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? You've got a fantastic stock of stuff. But suddenly, he discovers something that does pique his interest. Roman shields. Quite like these shields. Yeah, sort of 19th century yeah. house decor. Yeah, uh, they'd, they'd stick this up to aggrandise the living room, wouldn't they? Either side of the fireplace, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Though not the real deal, these reproduction shields are just the kind of decorative item Drew's customers love and could bring around £100 each. These have been, you know, on the wall of many a film set and also, you know, with corporate functions when people are having a sort of medieval Christmas feast or something like that. These are really quite battered. Yeah, there's a couple of nice ones in there. The good ones, I should imagine I'd be able to get 100 quid for a good shield. Mm. The bits where they're damaged, you're looking at sort of 30, 40 quid. So you, see, you think you've got two at 100 pounds each? Yeah. And then, and then the, the rest, rest are sort probably, of 30 quid. Yeah, 30 quid. So you're looking at 330, 360 for the pile? Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Could we do sort of 275? Um, I don't like the number five, so if we do 280, I'll let those go. OK. Will you chuck in the two knackered ones for the bits? Now, oddly enough, I was going to uh, suggest that you took those. I know that if I took them out and restored them myself, made the repairs, cleaned them up, I probably would get more money than that, selling them individually. But the fact that Drew's happy to come in, take the lot, take them away as they are, yeah, it's a, it's a deal. Hamish's collecting bug isn't just restricted to militaria, so it's off to his farm to see what his personal collection may have to offer. Just have a dig around in here, then. And on arrival, Drew heads straight for something that he just can't stop collecting. So just all landy parts in this side. Yeah, that's a, that's a complete Series 1. I'm looking for a Series 1 Landover. I want one. Did my best not to just, you know, drool all over it. But his business head takes over, and he resists the Land Rover, for now. There's some fairground stuff. Is that where it's... Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Never been used. Yeah. Well, they're quite good, aren't they? Yeah, they're the type that don't need an engine. You know, the children yeah. just sit on and pull on the pull street. The, uh, the whole thing's there. The frames there. All the poles, the poles everything, the carriages, all the carriages, the rope. Yeah, the whole lot. You just need to pull a few of these things out and you'll be able to have a look. Yeah.
It was an old set of swing boats. Vintage rides such as this rarely come onto the open market and can be difficult to sell. But the right buyer would pay around £1,800 for this pristine example. You don't know anything about its age. Did you, were you told anything by the people you got it from how old it is? These small rides for children, again, you're talking sort of late Victorian times, it became popular for, to have sort of kiddies' rides. It's pre-engine, it's pre-motor. So how much is it for me to take a chance on it? Well, there's four boats, um, so 100 quid a boat, and you can have the frame for nothing. Jesus, that's really good of you. <laughs> um, gee, thanks. Wait, well, the boats are bloody useless without the frame. <laughs> Let's meet in the middle. 350? Well, 350 for the frame, and you can have the boats for nothing. <laughs> that's a better deal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 350 pounds may be a lot for a ride that he hasn't even seen put together, but sometimes it's all about the gamble in salvage hunting. Have well, a look in here. And the fun might not yet be over. There's still another shed. Swiss. Mm. Swiss. Uh, could that be sold? Yeah, they can go. Yeah. Drew knows that decorative items like this Victorian copper lantern could easily bring £200. This looks like it's made up of component parts. It's quite nice. I'd be looking for sort of, I don't know, 30, 40 quid for something like that. Oh, God, yeah, that's fine. That'll clean up nice. Yeah, that's fine. But I'll definitely take that one. That's quite nice, isn't it? It's a charming little thing. Children's toys are easy to sell, both to collectors and interior designers. This late 19th century example could easily fetch £160. I think we can all agree that it's been played with. Yeah, but not too bad. It's still got its ears. Price? I think I'll be wanting to get, like, 50 quid for that. It's got a metal head in there. That's a good Shit. toy, and it, it is all there. It's not knackered. Not going to knock you on the price for that. Yeah, we'll take Always that as popular. well. popular. Yeah, for sure. No, nope, have that. But the child's toy only seems to remind Drew of the big boy's toy he really wants, and it's back to the Land Rover. It's been partially disassembled, but everything is here. It's regularly started, so you only need to put the battery in and it will go. It will go, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. A 1952 Series 1 Land Rover like this could fetch upwards of £2,500 in its current condition. You've got the doors, yes. wings, yeah. bulkheads all good. Windscreen is there. Yeah, here, there with the brown finish. I've been looking for one in this sort of condition, ideally complete and running, for a while. What would you want for it? Hamish clearly knows exactly what this is worth, and Drew knows it will be a difficult purchase to explain to wife Rebecca. His head is telling him to walk away. What would you want for it? Um. Well, I mean, we all know that uh, we can get a pretty good price for this if we continued and restored this. Yeah. I can see nearly everything for it. I know it's got no hood. There's no hood sticks or anything here. No, we haven't got the sticks for this I'll one. I'll take it away as it is. No. As, as it is, I'll just come here with the trailer and take it away. My whole sort of business plan and business brain has gone completely out of the window, and I'm just looking at it as something I want to buy. I suppose 2500 for it, because it's all there. Mm. I'll pay you £2,000. I'll take it as it is. It's not a business decision. It's, uh, it's a decision of the heart. Okay. okay, you got a deal. Right, cheers. So it's Demons 1, Drew nothing. At least we got the bolts. Probably the most important thing of it. Not going to go together without them. And whilst Drew is doing the deal on the Land Rover, Julian is left to deal with the business of loading the dozens of pieces of the fairground ride. Jules, we've got any air for these? Can you, can you yeah. get those in? And that one, obviously, you know what it's like. Just be really careful with that. All oh, right, okay. All right. I know. Just wrap. We can wrap them. Put them in the gondolas. So Drew's bought a 60-year-old Land Rover in bits and a vintage fairground ride in bits. He can only hope that both gambles will pay off. Okay, we're done. Yep. All finished. All done. All loaded. Yeah, cool. All right, cheers, Hamish. Oh, it's a pleasure meeting you. No, no, really good. Enjoyed it. Really oh, I've enjoyed the day as well. Thank you very yeah, much. I haven't guys. bought such a weird collection of stuff in ages. <laughs> got a Series 1 Land Rover. You got, you got the toy you wanted. Fantastic. Land Rover pervert strikes again. <laughs> Back at base, online sales manager Mark, restorer Gavin and Drew's wife Rebecca are eagerly waiting to see what treasures Drew and Julian have brought back. Fairground ride. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. It's a bit small, it's a kiddie one. Kind of a fun day now, isn't it? 
Drew Pritchard's Fun Day. <laughs> Drew Pritchard's World of Fun. <laughs> you haven't seen it in full working order? No. No. The wrong bits there? It was underneath a pile of car parts. Oh, but, okay. but, um, by my reckoning, all the bits are there. You've got to put it together, Gary. You've got to put it together. <laughs> <laughs> Two dead ends. It's a shield. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> no mention of the Land Rover so far. Maybe he's planning to use the shield as protection. They're real. He said so. They're real. But all the bits there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're real. Nice, aren't they? Just be careful with a couple of the details since we tightened up on them. Gaffer tape. Victorian gaffer tape. <laughs> well, I like that one. Absolutely genuine. I just thought they were good decorative things. I may be miles off and it may, may have given me some, I don't know, some drugs while I was there, but I think they're good. Oh. That's all right, isn't it? That's very nice. That's very, very, very nice. It's pretty, isn't it? Very. All original, not been messed about with. Glass in the base. You know, give it to Ollie. They that's... copy theirs now, don't they? We put candles in them. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. I thought it's all right, isn't it? Yeah. 19th century toy horse, probably German. So I just thought it was lovely. Really charming, isn't it? It's absolutely Can you that charming. Down? Condition's quite yeah. good. Are you sure you're right with that? Go and get the trolley. It's quite, collect quite same collectible. Place? Same place. We got, um, we got that. We got the horse and the lamp. Drew's been stalling, but here it comes. And a Series 1 Land Rover. So, should we get this off now? And a what? And a what? A Series 1 Land Rover. Yeah. Is that in a box in there, or is it a No, bit no, 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 no. It's really, really good, but all the bits are there. Just needs to put them back together again. Great. Same as the fair ride, all the bits are there. All the all bits, are, bits there. are there. Yeah, you promised me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long ago I was carting a Morris Minor. Uh, up the M6. Am I dragging a trail around the country again to come and get no, it? No, I'll go and get it. Don't worry. It might fit in the back here. Seriously? Yeah, it's only a little one. Yeah. 80 inch. Drew may have dodged a bullet for the Land Rover, but he didn't get the reaction he expected from Rebecca and the team for the rest of the haul. My only reservation um, were the shields. Drew's favourite saying is, trust me, which we do, and he normally is right. On a personal note, they were fine, but they didn't make me go, oh, you know, they're great. I do get um, a bit of a barracking from them when I've brought something that uh, they're not sure of. But what I love is that always the first thing that sells, or it sells well, and then we have people asking for more. And I love it, because it just, re just reminds them, know what I'm doing, get on with it. I can't wait to see the fairground ride set up, to be honest. That's, it's, it's so obvious, that's the one I want to see set up. <laughs> We're going to get Drew to test it out. Rather than hang around, Drew leaves the shop to Rebecca and plans his next excursion to see what Britain's crazy collectors have to offer. This afternoon we are in Norfolk, which is known for just being flat and farmland, isn't it, really? It's super quaint. With no clear idea of who he'll be dealing with, Drew can only hope he finds something without four wheels to appease his wife and team back home. We're off to see a guy called Nick. He's a property developer. Basically lived in Norfolk all my life. I'm a bit of a collector of junk, um, general memorabilia. And he's open to offers and deals on more or less anything and everything. So, it just sort of smells right. It looks like somewhere I want to go. And what Drew isn't telling Julian is that Nick also buys and sells old cars. This is it. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is great. Perfect. Hi, Drew. Yes, Nick. Hello, pleased to meet you. And you. How Thanks you for coming up. Bit of a no trip. Problem. Oh, yeah. Just hope there's something here of interest to you, really, yeah. so I can uh, show you around. So, where do you want to go first? Well, shall we start on the outside and have a look around? Store? Sure, go lead on. Inside. Let's do that first. OK. While the sun's shining. At the start, I didn't know where to take him, where to lead him, perhaps to identify something he might be interested in. No. no, all bust. Firstly, if I show you um, a mould I've just found in a, sure. in a local scrapyard, it's basically a Lotus 30. But the only part we haven't got is, the, is door. the two doors. Would have been fun. It would have been, would have been fun, yeah. Loads of fun. 
The mould is something I wouldn't want to buy. You need to get drawings and you need to confirm that is absolutely the right one. Because if it isn't the right one, it's worth nothing. Oh, we like those. They're yeah. very good. These came from a um, property on the North Norfolk coast. These are very, very similar to a pair I've got on my own house. A pair of stone gate posts like these from the Regency period could easily sell for around £600. They are really good and they're of good size. So they've come off a decent sized house, not just a basic little, what we'd call a field post. They're the front entrance way, you know? They're lovely. Are these something you could sell? I've actually sold those on. OK. Hey, you know, next time. That's a cricket pitch roller. I think you're right. That's got to be the width of the crease, hasn't it? Yeah. This would have had a seat, you know, those tractor seats on there with the name on the back, steel, the sprung seat, and you sit along there all day with the horse. Not something I could buy, though. It's an old clawfoot bath. That's part of cattle feeds. They're really common now. Really but... common. We cannot sell them. We had about 30-odd in the backyard, didn't we, at work? Here we've got some old slate fireplaces. Wales is full of these. So that was made just up the road from our shop. Have lots of them, so it's just sort of lying around. Not something I can move back that way then. Definitely not. You'd have to pay me. This is a uh, turnstile. It does work. I mean, when it was upright, it did work perfectly. Yeah. Manchester company Ellison's patented their rush proof turnstiles for football grounds in 1895. A similar example to this one was recently offered for sale on an internet auction site for £400. Was it something you want to sell or...? I I'd sell it. I think, you know, make me an offer, really. Yeah, it sort of fits in yeah. with my sort of theme of things we do. It's an oddment. Uh, it can be used in a bar or a restaurant. It would just have to be cheap. Yeah. It would just be something cheap. It would be more or less scrap value, to be honest with you, yeah. because I'd just be taking a chance on it. So it would be... As long as it's all there, I suppose it would be a 50 quid type of item. Yeah. 50 quid? I think that's... Really? Lovely. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's I laid around for so long. Oh, that's asked, but I need that's to have That's great. The there you go. 50 quid. Yeah. Though Nick's yard is packed full, Drew is finding precious little to buy. Maybe things not exposed to the weather will bring more luck. This is a clock came from... Um, I'm just going to light this. You like that, yeah? Yeah. That's good. The guy I purchased the clock from was basically from the Yarmouth area, and he'd given me some indication that during a refurbishment of one of the stations in Yarmouth, that had been thrown out. A station clock like this is hugely desirable to railway enthusiasts as well as designers and photographers. After a quick clean and new wiring, this clock will bring in close to £500. Have you had it working? Have you noticed you've got a plug on it? I haven't tried it. I mean, you can plug it in and give it a go. It's either working or it's going to blow up. Yeah, that's working fine. Turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> yes. We'd be selling this on, so we've got to rewire it. People love to put those in their kitchens, and whenever I get one, it's sold like that. It's gone. I think I'd be fair with you. What if we said, um... Really fair, £200. That has been really fair. Yeah? Yeah. Is that all right? That is a You're fantastic deal. Thank you yeah. very much. I'm probably going to leave it as it is. I, I like it as it is. Um, we're going to check the electrics out, though, because they're a bit... In this um, workshop we've got here, there's an old Land Rover. It's welding, yeah? That's it. They're, yeah, they always yeah, tend, tend yeah. to need a little bit of welding. Every Land Rover I get needs welding. So it's just bits and pieces, really, in here. Unless you want to buy a boat. Definitely not. Don't like boats. Don't like the sea. I don't like going in the sea at all. I think the sea's just full of things that are going to eat you. I like this, Nick. Oh, yeah, the waiting room sign, yeah. Depending on their size, antique signs can often fetch hundreds of pounds each. I like the fact that all the letters are sort of not quite straight. Yeah, They're all yeah, sort yort of yeah, jumbled up, bit badly put on. Ad hoc, aren't they? Yeah, quite like that. Is that for sale? Yeah, yeah. Again, I said, yeah. anything's for sale, really. What sort of price would you want for this? What Again, would you like I for? think I quite like the idea of you bidding me. And... It's a good decorative piece for a bar, restaurant, uh, clothes shop. How does... Uh, 75 quid? Yeah, that is definitely... Is that good. all right? Yes. Happy with that? Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. thank you very much. I like that. That's cool, isn't it? I like this as well. It's a really early 19th century English strapwork gate. Even simple iron gates are highly sought after in home restorations and can easily swing up to £150 each. Nothing fancy at all, nothing grand. Knocked up by the local blacksmith. Plain mm. looks good, though, doesn't it? Really, you really plain. It it's charming. Somebody's... It's just... It's got a certain charm to it. Thing, and it's still got the little latch thing on there as well. Look, a really charming little item, and I can sell that fairly easily, so... Yeah, I'm no, really it's good. Well, I'd like again, it'd be nice to see somebody use it again. 
Oh, I don't know. Go on, then. I gave you a bid on the last one. You tell me what you want for this one. 50 quid. 50 quid. Stick it on the van. Yep, Top we'll have job. that. Thank yep, you. Thank you. Another one bought. Thank you. Cool. Lovely. Drew's visit to property developer Nick has unearthed some good pieces for his business, but Nick also buys and sells old cars. I've been trying to ignore it since I walked in here, the 2CV. Oh, dear. Drew's like a lamb to the slaughter. Ha-ha. One this of my could loves. be yours. Oh, is it for sale? It's for sale. God, it's not, is it? That is. Oh. Another car in the offing and another chance for Drew to beat down his obsession. If completely restored, this iconic car could drive home a price of £3,000. What state's the chassis in? Well, that's good. You know, it's it been patched over. I think I said an odd repair. I purchased a Citroen probably about nine, ten months ago. At one stage, I was going to give it to my son. Let's have a look at the chassis. It's had a great big sheet go right across the middle of the chassis, just a great big plate over the whole thing. The chassis rot like hell. Wouldn't take much to MOT it, especially with the workshop really? here. There's not many of them around. Some people hate them. I really like them. This is exactly the same as the first 2CV I had. I've had quite a few of these. It's a um, 1986 two-cylinder. No, I do like them. I like the sort of peasantness about them. Drew's carbine demons are definitely back and have found a friend in Nick. I've got to stop just buying cars. Stop next week. Stop next week. Buy this, Buy this one. 41,000, I say, the mileage is original, look at the condition of the interior. So what would you want for it as it stands, then? <clears throat> I think probably as it stood, 750. 750, ooh. With an MOT, 1,000 pounds. That's how confident I am. That wouldn't take that to put it through. I'm tempted, it just seems it's just a bit too much money. I'm sure there's nothing on it which will be detrimental. I think a gallon of fuel and a battery and she'll be away. I do like the idea of driving it away with an MOT. Yeah. But I'd, but I'd want to do that for 750 quid. Yeah, well, that's a little bit too cheap for me at the Is moment, I think. Yeah. A bit too much. <clears throat> I think we could do sort of 900. I'd split you in the middle. What if I come up to eight? Are we getting there? Because if you're, com you're very confident it's going to sell through I'm an MOT, through, you see? The MOT itself will cost me £54. Is that what it costs now for yeah. a test? Eight fifty, And then you paid for the MOT at 8 MOT'd. Drive it away. Drive it away. Another car bought. Just what I need. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't help it. It's an addiction. So you're addicted to something. Yeah, I'm addicted to rust. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Current score, Carbine Demons 2, Drew still zero. Some of the things today perhaps I've broken even on. Odd one, I've made a slight loss, but a couple of the others I've made a slight profit. So overall on the day, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, that's okay. Lovely, thank you, Nick. And as they leave, Nick tips them off with the name of another collector in the area, who they plan to visit the very next day. Thanks, yeah, thanks very much. Have a safe trip, and I hope tomorrow goes well. Will do. Cheers. Thank thanks, you, Nick. Nick. See you again. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care. So, that was a good day. Enjoyed that. Yeah. Bought a little bit, paid too much for the clock. And the little sign, general waiting area. I could put that in the workshop. Wait <laughs> general waiting around and Gavin and Julian having a fag area. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. The turnstile, was it heavy? <laughs> Strangely, yes. I wouldn't know. As soon as I saw you going to load that, I thought, I've got some important business in the kitchen with a kettle. As Drew and Julian finish up with their first collector, Rebecca is back home preparing a nice helping of humble pie. The shields that Drew bought came in to the showroom on the Friday. And I'll eat my words, um, we sold one on the Saturday. <laughs> Drew's won again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, that's going into the new nightclub in Clan Roost. Clan Roost is a small town just a few miles away from Conway. So Rebecca delivers the shield herself to landlady of Llewellyn's Bar and Club, Shirley. Hi, Hi Shirley. Oh. How are you? Thank you. Great. It's really good to see you. And you? 
Drew well, sends his great. regards. Oh, how's he getting on? He's all right. He's just busy. Behind. Wonderful. Where are you thinking of putting it? I don't know. I thought on the stone over there. OK. You hold it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Here, have a look. Thanks. Oh, yeah, that'd be OK, won't it? Fantastic. Oh, that looks, that Does looks that look great. good. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Fantastic. So why is Drew still on a mission to look for armour? I've always reef? got in, on a mission for something, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, the theme is Llewellyn, so it's King, the great King Llewellyn, because he's connected to this town. Yeah. So he's looking for shields, if we can get them with that sort of heraldry on it. Anything mm -hmm. really, that's connected to Llewellyn. If I can leave the shield here, is yeah. that all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It looks rather nice on the red, actually. It does, actually, yes. Yeah. Drew and Julian are on their way to Great Yarmouth to meet their second collectors of the trip, Ernie and his wife, Karen, who run a very unusual museum. Obviously, we're a Harry Museum and um, gift shop and everything else as well, so people can come in and see everything being made from start to finish. If we had to replace anything around the here, we had to a rib of an old ship or something like that, you know, you couldn't put a new piece of wood in anywhere, so had to come from underwater at sea. As well as all things herring, the place is filled with marine treasures, many of which keen diver and beachcomber Ernie has found himself. Well, this guy today has got for sale. He's got a museum of, of all things, herrings. Fish. Herrings. No, it's herring kipper? Yeah, smoked herring. Yeah. It's a kipper? Yeah. Also, a kipper alike. Hi there. So, Karen. It is, yeah. Hi, I'm Drew. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Karen Hi. is Hi. Ernie's wife. Pleased Met her as we first got there because Ernie was doing an art class. Uh, so we're just going to hang around to wait till he's finished doing that. Amazing place you've got here. Yeah, it's lovely. This place, an old herring curing works. Um, it's roughly 300 years old, and it's all made out of old shipwreck timbers. And we actually back on to the old medieval wall of Yarmouth, which is 700 years old. Ernie, my husband, does all the um, paintings and carvings. Looks like somebody we know. <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> it does. Yeah. You're not a fisherman, are you? No, no. It's, no it's a fisherman's friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bizarre place, the inside of the museum. It literally is where they smoke the herrings. So every time you look up the sort of 20, 30 feet above you of these little bars where they'd hang thousands of herrings to smoke. Is, is, is there anything in here that's for sale or...? Yeah. Or everything? Yeah. Everything. So everything in the building is for sale? There's, yeah. There's nothing off limits? Not really, no. Karen is willing to show Drew around, but she can't sell anything until consulting with Ernie, who has an attachment to his entire collection. I'd like to sell, because with the money we could have more holidays and a little bit more time off. <laughs> this one um, came out of a dike. Um, was that way up in the mud, so obviously the top's well preserved. Yeah. But then the bottom, because it'd been up with the tide going in and out on it and the dikes, yeah. Um, the bottom had rotted away, so we had the bottom repaired, yeah. which was very, very expensive to get the same wood. Sea trunks like these were used in the 18th century by sailors as a place to keep their possessions. Values vary enormously, but a rare example like this could fetch around £1,500. Is that real? Yes, that oh, yeah, checks yeah. Out, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this carving here yeah. is, I would say, older, and then... Yeah. Plus, see that bit there, Yeah. that's bit just different. It's obvious, it sort of yeah. jumps straight yeah. out at you. Is this something that's for sale? Um, I think so, yeah. Karen would love to sell off the old trunk and buy some new rolling luggage, but she must still wait for Ernie. That's the skull of a, of a whale. That's right, yeah. That's still got the blowhole blow in it. Blowhole of a whale yeah. there. It's called the lucky seat. The lucky seat? Yeah. People sit on there and hope to win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. yeah. Most of the stuff we've got in here has come up with a herring. I've seen a few of these old church pews you've got around as well, so do I need to talk to Ernie about these as well? Yeah. Yeah? This could be a great find. 19th century pews made of pitch pine are quite common on the salvage circuit, but an 18th century oak version like this is rare and could easily bring in excess of £400. How many have you got? Uh, three that size. You've got three with this carving on the, on the uh, ends. Uh, I don't know if they've all got both ends. This one has, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're actually sort of single-ended more than anything yeah, because they're, yeah. this, this is the side that's been against the, the wall. wall. Yeah, the church, yeah. 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 And they're a good size and yeah. the carving on them is quite nice. Yeah. 
I don't know if all three are like that. I know that one is. That okay. one is. I think the one outside's not as good. I think there. that one there's a bit longer. Get a better look at that end. There you go. How's that? <coughs> Did you say you had more of these? Yeah, there's n put that one in there and there's yeah. another one outside. One outside? Yeah, OK, there. we can see it in the light a bit yeah. better. So you want to put this one back in, Jules? I'm assuming this wasn't driftwood. <laughs> Definitely not. Where do you find these? Uh, they come out of a local church. No. I'm going to have a quick look at the other one while I'm just stood there, just to try and remember yeah. the shape, to see if yeah. they match or see if it's three-odd ends. That's one-ended, yeah? Yeah, single-ended as well. Do you want to lift that down? I'm trying to see the two together. Yeah, that which is quite normal is the carvings on the ends of these pews, the little fleur de lis on the end are different, mm. and that's that that is normal. Yeah. So each not each pew is individual, but there's just slight differences yeah. between them. Okay. That end's not very good on that uh, one. Ah, yeah, that one's. Oh dear, yes. Yeah. You got a dose of worm. Uh, it's got yeah, more than the dose of woodworm. <laughs> Was it? Oh, that yeah. Has, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. They've eaten it away completely. Yeah. That's beyond. Help, maybe do something with the top, but the rest of it's beyond help. So I think we're down to two and a half pews. So far, Drew has spotted several items he'd like to take home, but experience tells him that collectors are notoriously difficult to deal with, and Ernie is still nowhere to be seen. Frustrating, as there are treasures everywhere. Is that the um, coat of arms? Coat of arms for the yes, town. Yeah, yeah. So this is one we think came off um, the Wellington Pier when they were. Taken it to pieces. So you got this from the seafront, from there? Yeah. Did you salvage any other parts? Anything um, else come from there? Well, uh, there's lots of bits and pieces sort of turn up, but the one we have got we use as a water fountain, which is one of the terracotta urns that were all away along the seafront years ago. They're all gone now. Drew has a suspicion that this could be a rare Victorian terracotta urn worth thousands of pounds. He snaps a photo and sets the team back home sleuthing. Good morning, Drew Pritchards. Oh, hi, it's me. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. I've just sent some pictures through. He wants us to find out a bit more about it. Is that right? There we go, yeah. Um, have you managed to look at the bit, you know, the ropes wrapped around the bottom? For the maker's mark? Yeah. OK. It's right now. All right, mate, I've got it. Pissed off being there now. That's the pier cap it's been sat on. Yeah. But there should be a base, a little square base like this that would have sat on top of that. Is that still attached to that urn? Couldn't tell you. OK. So if we lift it, yeah. do you want to have a look? With a square? Yeah. OK. One, two. Watch your back. No. The urn I found in the corner there um, is uh, a 19th century one. It's a Tarza urn, highly decorated, terracotta. Uh, it would have had um, a base section to it, a small square plinth base. And then as the body comes down and underneath the body, there's the sockle, which is the the section that attaches to the main body of the urn? No. Nothing? No. OK, watch your fingers. No. It goes from oh, there shame. to around. There's a piece missing. About that bit, yeah. There's that piece, saying, yeah. and then there's a sockle that yeah. comes down, Yeah. then there's the base, then and then that would have there. sat on that. There's a square bit. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what's missing? What? The base. There's no base. And there's no base. Are you going to buy anyway? No. There's no base. I so. said that. That's right. The rope yeah. was wrapped around the bottom. So we've been. I know. I half an hour. Should I charge you by the hour? Yes. <laughs> okay. Should no, we carry on? Back through, yeah. Yeah. Back through. Okay. Finally, Ernie shows up, and Drew hopes he can begin negotiations with this compulsive collector. Hi, Ernie. Hi, oh, yeah. Hi. How are you doing? All right, sir. Good. Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, all right, mate. Hi. You're right. Julian. <laughs> Um, we've had, good, had a good look around. I know you've yeah. been busy. So there's yeah. a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. Uh, whether, a, whether they're for sale uh, and uh, what you'd want for them. Sometimes people, when they come up to you first, are very much on the defensive when you're trying to buy something. So it's best to try and get to know them first. We're not going to have that opportunity with Ernie. It's just straight in and I want to buy that and this is how much. Sometimes tricky. The box. Yeah, I like this. You like that? Yeah, let me get the other ending. That's a heavy old job, that one, isn't it? It eh? is. Yeah. That's a lovely old box, eh? Um, cool, I've had that, what? 30 odd years, I suppose, have we? Yeah, I'll Some other. Deal work on the back's lovely, isn't it? Got attached to it over the years, to be honest with you. So but, is, uh, this, is, this something you, is this something for sale or is it not for sale? Oh, I don't know. I suppose if the price is right, you know, I might sort of consider it, really. Well, um, but, uh, I think I know what you're going to ask for it. Couple of thousand, something like that. Mm. It's such a lovely thing yeah. to own, but 
at £2,000, I can't buy it. When it comes down to the artefacts, especially if they mean something to him, then I wouldn't even propose to put a price on them. He has to do that himself, cos whatever I put on them, he'd say, yeah, well, you, I wouldn't let it go for that, so... Well, you're too cheap, you see. You, send, <laughs> you tell them too cheap. You know, you've got to, you know, swing it a bit. <laughs> The other thing that I'm interested in is, is this um, church pew here. You've got a, three of these. Yeah. Um, they are, unfortunately, they're, they're great. I really like them. But on this end of all of them, that's been against the wall. And you can see where half of the carving was never there. No. That was designed no. to go flat against the wall. And then the plaster was, was there. But what I was wondering, what are they for sale? And if so, what would you want for them? Say for these two, so it's for the two good ones. And then there's a sort of the restoration project outside. So I just wondered if you had any idea what you'd like for them. Never thought about it. Um, I didn't think for a minute you'd pick on the, all the other stuff around here. All right. <laughs> there's so much stuff here. I know to I pick know, a yeah. church pew out of a, out of uh, a herring yeah. museum. That's right. It's yeah. a little odd, I know. I can't say, really. Um, what about you, girl? You got any ideas? Mm. Mm. Would you want me to give you a bid on them then? Yeah, that make life easier for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll start mewing. If these had the carvings to both sides, we'd probably pay about £250 per pew because they're just a huge difference. Mm. But that makes a massive difference. So what I'm prepared to do is £100 each for these pews, and I'd give you £50 each for the rest... £50 for the restoration project and any other pieces that you have. But that is a restoration project. I'm going to have to probably spend 100 on that one to make it structurally sound. You mean the third one? The third one, yeah. So that's so it'd be 250 for the three pews. Right. Up to you. For 250 quid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't match up. That no, wouldn't go? No. OK. No. I just tend to think of all the people that are sat on and things like this, you see. OK, well, but let's... Again, there's a bit of history. We ain't doing too good in the way of selling it, but I know we... <laughs> <laughs> so what, what would you be happy with? What would I be happy with? I don't know. I, I, I tend to think I'd... I'd I'd have uh, been happy with 300 quid for each one. You know, maybe it's a bit too far out. That's yeah. a bit steep. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. What if I said we'd go for the three... Can we do 350? What, for all three? Yeah. No, no. I'll Tell go, you what, then. Go the right. 350 and you keep the one outside. <laughs> 350. So it's 100... 175 a piece. It's like giving you a bit of a profit on them. Yeah. No, they no. Get, get enough. No. Ernie is uh, tough to deal with, and uh, the price is the price, and it's going to be tricky to move him. I can't give you six. I can't no, give you six. Can't give you I can't give you six hundred quid to them. I'd like to buy them. I do want because yeah. I know eventually it's all going to come on the market. So, and I don't get into this neck of the woods very often. Well, thinking about it, I don't know. It's hard to part with these things. You see, um... mm. there are some things that Ernie won't part with. They'd be like cutting his left arm off. But um, I, I definitely would. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll... Yeah, I'll keep two. You, you buy that one. OK, what do you want for just the one, then? I want 250 really, but do you, what do you reckon? 230. 230? 230, and that's it, top dollar. I'm going to make, like, that much. That's it. There's just a little bit in it for me. <laughs> yeah, no, do I believe that? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Deal? 230. 230. All right. Lovely. Nice one. Thank you, Ernie. Good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get her outside. <laughs> Ernie, we're done. OK. Oh, we're going to get off. Anyway, look, really Thank nice to meet much. you. Thank you very much. It's lovely to meet you, too. Thanks for Thank all the you. tea. Ernie, Thank been a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely to really meet you. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Thank Thank you go, pal. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Interesting place they've got there. Yeah. Ernie and Karen, they were nice people, weren't they? They were nice people, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Ernie did have a striking resemblance to a purveyor of extremely fine fish snacks. <laughs> yes, he did, actually, I that is. I think he's probably a captain. Do you reckon? Yes. You think he's a captain? Wow. <laughs> oh, dear. Though the Herring Museum provided only one catch for the crew back home, Drew is heading back with a good haul from a three-day road trip and a nervous announcement for Rebecca regarding his growing collection of cars. Lots of nice new stock. you like this. It's very nice. That's the sort of thing. There's hardly anything, if anything at all, to do to that 
take all the old bits of wire off it and just give it a very small clean. I don't really want much done to it at all. One of your customers might be interested in that for uh, a restaurant. Oh, brilliant. OK. Yeah. It's not heavy, Gavin. You all right with it? Yeah. I know we've got hundreds of pews in stock, but... Bought this one. It needs work to this end, as you can see. Mm. This came out of a herring museum. Herring? Herring. Fish. 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 Herring Ooh. the bird. Herring. <laughs> I thought it said herring. Flying fish. I know we've got, like, what, 300 pews in stock? Yeah, but not like this one. No, it's just a nice this one. Is... It's got a bit of age to it as well, particularly to the ends and the back. Maybe the seat's been replaced, but it's quite an early one underneath all that. How old? 1700s. Gosh. Yeah. Great. Put on the shop entrance. Yeah. We should charge admission. And charge we? admission. North Wales is only free museum. <gasps> yeah, needs a little bit of work, so we'll leave it straight out of here. It'll go to Paul, get it welded up. Yeah. Just need to get a little crack on there. <laughs> what do you think? Just yep. a clean, got a little bit of a chip in there, Gav. So just a wash and a little dab of paint and that one's ready to go. The best thing we got was this. 24-hour electric clock. Fantastic. Lovely. It works. I'm just deciding whether to leave it in the paint, strip it or polish it. I'm not sure what to do with it yet. Really don't know. What do you think? Just leave it in the paint. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I need to rewire it, I just need to check the wiring on it. Yeah, that's not a problem. It works. At least it, if it works, that's the biggest problem. It works, but yeah. it's not so clever, the wiring is. So what I'd say is let's not plug it in. We know it works. We've got time yeah. to do that. We know it works. We've seen it working. All straight to you, mate. All right, nice one. And that's it. Really? <laughs> Wait for it. Oh, yeah. I bought a car. Another car? Yes. What it's a good car. Car? car. It's a Citroen 2CV. Coming with an MOT. It's low mileage, really original, great condition. It's just desperate for a clean and a polish. How many cars can can we have? We'll put it in the shop. It's only teeny, so, so we'll stick it in the shop and get it sold. I dread the day that our yard at home ends up looking like some of the yards Drew's described to me that he finds when he's out on the road. Should we have a cup of tea? Keeping clear of a domestic, restorer Gavin gets to work on the 18th century pew from the Herring Museum. This side would have been into the wall. So we just have to make the best of what we can out of it. Oh, that's all right. That's as good as, that's as, good as it's going to get. It's not bad. I definitely think it's got more age to it. This here, mm. the way that narrows down there. I think we'll go with mid-18th century. And it's just a matter of days before the items begin to sell. The clock's been collected in the morning um, and it's on the way to Torquay, to a, a private residence. And there we go. It'll be a while before Drew can take delivery of his prize 2CV, but he's more than happy to make do until then with his purchase from Hamish. I bought recently a Series 1 Land Rover, and today we've brought it up here to see a friend of mine, John Craddock, to get it valued. John Craddock is uh, Mr Land Rover. That's a light one, Drew. Yep. 52, 53. It's the moment of truth. Has Drew's love of cars overtaken his business instinct? Aluminium bulkhead. Yep. You don't see many of them. God, that's beautiful. I've never seen one that nice. Really? Really. Didn't know it was that rare. They only made them in 52, late 52, October, November. Wow. They are very, very desirable. Rebecca is intrigued to hear John's evaluation. Will she be eating another slice of humble pie? Mm, chassis is nice, isn't it? Yeah. You've got an, an engine that runs. Mm. Bolt the wings back on, bit of welding on the front dumb irons. You put that back together, mm. it's got to be worth two and a half thousand, I'd have thought. But that bulkhead, that's where the money is. What's it worth? I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to take it off, but... 
I can see that ball kid making a thousand pounds. Fantastic. I can't wait to get it home and start messing around with it over the weekend. I just, just can't wait and go to the garage and just go into full Land Rover world and start tinkering and messing with it. And just, that's the fun. For me, that's the fun. That's the bit why I like these old cars. It's like I can go in there and do it myself. Don't trust me. I do, we do trust well, so you, we do. How much stuff do we sell a year? A lot. Thousands of items. A lot. A Who lot. does all the buying of these items? You, darling. Yes. OK, thank, thank you very much. So, thank you very much. So who's right and who's wrong? You're right, darling. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> On Salvage Hunters. To hit the yeah, front door. Drew's search for the rare and unique takes him inside Britain's finest homes. Check that out. Not bad, eh? And when it comes to bagging some country house prey, he soon finds that the female of the species <laughs> is definitely more deadly than the male. 1,500. Come on, Drew. Final offer. Yeah, I'm not going to come between man and his wife. But can Drew work his charm, or will this hunter be returning home empty-handed? That's it. A table. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. That's a mantis. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, good, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah. There are well over a 1,000 stately homes and country seats in Britain, and if he had his way, Drew would visit all of them. Not as a sightseer, but as a salvage hunter. Country houses, their outbuildings, their stuff is of superb quality, and I absolutely cannot wait to get there, really. Come on, Ed. Come on. With his trusty sidekick, Julian, Drew heads out on a country house marathon. First is a five-hour drive to Devon, to a grand country home long owned by the family of Francis Fulford. My name is Francis Fulford, and this is behind me is my house, called the same name as me, Great Fulford. And we've lived here for more than 800 years. Today is going to be an interesting one. We're going to see Francis Fulford. His family have owned this house since... God, 11-something. Oh, Christ, yeah. Fulford not only has a great home, he might just be Drew's favourite kind of aristocrat. And he's skint. Generally, yeah. And loads of these lords and ladies are broke. They've got no cash because they've got these fabulous houses and nobody realises it costs £100,000 a year just to keep the thing stood up. Yeah, true. Very My good, gut though. reaction is he's already flogged everything because he's skint. The stuff that's been in the family for the last two or three hundred years, he's not going to want to sell it. So it could be a total bust today. Aha, here we are. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Wait till you see this place. Oh. Ta da! Check that out. Not bad, eh? Hello. Often with big country houses, Drew is only given access to the sheds and outbuildings. Whilst these are usually good hunting ground, it's inside the house where he really wants to be today. Pretty damn impressive, yeah. Hi, Francis. Hi. Drew. Yes. How are you doing? We spoke on the phone. That's right. And what are you, uh, hard hand? I'm the hard help, yes. Yeah. Right, so. You do the heavy lifting. Right, right. come on yeah. in. What do you want to see? Uh, everything, to be honest with you. Anything you've got for sale, particularly things in the house. But after a tempting glimpse of the inside, Francis has other ideas and takes Drew straight outside. We'll go and duck and dive up into some of the old buildings I've got round about, okay. which are full of bits and pieces which come out of a house. Fingers crossed, we might find something you want. OK, so where are we going? Up here? Yep, Leah. Yep, straight across. We've accumulated a load of clutter and junk, and some of that junk and clutter is scattered around the buildings and the yards which adjoin the house. Lead on is through those portals and mouse around. Don't worry if an odd bird disturbs you. These carvings are nice, aren't they? 
These are good, Francis. Where did these come from? They came out of a ball about 1690, I suppose. When you inherit a heist like this, people often say, what are you trying to do? It is inevitable that every now and again you want to clear some of it out, and sometimes it does clear out. But sometimes things just go on sticking there. One day I'll put them back. Are they, are, these aren't for sale. I don't think they're for sale. Now, one day I have my ambitions. I'll use them again. Yeah. Oh, they're good. I like these. Underneath the table, there was a pair of cloches. And what I like about them is they're a pair. And the colour's good. He's painted over the top, and it's old paint as well, which I like. So these have come off the estate, have they? Yeah, they've been here all the time. It's basically a portable greenhouse, isn't it? It is. Cloches, French for bell, are used to extend the life of plants by keeping the frost away. Drew could easily sell these Victorian examples as interior decorative features for around £300. They're in really nice order, mostly original glass as well. I think we've only got one break there. Is this something that you'd consider letting go? Yeah, I, I, yeah? You, you, I would consider... I would consider accepting an offer for that. How much would you like for them? What do you reckon? I was expecting you to make me an offer okay. and, and start from there. OK, all right. I thought Francis was going to be really tricky and I thought I'll go in with a, an OK price, but, you know, a little bit cheap. 150 for the pair? Yes, I think that'd be fair. Bit of luck. Fantastic. He's happy, I'm happy. I thought you were going to put up a fight. Thank no, you. I won't put up a fight if it's a fair offer. <laughs> Great, OK, and I'm really happy with those. That's fab. OK, so I want you to sell me the really good stuff in the house, you see. That's what I'm after. But Francis still isn't ready to let Drew loose on the inside of the manor. Instead, he wants to show him another piece of the house's past, a man trap. My God, look at this, Jules. <laughs> that is to trap a man and take his leg off or at least make sure he doesn't run away. It's illegal to set a man trap, but they can be bought and sold and they're growing in popularity. An example like this can sell for anything up to £1,000. Have you ever had this working? Oh, yeah. Yeah? It'll you know? take two of you to set it. I'll take your leg off. I would take your leg off. Just press that. That drops down. Watch yourself. Yeah, that's not actually. Well, that's... That's... That's it, that's it. Yeah, I know what it is. My finger's in there as well. When I got burgled at the shop, I'd love to have a couple of these lying around. <laughs> Do that. Don't do that. Just vicious. What a thing. God, imagine... And you couldn't get out of it either, could you? Because you couldn't push both sides down. Much call for them up in Chester, do you think? Yeah, North Wales, very popular. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. Everybody wants one of these. I didn't understand why he w didn't want to make me a generous offer. We'll leave it. Yeah. Thanks for the offer. OK, so where I really would like to see is inside the house. Well, quite a lot of stuff is stored and has become a, a repository, if you like, for... Um, the funk bits of kit. OK. So we'll go and have a look in there. Yeah. And we'll see if you... anything takes your fancy. We'll go through the Great Hall. Finally, Drew is into the inner sanctum, but he needs to keep his fingers crossed not only for a good find, but also for the approval of Mrs Fulford, who Francis must consult on most buys. everybody got a wife who says, oh, don't throw that away, it might come in useful sometime. So, Put it up in the loft and I'll get round to mending it one day. You dream about getting into places like this and um, being allowed to buy things. And uh, it's privilege, you know, you don't get into these places all the time. And there's different ages of panelling all over the place. Oh, there's different... Yeah, the, what we think happened is they probably um, picked up the panelling from around the house in about 1690 when they were res having a sort of a rush of blood to the head and spending money. <laughs> <laughs> these are lovely. Yeah. They're gorgeous, love those. Really beautiful. Like this. Would this be... Would this be something that you'd consider well, selling? Well, I might do. I'd have to consult with uh, my wife on that matter. OK. There's another one over here as well. Would this be something you'd consider getting rid of? Yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah. Period furniture is very popular with designers and decorators, and even in this state, Drew can sell them for around £300 each. It's well made, it's got great proportions, and it's just beaten up enough that you've just got to fall in love with it, really. Must be something I'd be interested in, for sure. Do you want to give me a clue what you'd like for it? Well, I was thinking about sort of 150 for that. Yeah, I was thinking about exactly the same figure. Well, we really. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we were. No, I'm happy with that. No, okay. I'll, I'll take that, Francis. It's going to find a far better home with Drew and with who he sells it to 
We don't think it if it had stayed here. Another beautiful day. Oh, we could do with rain. Just as he's leaving, Drew finds a rare 19th century granite trough. Nice big trough. Popular with garden designers, depending on age and size, they can sell for between 300 and 500 pounds. The method of making a trough like that has probably not changed since the Iron Age. Is this something you'd sell as well, Francis? It would be something at the right price, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they fetch a price now. They do. Have you got anything that would lift it up? Have you got a tractor? No. I haven't got a forklift, no. I suspect if you tip the farmer up the road a few quid, he's probably got a forklift. And he'd come down and move it for you. It's generally in good. It's generally in good order. Sometimes they're broken or they've been drilled for holes. There should be a, a water hole here somewhere. There you go. So it's been drilled to let the water out there. What would you want for it if we were able to move it? I'll be looking at, I don't know, two twenty something like that. Well, I'd take it for that if we could pick it up. While Drew waits for a farmer and a forklift, he and Julian prepare the trough for transfer. Meanwhile. Francis goes to consult with the missus. Sorry. When Francis comes back, he's clearly got something on his mind. I Drew and I had done a deal, but unfortunately, as in most things, there's a third party to be involved in this, um, who came raging down like the Syrian descends like a wolf on the fold. And um, that third party, my wife, she's convinced she doesn't want to sell it, although, strangely, it sat over there completely neglected for the last 20 years without anybody wanting it. OK. But now, because you want it, she wants it. OK. As a result, I'm going to ask you mm. to release me from the deal. That was all slightly very embarrassing. I'm not going to come between man and his wife, so fair enough. OK, well, I understand, I understand. Really, no, really... No, it's fine, it's fine. You're sorry? It happens. Well, don't, don't worry about it. Happens. I'm sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. You can't ever anticipate it. No. The female of a species. Well... But there we are. So I'm presuming that the, uh, the sofa's are off as well. I'm really sorry, mate. She actually has an emotional attraction to that sofa, which I'm not aware of. She nursed our twins on that sofa. And it's not just the sofa and the trough. It's also a no-deal when it comes to the cloches. I have to respect his wishes, and if that's what they want, we'll happily let them keep it. Drew and Julian load up their one remaining purchase and leave before Francis gets into any more trouble. It's exactly what I wanted, a piece of uh, an English country house. The look, the feel, and even that... See how beaten up it is with the secondary cover over the top and everything? Even that, for me, is just charming. OK, we're done? We all packed up? All packed. Francis, <laughs> been a pleasure, really has. All the best. And to you. And to you. Thank you, sir. All the best Thank you very much. and great fun, and you never know, if I'm ever up in bloody Chester, <laughs> I might come and knock on your door. Come and see us. Come and, and buy something off And you'll you. buy something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see you. Thanks, Francis. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. The no, no, no. is like hell. It's, it's a classic country house armchair. It's the thing I've been, you know, I'm always looking for those. But I talk about disappointing on that trough. Yeah. It doesn't get any closer and then no prize, does it? At this moment, I'm £30 down because I have to pay the farmer. <laughs> Seriously, I've gone there to buy something and I've lost money. So the only winner is the farmer for getting 35 quid for moving it. Yeah, you can go out to the pub tonight. Back at base in North Wales, Drew's wife, Rebecca, restorer Gavin and online sales manager Mark are expecting a van full of marvellous manor house booty. Do you believe where we got this from? Um, no. Francis Fulford. Yeah. So I managed to buy this off him, which is proper... proper 19th century armchair. I'm just trying to think what his house would look like if he had that in it. <laughs> you know, we've got people clamouring for this stuff. It's period. Drew's business depends on the fast turnover of lots of items, and one armchair just won't do. He needs to get back on the road and fast. However, we've got plenty of restoration work to be getting on with. There's no need for Drew to be here at all. I'm going to crack the whip, and he's going to go off to see um, a manor house called Grey's Court, dating back to 1080, and I'm sure full of wonderful items. It's off to York, to one of the oldest continuously occupied buildings in the country. 
It's currently being turned into a hotel by owner Helen and coordinator Penelope. My name is Helen Herity. I own Grey's Court. My name is Penelope Ward and I'm the events coordinator. I'm just dying for some quality. I could just do with, you know, something really period, a really good period table or a lovely period bench or painting or mirror or something. This is expensive area, high Victorian, lots of money. Watch the corner. Watch that corner up there. There's York Minster. Look at that. Wow, it's gorgeous. Hello. Hi, you must be Drew. Yeah. Hello, I'm Helen. Drew. Good to meet you. And you. I'm Penelope. Hi, Hi nice Penelope. to meet you. Great. Uh, well, Jules and I have come up today. I believe you've got some things for sale, possibly. Yes, we've got quite a few interesting things. This time, he's dealing with the ladies of the manor face to face. But will they be any easier to win over? Well, the house itself dates back to 1080. It was commissioned by the first Norman Archbishop uh, who built York Minster. I bought this house six years ago. We've been developing it as a hotel ever since. Wow. So is this... You have this open to the public as well? All the gardens are open and people can have tea and scones in the garden. This is one of the only buildings in York that has an access from the medieval it's walls. So unique. you can walk around... These are the medieval walls of the castle? That's yeah, right, and then that's drop right. into the garden. It's amazing seeing the min Minster so close behind. I know. It's staggering. OK, so yeah. these are the sheds. Yeah, it's this room here. This room here. Yeah. It's some okay. of the furniture from the house. What I'm hoping for is to find some, you know, period chimney pieces, some nice mirrors, a good run of chairs, a great big table, some cabinets, something interesting and of period and of real quality. As I say, there's a lot of stuff that we've just sort of accumulated over the years and not known quite what to do with. That's the old four-poster bed. We've all slept in that one. <laughs> yes, but not together. That's quite, a, that's quite a nice early this piece of thing, carving, yes. isn't it? It's supposed to be part of a, a very early 17th century bed, but we're not sure of the provenance on that. Okay. We've got two sides. This is the end, the side. Oh, here are the sides, here, okay. actually. Do you have another panel like this? No, I'm afraid not. Just that's that one? Just the head. OK. I don't know whether he'd be interested in the stuff we've got here. It's a chance for us to sort of get rid of some furniture that will otherwise sit there for the next 20 years. Where did these come from? They were made for the house. When it was part of the St John's University in the Long Gallery, they had three of these tables in a huge row down the middle. They look like 1900, 1910, somewhere around there. Right. Drew knows that large tables such as these with cast iron provenance will command big money. He could easily get around £3,500 for each of these once restored. It's exactly the thing I wanted to find. Nice big plank tops, great colour with complete known history, and they were made behind me at York Minster. Are these for sale? Uh, yes, yes, they would be. This is Drew's chance to bring home that one big item that Rebecca and the team are so eagerly expecting. But Penelope is armed and ready to do battle with this hunter. <laughs> what would you like for them? Who do I talk money with? Penny does the negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't do money very well at all. And I've heard about Drew's reputation, and I think he would... Um... Yeah, I think Helen would probably give it away, wouldn't you, Helen? I find the whole concept of haggling and just really, really embarrassing. I can't do it. I don't know. I think um, uh, in order for us to replace them, it would be about sort of two, two thousand pounds, two and a half thousand. Probably each to replace. Yeah. Each. Got... Yeah. To replace. Each. Yes, it would be. No, that's too much. I, I'd like to pay. I, we're in a bit of the same area. We're in thousands, anyway, not hundreds. Okay. I'd happily pay a thousand each. Wow, that's quite uh, that's quite a difference, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Helen? I think two thousand pounds is a good price for one. Yeah, no, I, can't, I just can't get there. They are good. We're not, you know, I'm not trying to fool you and say these aren't good tables. These are great tables, and as a matched pair, they're so much more valuable to me as well. So can we get to two thousand five hundred for the pair as they are, and I'll take them away. Mm. Well, if we said 1500 for one... Yeah. I'd like to pay a bit less than that. Can we do sort of 1250 and I'll take whichever one I can? They're both in re similar condition, but 1250 because one's nowhere near as attractive as, as, as mm. taking a pair. I can see that, but... Yeah. Yeah, strange. 1500 plan. come on, Drew. Penny's clearly enjoying having a that bit of a laugh funny. and a deal. With this, uh, <laughs> but I think Penny wants to do that. I think she has. She wants to uh, to do a deal. That's leaving a very, very small bit of profit in there for me, and I've got work to do. So come on, 1250 is is where I need to be. I thought I was ready for him, but 
not as ready as I thought, no. He's very good. <laughs> 14. Final offer. <laughs> Final <laughs> offer. That's it. 1400. 14. And I can pick the best one. You can choose You can take one. the best one and you'll put it on the van for me. Yeah, you no. really <laughs> do, don't. <laughs> no, you have to take it yourself. You sure? It's cash and carry. All yeah. oh, right, it's not delivered. Andrew was very good. I mean, he did get it for a lot cheaper than we would have originally let Great. it go okay. for. 1400. Okay. I'll take the best okay. one. Lovely. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great. There you go, Jules. Great. Great. Pick the best one, check it on the van. Okay, all right, yeah. no problem. <laughs> on my shoulder. I can't bear parting with anything, but but I'm glad it's going to a good home. And um, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with the day. It's been, it's been fun. I found this book, and in it, see? Ah. There they are in the gallery, set up for lectures. So there's three of those tables originally. Yes, there were. I think, That's Helen, great. that we should sell him it. How much, how much will you give us for it? She's already given it to me. Oh. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> 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 you missed the trick there. It was our quid. Yeah. Wow. Mm. OK, well, what we'll do is, when we sell the table, well, this will be given to the people or pinned up underneath so they can, they can know where it's come Let's from. See what it's there. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, look, Thank it's been a great. pleasure. And I've really Thank enjoyed you. the house. It's beautiful. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. OK, <laughs> should we get off? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. OK, we'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was nice, wasn't it? Pleasant afternoon. Yeah, pretty pleasant. All of the tables we get like that, they'll sell pretty quickly. I reckon, you know, it's going to be a good few hundred quid to sort that out. It's a great piece, but once again, it's a disappointing haul from a location that promised so much. I liked it, but I tell you what, we're going to get grief when we get back to the shop. Rebecca's going to kill you. Oh. Mm. That's it. A table. It's nice, isn't it? It's um, yeah. stunning. So it needs some work, so we'll have to get Alex to sort it out for yeah. us, but it's such a good size. French polisher Alex is just up the road from the shop. Drew has been using him for 10 years. Drew's dropped the 12 foot refectory table off with me in solid oak, and it's a bit dark and grubby. And Drew likes them light, silvery, with a bit of a golden tinge to them. So in order to get that colour, we're going to strip off all the old varnish. You can see it's getting a sort of silvery sheen to it, just from giving it a very fine wire walling. Like, now we've got this lovely, silvery, clean look to it, nice and light, but still keeping some of that original character. And if you compare that to how it looked before, you can see it looks a bit grubby, dark, a little bit tatty, really. The tabletop's got a big gap in. This has been caused by shrinkage of the planks over the last 100 years, really. It's opened up a gap about a quarter of an inch, about, about eight millimetres. So we're going to have to cut the ends of the table, bring the centre section back in, and then put the ends back on. Not something that Drew would like to watch, but when it goes back to him, he'll be happy. While Alex continues restoring the table, Drew and Julian hit the road once again. This time, it's a three-and-a-half-hour drive to Chavenage House in the Cotswolds. Today, we're going to go and see a lady called Caroline, who owns a spectacular Cotswold manor house. I'm Caroline Lazy Williams. I'm a member of the Lazy Williams family, who've lived at Chavenage House since 1891. Primarily, we keep the house as a family home, but obviously, if we can open up to the public for events and weddings, etc., we will. They're saying there's possibly things for sale. So the opportunity, as usual, is massive if there's anything of note here. Who knows? Oh, wow, look at this place. What a pad. Hi, Caroline? Yes. Drew. Oh, Drew, hi. hi. Nice to see How you. you doing? This hi. is Julian. Julian. Hello, Julian. Come on in. Wow. This is the Great Hall. We believe the middle core of the house was built in about 1385. So we've got a medieval core. And then a lot of additions. This is the family. This is the family, yeah. My great-great-grandfather, 
who I can thank for being here because he made the money. That is quite a spectacular chimney piece, isn't it? No, it's lovely. I mean, it's later than the rest of the room, about yeah. 1680. These windows are interesting because they're a medley window, so they're fragments of lots of different windows obviously put together over time. In addition to salvage hunting, Drew has been restoring stained glass windows for over 20 years and spots a particularly rare example. You've got a beautifully rare piece of stained glass that you don't see very often, and it's the sundial in stained glass. Oh, right. There's a whole society to, to dedicated to finding and uh, uh, researching them. For a man who carries his cap in his back pocket, um, he certainly appears knowledgeable. Well, I should imagine, I'm guessing, but is there nothing in the house for sale? Oh, we've been very much the family who haven't sold to survive. Yeah. And everything in the house... I think is no-go area. OK. But I'm very happy to show you some sheds and things outside where we've... Yes, please. So the house is a no-go, and once again, it's off to the sheds. But okay. Drew's optimistic he'll find something. Round to the back to find things... Tradesman's entrance. Well, <laughs> yeah. Outside, there's certain bits which they've been stored for 30, 40 years. Nobody really wants them. The more space you've got, the more rubbish you've got, and a lot of it is rubbish. Well, there's a bit of good stonework under here, but I don't know... Oh, yeah, it's got a, it's got a face in there. What they are, I thought they were off a gable, but they're not. They are staircase supports. Really? Yeah. So you've got a, a lion on that one. Beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. Very simple medieval-type face on it. It's not medieval, it's later than that, but it's still it's pseudo, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. OK, sorry, I'll stop messing about and in your garden And then now, the, the cannon is just anti-feth. <laughs> 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 anyway, come into the stable yard. Come on, dogs. This is what we call the workshop, but there are some quite interesting okay, bits. Some, they're interesting, these pieces behind here. I think that is a big... Big wardrobe. I seem to remember my grandfather's house keeping glasses and, you know, it's in the sort of dining room cupboard, as it were. Just trying to look at these, see if any of these carvings are original. They look oh. quite original. I'd say that piece is much older than everything surrounding it. And you can see on the back where... There, where they've made them up, see how much thicker they are, oh, these yeah. pieces here. That is not as old as that, right. and that's much newer than that. And these clearly are English, oh, English linen fold panels in a Gothic manner. That's probably been a piece of wall panelling. That's interesting, because when I walked around the front of the house, there was English Gothic architecture of the same age as that panelling. I like identical. So I'm thinking, oh, as soon as I saw it, I thought, that's from the house. It's got to be. 18th century panels like these are popular for restoration or just as decorative pieces and could easily fetch upwards of £500 each. Interesting. Another one as well. Just the other side there, so there's more of it. So these are worth a bit too? Yes, they're definitely something I'd be interested in buying. And this is the stuff that really gets me excited. Finding elements of old buildings like this is just lovely, especially when they've been tucked away for so long. One of the problems with Drew's job is that when he identifies something of interest, the owner often decides to keep it, even when they previously had no idea what it was. But I could see your face change as soon as you saw those. <laughs> yes, I feel like they yeah. knew the doors were like this, but I had no idea that was there. Yeah. So now seeing it afresh, is this still something you'd be interested in selling? To be honest, I have no idea what it's worth. I, mean, I would have to consult with, with the family. Oh, dear. It seems Drew may be dealing with another unseen matron of the manor. Obviously, I'd like to buy it all, but we'll see. It would be rather sad to sell it out of the house when it has been our sort of ethos to try to keep as much in the house as possible. Should we continue through continue the other Continue through, and then we'll yeah. have a chat about it. We'll have a chat about this and discuss, because yeah. it is something I want to purchase. Yeah, but I'll, okay. I'll think about it. This lamp down here. There's one straight down where my parents use, and then that one. Well, I'll tell you what, you're thinking about the panelling. I'll have to think about this, okay. because it's just, it's a project and we've got an awful lot. I don't think you'll find much in there, to be honest. Though Drew suspects he won't be able to buy the carved panels, he suddenly finds something Caroline might be able to sell without consulting the family. Have you found something? Yeah. That's rather nice. It's a English Art Deco ceiling light. Really good one. Good quality. Finding an Art Deco lamp in this house was a style that sort of threw me. I'm thinking, well, you must have found this somewhere else because there's no Deco influences anywhere in the house. To me, I thought it, when he first showed it was a jelly mould. So what date would you say that was? It's the 20s? Yes, spot on. Period lighting from any era sells well, and this piece of 1920s glamour could easily bring over £250. Shame about the damage. Can you open it up? I just want to open it up again and just see if that damage is visible through the frame. 
Ah, uh, where was where, where was that? Where did you find? You passed me that piece. It fell out. So you broke it. Oh, that'll be <laughs> it. You pass it to me, and I broke it. That'll be the way it works again, is it? Yeah. Oh, you can just see it. People love or hate it. Yeah. So uh, you know, but I think it's lovely. Yes, it's not my style, to be no, honest. Exactly, but yeah. I'm yeah. slightly more used to the oak panelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this a, is this for sale? Well, I mean. It, yeah. Yes, potentially. I'm gonna, uh, potentially, Ten potentially, potentially, yeah. I mean, that's potentially. much more likely. Are we able to discuss money, or is that do you need to go and... Um, dis... What sort of value is that? Um, as it stands there, I think we'd pay um, about £75 pounds right. for that. It would have been more, but there's a chip to the glass there. It is just about visible. Um, and I mean, we've got honest... it, we can stick it back on. Yeah. To be absolutely honest, I have no idea it was even there. No. The house isn't so it's set up in the 1920s, and when he actually offered 75 quid for it, um, I thought that wasn't bad. I could pay for <laughs> a few bottles of gin, which we probably need. Is this a sale? Am I allowed to buy this one, do you think? Yeah. OK, wonderful. No, it's well spotted. It's my job. <laughs> Although she doesn't have the authority to sell everything, Drew clearly has a fan in Caroline. You can't take Drew past any pile without him climbing up and started fumbling around. He was interested in all sorts of things, I mean, whether it was your dog or your ferret or whether it was your panini picture. George, you must get everybody searching around. Um, it's a fascination I've had my whole life, to be honest with you. You need somebody like Drew to really kindle your interest, and there is a value in what we call our rubbish, and it was just fascinating to go around with somebody who could see it. Things. In another shed, one of Drew's favourite things, a battered old armchair. He usually sells on chairs like these without reupholstering, and an example like this could fetch around three hundred pounds. Okay, there's another one underneath it, isn't there? Can I see that one as well? You don't want a lot, do you? Just uh, seeing if it's got a good enough look about it. Not I think it has. Well, it has got a good. I look. think it has. Yeah. So would you cover this in leather? No, I won't. I I sell these on as they are. Right. So I'm looking. I'm looking at the frame and the proportions, and does it sit well? Is it good looking? Uh, are all the bits that you can't repay. And you can see through this hideous screen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you imagine that in a beautiful sort of calico yeah. colour all over, and then the frame polished back, it's a very good-looking chair. There you go, there's the original fabric on it there. Oh, wow, that's rather nicer, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Isn't that? That's beautiful. Should we take it down anyway, Jules? Yep. Oh. See, that one, to when... me, is not quite as good-looking as the other one. When are they called nursing chairs? Could be a nursing chair, but usually they've got no arms on. In case you've got twins. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking great deal of money here, but because they, they need a yeah. hell of a lot of work. So what sort of price? Um, I think you'd be surprised. I'll give you £150 for that wrecked armchair. Golly, yeah. uh, that is a surprise. That is a surprise. <laughs> the one behind, yeah. 20 quid. Right. I mean, that does surprise me. I mean, I... I I'm I, surprised how much I've just offered you for it. <laughs> but I well, think... I don't go I back. No, I think it's worth it. Do you want to go and discuss, or do you need... Have yeah, you I will. I'll just go and get my mother and just look at, look sure. at the chairs. I'm not happy with the light. OK. So far, Drew has made only one small buy, and the jury is still out on the chairs and the carved panels that he really wants. But he'll have to wait while Caroline consults with her parents. I've just spoken to my father. Um, he thinks they're intrinsically valuable to the house. As Drew thought, now he has drawn attention to the value of the panels, they're off limits. It's an occupational hazard. I'm sorry, but uh, just feel, especially the, the bit you show me here. Yeah, I can uh, understand. Uh, I can understand why that one for sure. Yeah. I just think is we wrong to sell something which come out of the house. No, fair enough. I do okay. agree. I'm not upset at all. Not at all. It stays here, where it should be. What about the chairs then? What did they say about the chairs? Chairs <laughs> chairs happy to go. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there wasn't a huge amount for you to find. Don't worry, it's not a problem. Good. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, good. I enjoyed it anyway, yeah. and the good. house is stunning. Well, we, we feel very beholden to it, really, but it's, it is wonderful. It's been a great privilege to grow up here. What a pad. Very nice. 
I'll send my man around in the morning, we'll do the paperwork, I'll take it. <laughs> Though two chairs and a light are less than Drew anticipated, he's hoping the last country house on the list will bring greater riches in the morning. It's a short stop from Gloucestershire to Leinster. Drew really needs to fill up at this next venue to make this two-day trip worthwhile. We're going to see Edward Simpson at Burton Court today. He's got loads of stuff to sell. This is Burton Court. I've lived here all my life. My father bought the house 50 years ago, and I do a whole range of functions to keep the house afloat. They're using it as a wedding venue, a hotel, and they're doing a lot of work on the place, and they're looking to clear out some furniture. And it looks like a pleasant place. If it's a hotel, they might have, you know, have a nice lunch, country house hotel lunch. That'd be lovely. Here we are. Welcome to Burton Court. Thank you very much. Wow, amazing place. Oh, well, thank you. I wouldn't want to cut your lawn, though. <laughs> it takes a day. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if I could see what you've got. Yeah, of course. That'd be all right. Yeah, of course. Through here? Yeah, front door. Edward leads Drew straight into the house, promising start, assuming there are no hidden wives or parents to scupper his plans to buy. Wow. <laughs> God, it is. Well, that's, re that's really something, isn't it? It dates back to 14th century. It's a very baronial room. We used to have a lot of animal heads in here. Uh-huh. And we do a lot of weddings here. Uh, a lot of the brides were getting off-put by it. Really? So, yeah, it's the feedback I get. So I thought, oh, it's a tough decision. But we took down a lot of the animal heads. OK. Is that part of the stuff you're selling? Yeah, possibly, yeah. We might be interested in selling yeah. some of that. The bride's reluctance to be watched over by dead animals could mean a jackpot for Drew. Taxidermy, antlers and all things hunting are extremely fashionable for interior designers and photographers. Along this way. But just as Drew thought he was firmly installed in the main house, he finds himself once again in decidedly more humble quarters. Yeah, being um, a museum, we have lots of curios in the house, so which, uh, also we're doing more of the weddings these days, so it's keen to, might be interested in selling some. OK, what's, what's for sale here? Um, not the penny file, I'm afraid. Oh, That's really? That's friends, uh, so oh. we can't sell that, but... That was something I'd really want. <laughs> Air Raid Siren. They make a hell of a noise. Does it work? Oh, it's very loud. <laughs> it can be a lot, yeah, lot louder than that. a lot more, <laughs> doesn't it? Especially if you open... Oh, you've got it nearly half up. Fully open and give it a really good going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun twice and then it's a pain enough. in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing there. So, hey, it happens, but there's an awful lot more to see, so... Fingers crossed. The animal heads are in here and here. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this lot. That's really odd when you look into a little tiny space that's completely black, and then you look in, put the torch on, and, wow, all these sort of heads are looking at you. It's, uh, yeah, quite an experience. Like, whoa, it does hit you, you know? Drew has potentially hit gold, but he's learned not to get too excited when it comes to country house swag. He needs to establish just who is the decision maker when it comes to sales. It's a lioness, I think. Old lion, half grown. German, German East, Africa. East Africa. So, all everything in here is for sale. Um, we try. We're quite keen on keeping some of the big ones because they're quite okay. rare. No shield with that one. Straw. Yeah. Yeah. He's been leaking dandruff a bit. Oh, God, yeah, he's in a right state, isn't he? Do some damage, wouldn't that it? That would do some damage. Luckily, they're facing backwards. No, neither of those for me. OK. What about this one? Well, what's uh, of interest with this one? I mean, it's very big horns. I think it's the scale, and I like the skull more, more than anything. Not too sure on this one. Maybe? Maybe. 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 OK. Maybe. That'd be something I'd be interested in, for sure. OK. There's one here I've seen that I quite like the look of. OK. Oh, and a little badger. Yeah. Poor little fella. Okay. So is he, is he for sale? Yeah, well, badgers are not very popular with my farming friends around here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the yeah, badger's for sale. OK. All right, how, how much would badger cost me today? Well, for you, maybe, let's go for, say, £40. The shield's quite good for it. Yeah. OK. Bad just coming home with us. Fair enough. There you go. 
Got a new friend. Yeah. <laughs> Got a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's allowed to have one no, friend. That's not, no, that's okay. So, um, is, is this something that's for sale? Um, yeah, potentially. I'll have to just check with senior management as okay. parents. Oh dear. Once again, there's an unseen chain of command that could stand between this hunter and his prey. OK, so we've got another room here. These are the chairs you were mentioning. Yeah. Oh, that's quite good. Nice shape. Looks like the original upholstery on it as well, doesn't it? It's the classic sort of country house, 19th century armchairs, side chairs, nursing chairs, anything upholstered, really, that I like. Edward's mother has given him permission to sell the chairs, and, if nothing else, Drew can fill his van with them. He knows that they can each bring over £150 unrestored. What would you want for this, then, Edward? Well, um, I don't think it would be particularly worth much. Make me an offer, and I'll uh, think. Um, that condition there... Uh where would it go with that? Try start at eighty pounds. Eighty pounds. Sold. Sure. Wonderful. I mean these couple of chairs I thought might uh Okay. See that one there. Uh... No. <laughs> this is the one you mentioned, yeah. yeah that it's, one. It's, it seems nice. I mean I th the colour's gone, but uh but the shape's still good. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm. See, it's got the wrong casters here. The modern ones and then the, the right ones on the front. Yeah. So this is one your mum wants rid of. Um, yeah. <laughs> Price-wise, what do you reckon? I mean, um, you know, I could say maybe 200. Um, we're not too far away. I think if... I'd normally try and buy this for somewhere around 120 quid. So um, you've been really fair so far. So if I said um, 150, we're getting closer. 160. 160. I'm not going to argue with you over tenner. Yeah, no, we'll have Great. that. Drew is definitely on a roll. He's determined to take as many chairs home as he can with him today. But I like this. I mean, it's it's battered to hell, but a great big patch over the arm there. The leather's OK, is it? Uh, no, the leather's a uh, big, big chunk there that's been glued on, which I don't want to pull this off, because it's going to take... See how it's, somebody's pulled it there and it's pulled the surface of the leather off there? Yeah. Club chair, armchair. Price-wise, what if we said, um... 100? Not enough? Perhaps a bit it's a more. Bit, that's a bit mean. That's a bit mean. It is a bit mean. We're just concerned what's underneath that. It's going to be a great big mark. Uh, 120, and uh, I, I'll, be, I'll be a very happy boy at 120. All right. Yeah. 120. Wonderful. Deal. Yeah, a bride's not going to want that on a wedding, no. is she? No. Yeah. Not very <laughs> romantic, is it? Dirty no. old bloke's chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Though he's got three chairs and a badger, it's the stuffed animal heads that will really make this visit worthwhile. That's the one. That's the one I really want. Antlers are very fashionable with interior designers at the moment, who could easily pay up to £200 each for genuine country house examples like these. And these big boys, look at these. God knows what that's off. Edward's been to ask his mother, and it's the moment of truth. She's willing to sell. Um, she wants to keep hold of the, the lion and uh, that huge uh, Nepalese bison. <laughs> the two, um, there's the two bits I really want. Oh, they're, oh, yeah, right. they're the two prized pieces for me. Stymied again by a manor house matriarch, but Drew's thinking of the team back at base and is determined to bring home as much as possible. We can strike a deal on the, uh, on the other heads. Uh, let's start with the gems buck. That's really nice. What do you want for that one? I think, really, that should be for... You know, for a good shield like that as well, maybe 150. Can we meet around...? Like to pay 120. 120. Like to pay 120. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we can it's do good. that. All right. Okay. We'll do that. Sold. I'll have Sold. That one. Sold. Having it. Um, now these two here. The the two uh, sort of near matching antlers on the on the back plates and the shields on the back. What do you, what do you think? Perhaps we'll go 150 as well on those. Really. Which are each. Each. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Nearly. They're so close, but. This one, how much is Sam Burr? Well, perhaps if we go 150 as well for that one. Mm. So you're going to want 450 for the yeah. three. Tell you what, 400 quid, we've got a deal. Genuine piece of history of Burton Court you're taking away with you. 400 quid is a great price. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, thanks.
and the differences. <laughs> <laughs> Got the wet there, heavy. There you go. All right, mate. Ed, thank you. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, really. it's been great. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful place. Well, it helps keep the uh, council tax going for a bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Good luck with the business. Yeah, well, really. it's going all right so far. Excellent. I'll put as much business your way as we can. Good okay. stuff. All Cheers. right. Bye-bye. Take care, then. Bye-bye. After a slow few days, the salvage hunter has redeemed himself and returned with a full van. Loads of stuff. Full van? Yes. The team is clearly impressed and relieved to see so much new stock and restoration projects. Low leather armchair. It's got quite a lot wrong with it. Rips, tears, cushion missing. It's had a big piece of wood nailed to the base to hold all the springs in. And a piece of carpet, <laughs> yes. A piece of carpet, yeah. Oh but I like it, because, look, that is how low it's meant to be as well. Yeah. It's not been... Do you like it? Great shape. Yeah, I do. I like the feet. Yeah. Got this as well. Same house. Nursing chair. Good condition. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Got this one, which is lovely looking. You don't get any of these for ages, and you seem to get a load in a good run, sort of. I know. It's weird, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? Lovely. Do you get that recovered or strip or leave as is? or Leave as is. Just, we'll sell that one as it, as it is. That's a quality piece, actually, yeah, it isn't is. it? It's a really good quality yeah. chair underneath that. I think this is just great looking. Wow. The size of that. That's really it's... impressive. The skull makes it. It's, it's great, isn't it? These are a really... There's a, a, an almost matched pair. That's like a moose or something, isn't it? Yeah, it could be. They had them displayed in the house, but the house is now a really top-class wedding venue, and these were um, off-putting to the brides. They didn't like them. Really? Really. So that's why they took them all down. Drew's riding high and takes the opportunity to share one of his famous puns. It was their stag night. Hey! He's <laughs> here all week, <laughs> unfortunately. Stick to your day job. Oh, well, it was great while it lasted. Bobcha! Oh, hello. <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> I want to keep Badger. Do you? Yeah. That Sorry. voice was, do you? Not putting in the house, do you? That was the voice, wasn't it? Not in the house, please, Drew. Oh, I'll go in my man room. Oh, in your man room, OK. Yeah. To wash the Badger's hair? Or... Uh, no, just centre party. <laughs> <laughs> the team gets the items he's brought prepped and ready for sale immediately. We sell antlers quite often, but to, to have such a collection all at once is uh, it's very impressive, especially the little badger's head. I was rather taken with that. Reminded me of uh, reminded me of Enzo, bizarrely. What's fascinating about the chairs is, to a lot of people's eyes, they just look like a load of old sofas. But underneath all that, the frames are beautiful. Again, Drew's eye. He spotted those chairs. They really are very, very special. Wow, look at that, it's 12 foot. And the table from Grey's Court has arrived back from French polisher Alex. Drew puts it up for sale at £3,600. It's always difficult dealing with third parties, but what we have managed to do was get into some wonderful old countries estates. We've managed to save some historically important pieces from historically important houses. And in some small way, those pieces are now going to help pay for the massive running costs that these houses have. So they're going to benefit, and so will I.